The Truth Is by Papaji Introduction This book is a collection of spontaneous songs spoken by Sri H. W. L. Punya during gatherings with his students in North India between 1990 and 1997. The songs flow from his impeccable experience of the highest and yet simplest truth, that we are pure consciousness, the totality of existence. Papaji, as his loved ones called him, was born in the Punjab in 1910 to the sister of Swami Ramatirtha, one of India's most respected saints. He realized the truth when he was eight years old. This realization infinitely blossomed in his early thirties when he met his guru, Sri Ramana Maharshi, the sage of Arunachala. Since that time he shares this beauty with his wise words, his look, his touch, and simply by the silent spiritual power that radiates from his presence. When he left his body in September of 1997, this power exploded and is felt around the world now more than ever. It is a very rare occurrence that a being like Papaji takes a form manifesting as a teacher of uncompromising absolute truth and says, Look within, there is no difference between yourself, self and Guru. You are always free. There is no teacher, there is no student, there is no teaching. When we forget our true nature and believe that we are something finite and insignificant he offers words of ancient wisdom to explain the unspeakable. As doubt is removed and illusoriness flees like the night at dawn these same words dance in a celebration of vast freedom and love. And indeed in his precious satsangs he often tells people to rise up to sing and dance. This beloved master speaks some of the clearest words that can possibly be spoken and at the same time says that all words are only indicators that merely point to the truth. He directs us daily to vigilantly follow this indication and not to stick to the words. Leave the wordiness of the world. This laughing Buddha lovingly roars and realize what the words I speak are pointing to. Truth is not noble, it transcends knowing. It is beyond the ability of mind to analyze, to figure out, to dissect, or to comprehend. From 1918 to now, Papaji has directly shown to thousands that the truth is the most magnificent mystery undifferentiated from our very self. He guides one to surrender to the wisdom of our being, and that we are the truth. You are the unchangeable awareness in which all activity takes place. Always rest in peace. You are eternal being, unbounded and undivided. Just keep quiet. All is well. Keep quiet here and now. You are happiness, you are peace, you are freedom. Do not entertain any notions that you are in trouble. Be kind to yourself. Open to your heart and simply be. He is a true master with thousands of ways to stop your mind, to help you inquire into who you really are, to turn your awareness directly toward awareness, to bring you into the infinity of this moment. We are so lucky to have such essential wisdom available to us. As he says, those who know this know everything. If not, even the most learned know nothing at all. Hindu Bhakta, Christian mystic Zen master, mountain shaman, Taoist sage, Dzogchen Lama, Advaita Jani, Sufi saint, Agora yogi, Vedic pundit, you name it, with the depth of his knowledge, the extent of his experience, and the clarity of his articulation he proves to be master of each and every tradition. As timelessness is a sign of the teachings of the wise, these songs are compiled by essence only, and so have no chronology, often within a single verse. Chapter You are love dancing as emptiness. Namaskar Before the beginning you are pure consciousness. You are the fullness of love in love, and the emptiness of awareness. You are existence and the peace beyond peace. You are that screen on which all is projected. You are the light of knowledge, the one who gave the concept of creation to the Creator. Forget what can be forgotten and know yourself to be that which can never be forgotten. You are the substratum on which everything moves, let it move. You are now, you are nowness, 
what I is there which can be out of this now? Your truth and only the truth is. You are in activity. Activity is your reflection, your play, your world. The sun is in activity, the mirrors are activity. You are this precious moment, presence itself, any breeze that touches you will sanctify even demons. You are the one which is aware of the awareness of objects and ideas. You are the one which is even more silent than awareness. You are the life which precedes the concept of life. Your nature is silence, and it is not attainable, it always is. Face was your first notion, and you took Sat Chit Ananda as your first form. The world is your mind, and it all arises from your heart. Here and now is your heart. As love you abide in the cave of this heart from where all time and space arise. You are the inside which is neither inside, nor outside. Mind landing nowhere is inside, no walls is inside. You are the existence in all atoms, know this and you are bliss. You are emptiness, the ultimate substance, removing emptiness out of emptiness leaves only emptiness, because there is nothing beyond it. All rises from dances about in, and returns to this. As ocean rises as a wave to dance, so you are this dancing emptiness. Nothing is out of this emptiness, and so it is the fullness. Emptiness is between is and is not. To be free you need the firm conviction that you are this substratum, this peace, this emptiness. You are what all happenings happen in. What happens must happen so remain unaffected as peace. Be peaceful and this peace will spread. What rises from peace is peace, and what rises from confusion is confusion. So be peace and give this to the universe, it is all you should do. Even thinking I am peace disturbs this peace, so just be quiet, be as you are. You are being, you are not had been and not would be, but being. You are the timelessness in which no death can enter for where there is no time there is no death. That timelessness is now, and that is being. Being is always shining, I am is the light of being. This diamond cannot hide and can never be hidden. When there is no mind the face shines with beauty and innocence. Just simply be quiet just be as you are. You are the space which never moves and never travels. Inner and outer space is due only to name and form. Remove this form from mind by removing attachment to any object, thought or action. You are the garden of joy, you are love dancing as emptiness to be happy you need nobody else. You are in the garden of joy, but when you think of old things you become sad. This joy, this moment, will destroy mind and suffering, because this moment is happiness. So stop going to the past moments in order to suffer. Unconditioned consciousness is happiness and quietness with no when, no where just now. This happiness conditioned by thought becomes mind. Even the I, the first condition, is a disturbance in happiness. Due to desires and hopes of the ego no one is happy. So to come to happiness do not think or give rise to a desire, simply keep quiet, because thinking is the graveyard. To be happy you should have and hold nothing, otherwise your pockets will smell like dead fish. My dear friend, happiness is not an experience, it is your nature so you need to do nothing for it. Only self-knowledge brings happiness because happiness is the nature of self. Here, here is the wine that nobody knows. Everything is in here and this is consciousness. Consciousness is the substratum of everything in the universe, it you resides in every atom of every molecule and even space and time derive their existence from it. Who is conscious that you wear a body and mind, and that the movement of birth and death is in the same consciousness? You are that, all doing and not doing, all multiplicity and all unity is in consciousness. Bondage is to deny this freedom is to know it. You are that, you are that. Consciousness. The senses cannot feel it, and the mind cannot understand it. Consciousness alone is everywhere and rises as I within you. It is the shining of the sun and the motion of the earth. 
it is beyond space and time which derive their existence from it. The mind cannot go to touch it or to reach it, and will miss it if it tries to find it. These attempts are movements hiding the stillness. It is found only by itself when mind does not move. Check all movements of mind for one moment only, stop all desires and all thought for one second only, especially the first thought of I, for one instant only, and you are beyond the cycle of birth and death forever. The cycle is samsara, your own imagination. It has no beginning and only self-knowledge will end it. The question who am I will end it. So firmly decide, I have to do it now. This human birth is such a blessing, don't waste it. Postponement is samsara, the cycle of suffering. Whenever you are in trouble ask am I dreaming? This is who am I, and it will wake you up and make you fall in love with your own self. Then you will know all others, and will take this candle wherever you go. Be quiet, don't think, don't make effort. To be bound takes effort, to be free takes no effort. Peace is beyond thought and effort. Do not think and do not make effort because this only obscures that, and will never reveal that. This is why keeping quiet is the key to the storehouse of love and peace. This quietness is no mind, this no thought is freedom. Identify yourself as this nothingness, as this quietness, and be careful not to make it an experience, because this is mind tricking you out of it with the trap of duality, the trap of witness and witnessed. Being is being, there is no witness and no witnessed. Experiencing it is to say I am free, which is exactly the same trap as saying I am bound. After letting go of object do not hold on to the subject either. Let go be quiet. The purpose of life is to be at peace, to love all beings, and to know who you are. Know yourself and you know everything. This immaculate knowledge alone is, emptiness alone is. You are love dancing as emptiness how can you come out of emptiness if there are no limits to it? The appearance of a manifestation is but the leela of this emptiness. Know who you are, here and now by simply being quiet. You are this moment, introduce yourself to this, do not attach your mind to any direction. No sadhana, no past, no future, not even the emptiness of your heart, not even space. To be free forever introduce yourself to this moment. This moment is always this moment, it will not change. It is freedom, free from mind and concepts, and is your fundamental birthright. The best use of this moment is to drown in it. Keep quiet, you are inside of the inside, do not dwell anywhere and make no effort. The concept of effort and practice is bondage. Just keep quiet wherever you are, just keep quiet. Name and form hide reality, this is the teaching. Giving name and form is an obstacle to freedom because then the substratum consciousness cannot be seen. Call it a statue of a horse and the granite is hidden, see a ring and you won't see the gold. Name and form can never leave consciousness as the ring can never leave the gold. Even space is in this because only self is. Before a wave rises it is ocean, before desire moves it is emptiness. Destroy craving and bondage by identifying as experiencing, not experience as seeing, not the seer. You are consciousness, not one who is conscious. To be free you must be like freedom, and this is without desire. All is and is known in desirelessness. If you don't want to possess remove your pockets, duality. The past is past so don't carry it in your pocket. Why go to the graveyard when you know that you are alive? All that is temporary must be shunned so only take hold of your absolute self. All that you are attached to, all that you love, all that you know someday will be gone. Knowing this and that the world is your mind which you create, play in and suffer from, is known as discrimination. Discriminate between the real and the unreal. The known is unreal and will come and go so stay with the unknown, the unchanging truth. All which appears and disappears is not real, and no nectar will come from it so don't cling to it, and once you let go do not turn back to it. 
There is eternity in your own being. Surrender to space or dissolve ego with knowledge. With love and adoration go within yourself with the vehicle of inquiry. This inquiry is the abandonment of all effort. It is not finding what was lost in the past, but simply remembering the present, the presence. Proceed within so silently that even thought is too loud. Keep quiet by knowing you are not the ego that has to keep quiet. This quietness, this silence, has nothing to do with talking or not talking, because even when you are not talking your mind is continually racing everywhere. No thought rising from your mind is the silence. Awareness of any object is not it. The one who is aware of awareness is it. Surrender is to surrender your concept of separateness, your ego. Surrender is to submit your stupidness, your wickedness to the will of existence. That's all. You must surrender like a river discharging into the ocean. Surrender is to discharge your river of separateness into the ocean of being, losing your limitations, and allowing to happen what happens. Check your notions and intentions by inquiring, what is this movement of the mind? People confuse inquiry with yoga and meditation. Yoga is union with the subject within. Meditation is concentration on an object outside. Inquiry does not keep any relation with anything within or without. You cannot find and kill the mind, it is the ten-headed demon. Top off a head and another will grow back because I am bound and I am free is exactly the same trap. So only the desire for freedom will help you because you are what you think. Think to destroy the mind and mind is a destroyer not destroyed. Think only of freedom and you become freedom. As persistent as the pain of a toothache, always think of self, because if the desire for freedom is continuous then all other habits and distractions will drop away. In the pure joy all manifestation is created as Leela to play in, to play as. This is all your own creation, your own self. All being is one being. What appears and disappears is not real. Play in the Leela and say I am existence. If you say I am body, you say a lie and you suffer. I itself is just conditioning in the saunas. Individual I is a reflection of true I in the dirty pool of ego. Abandon the I and its vasanas and know that you are that which does not sleep, even when the ego is in a deep sleep. When the face of self is seen by the ego, ego becomes that. But when ego sees the senses, it becomes the confused individual desiring the objects of senses. Don't get lost and confused in the mind cycle of rebirths. Whatever the mind can conceive is not it. Get rid of all that can be rejected including rejection itself. Then the mind will be quiet and this cannot be described. It is isness, emptiness, fullness and it is the truth. The truth does not move, there is no coming or going. Stirring thought I creates an entire universe, but the truth does not move. Keep vigilant of where and how this I arises. This is satsing, and it is your own nature. You are the truth which does not move. But if you say from the ego point of view I am doing, you are taking yourself to be the individual movement, the wave. You reinforce this by creating an object and generating some interest in it, and then having desire for it, and instantly you even want some reward for having it. Therefore, you want to go to that object, then you want to possess it, you want to own it. As soon as you possess it, you have fear of losing it, because where there are two, there is always fear of separation. Where fear arises, anger arises. With anger there is confusion, lack of understanding, and lack of discrimination. When you cannot decide things properly, it is total destruction. So the shortcut to enlightenment is the purity of mind. This shortcut is to cut short your desires. Objects of desires are not what give happiness, they destroy your peace and not you with suffering. The sense of attainment of objects of desires also will not give happiness. This gives bondage. It is absence of desire which brings happiness. It is only desire which disturbs eternal peace and rest. This desire is the disease of mind, 
live without it, and be happy. Happiness is true self and is always here. The prescription for this happiness is to simply be quiet. When an object that you wanted is in front of you happiness initially arises because the intellect is steady due to momentary satisfaction and returns to the source, the fountain of bliss. The self reflects on it and the experience of this reflection is joy because this is the nature of the self. The bliss is not from an object it is self. So keep the mind steady and the self will reflect on it and draw the mind into it. Pleasure is of the self, in the self and not outside of the self in transient objects. Objects are temporary, but the bliss is not. You are one with this bliss and once you know this, you will love all from yourself as yourself of yourself. Your love will be forever, not from and to names and forms but always in yourself. This consciousness gives you bliss. Don't carry name and form and you are happy, this is the pleasure of sleep, and this will transcend the waking, dream, sleep states. Though associate only with the peace and joy and truth. When this becomes habitual and natural, it will transcend three states and you will be transported into a state beyond states. This is for you to experience here and now. Though when something comes in front of you just stay as the truth, which does not move and react to the circumstances whatever they may be, good or bad. Just react without any possessive concept in you. Whatever happens keep most interested in self and see that all that arises is self rising out of self. Self is not interested in possessing things because self is total. So don't react with interest of reward or possession. Then, you will be very free, and all your interactions will be out of compassion, and life will be like sailing in the breeze of non-attachment. This breeze comes from self and will happen after freedom, not before. When you are free still you have to live because still the world will be there, but living will be very compassionate. Just love each other and hold no hatred with anything. This depends on you, how you take things, and whether this I, is from the ego or whether it is from nowhere. That from nowhere contains the whole universe and this is total understanding itself. Only preoccupation with what is not real keeps you from realizing the truth of who you are here and now. Desiring anything else anything that comes and goes is foolish. The wise one does not do this, so love the Lord with all your heart. Method is an impediment to love, a postponement of freedom, and an insult to peace. Use no method simply identify as that. Many methods may take you to an end maya kosha, an end at the subtlest of veils, yet there is an enjoyer of bliss. Pre-dawn light is not the sun, bliss is not the totality of understanding, it is the turning toward your own face, and is the direct practice to know yourself. There is no attainment and no cultivation of original nature. You are consciousness, not a farmer. Why work for that which you already are? Do not mentate, do not stir a thought, trying to get out of superimposed bondage, which is the notion that you are separate from existence, you will land in superimposed freedom. The purpose of all practice is silence, your real nature. Without silence you cannot be in peace so strive only for this. Even while active remain in silence as silence and be conscious of silence always. Ramana's main teaching is silence and it is this silence that silently answers all questions and removes all doubts. Train your mind to go to silence. As Kabir said, keep your body, your mind, your intellect and your prana quiet and wisdom will follow behind you searching for you. Be silent by directing your mind toward its source. Mind directed toward object of senses is suffering. Say mind must investigate its source, thy must face its source. This is true austerity, true practice and true meditation. Face the Atman, this is satsang, because this is home, the holy company of the self. The most holy association is to be as you are. This is freedom. This is beyond imagination, very new and very fresh. So just keep quiet. Do not think. It is you. It is you. 
don't stir a thought, and if a thought comes, let it don't waver, don't doubt your majesty. It is so simple. The one who has it will know that they have done it. When you are quiet, it is beauty, joy, and stillness. It is effortless. Effort is to disturb your mind, effort is playing with corpses in the graveyard. Just contemplate that which is always silence. Go to the source. Do not believe anything, simply stay quiet and return home, and do not rest until you are there. Peace is only available when there is no eye, and you need an eye to do practice. The secret to bliss is to stop the search, stop thinking, stop not thinking, and keep quiet. The best practice is to know who am I. You or Brahman know this. If you want to do anything just always adore self. Self-realization takes one second, but this second takes a great effort to remove all other thoughts from your mind. You must remove all from this second and allow only this second to stay with you. In that second stand up on your toes and with clenched fists shout, I have to be free in this second. It is very rare to have such extreme desire for freedom, such extreme activity and strength that even gods will come and bow before you. It takes a very strong body and mind and intention. Then this second will work. You have to do it. Don't just read the menu, eat the food. Defeat the stupid mind. It is not understanding, it is being. It is not the mind which makes the decision to be free when you do it there is no mind. Control the mind and use it as a slave when you need it, but here you don't need the mind to be free. Use no mind and stir no thought, freedom is not dependent on meditation and effort. Tathic mind will get it right away. Raja's mind has to practice and attend satsang. Tamasic mind will not even attend satsang. Tathic mind is karmically pure, always in meditation, and is not different from freedom. As it rises so it falls. Make effort and it rises. Stop effort and it falls. Make the choice. They is simple natural being without thought or doership. Out of nothing you can do anything and not leave footprints. No intention is no limitation, just stay quiet, simply do not stir a thought. Not activating the mind, is to not externalize. There is no way or method, just keep out of the way. The revelation of the self will occur only when you do not interfere. Keeping quiet is giving time to this love and beauty. Day as such. Dharma means not holding on to any concept, so the supreme dharma, is to reject all dharmas. If you reject everything what will happen? All the burdens of all the religions and concepts will fall from your mind, bringing you to the perfect peace and love, and this is your dharma. At the end of sadhana, the guru confirms that you are free. You came to luck now not for freedom, but to know that you are not bound. In satsang you have to remove your doubts, because it is only doubts that keep you from being free. Simply keep quiet. Why get into trouble? It's enough. Everything is here. Happiness, beauty, love. Whatever you call it, it is full of everything. Whatever you think, so it becomes because it is consciousness and everything is possible in consciousness. You have created all these manifestations, all these waves in the ocean. You are so capable, so vast, so full, so complete, so conscious. You can create all of this, so why suffer? Emptiness is never affected by appearances in emptiness. The ocean does not suffer when a wave rises. It does not even suffer when a wave falls. Let the waves dance and let them enjoy. To stay here and see only love and beauty and happiness. This is the ultimate understanding. It does not need any thinking or any process or any meditations. You are limitlessness, fathomlessness, vastness. Who will disturb this vastness? Where will you run out so that you are no longer here? You are not limited. Just stay as you are, do not start from anywhere and do not go anywhere and do not activate a thought. Ego says it matters, the Supreme says that it does not. Even the power of decision is not from ego. 
All is the supreme power, do not attribute it to anything else because this only reinforces the ghosts. Face the one. See God you need body, mind, senses, and so much paraphernalia. To go beyond God you need nothing. Don't even activate a thought, activate no energy even to not activate. Contemplation and adoration of self is all that you need. Love, surrender to the divine and keep quiet. Wisdom, inquire into the divine and keep quiet. No, I am home, I am home itself, and incessantly look at self. There's nothing more beautiful than this being. The happiness of all beings combined is not one millionth the happiness of being. Thought cannot trespass into its purity, not even the I thought can enter. Don't think or understand, just stay as thus. Keep in tune with the source and all your actions will be correct. If you don't there will be trouble no matter what you do. With arrogance of ego, there is no skillfulness and without arrogance everything is skillful. Just as space in a room is not affected by how much furniture is in the room so space is not affected by activity or by mind or by thought. You are space, do not touch the furniture in this space which means keep quiet, do not mentate, do not activate thoughts. If thoughts arise allow them to come and go, but do not hold on to them or let them land. Do not touch I am the body. Instead the first and last thought must be, I am pure infinite consciousness, I am love itself. Know the truth of this, not just the words. The truth is all what is. If something's nature is absence don't cling to it. If something's nature is presence, this is you, this is beauty love self. All else is imagination. The power of illusion is very strong, so be vigilant in a joyful play with tendencies because when one is near freedom all demons will consolidate and attack. Continue being self-meditating on self do this playfully always. All appearance has emptiness as its basis. Sit on the throne of emptiness and all will be yours. No manifestation, no freedom, no mind, this is ultimate truth. The ultimate truth is that all is emptiness and always was. What you think is what you are so stop thinking and you will be that nothing which is everything awake and not possessing anything that can be lost. When the mind enters into the chit the heart dances and dwells in peace and bliss. You are always in love and you can only love yourself, the changeless one in which even space is. There is no beginning, no middle and no end to it. Only love is worth loving and this is your own self. Though now here simply look. All around you is a flood of peace. Where are you standing? The essence of my teaching is this. I teach about that which cannot be attained by any teaching. My teaching cannot be taught. I have no teaching for the essence from where all teachings arise. This essence doesn't need any teaching or non-teaching for it is beyond everything. It is from where all words rise. As Bhagavan would say, here the truth is choose what you want. Chapter Self Self is what you are, you are that fathomlessness in which experience and concepts appear. Self is the moment which has no coming or going. It is the heart atman emptiness. It shines to itself by itself in itself. Self is what gives breath to life, you need not search for it, it is here. You are that through which you would search. You are what you are looking for. And that is all it is. Only self is. You were never born, and though only desire takes birth, nothing has ever happened, nothing has ever existed. This nothingness you are, and this is the ultimate truth. You are totally alone because beauty alone is. Only self is. You simply cannot deny that you are consciousness. You dwell in the lotus of the heart as joy and bliss. Keep quiet and you will reveal yourself to yourself. Self-knowledge is that which is worth sacrificing anything for, because everything else is just a mirage rising out of consciousness. Self is the indweller of all beings, so love of others is love of self yourself. Self is the greatest love, and the dearest of all lovers. 
Love is the attraction of self to self in self. There is nothing besides this love, this source of joy. To your own beauty, and you are this indweller, this love, and the beauty itself. Nitty nitty, but what you are cannot be rejected. Is now only waking or sleeping or dreaming. It is still the now which only is. Only self is. This present moment is light as self. This moment is not bondage or freedom. It is most precious beyond ideation. This moment is the screen on which all projects. It is always still and untouched, and it is out of time. There is no difference between the ultimate and this presence. To be in this moment, abandon all desires, including the desire to be in it. That which has no name or form has millions of names. Being, awareness, bliss, isness, atman, truth, self, auspiciousness, beauty, freedom, divine love, fullness, emptiness, consciousness, nowness, effortlessness, hereness, silence, Brahman. As the tongue speaks the word tongue, so you speak these names. To avoid the veiling of your nature with preconceptions. Buddha spoke of self in negative terms, like anatta, untouched, unmanifest, unseen, unapproachable, unknowable, and unstained. Before notions and creations, you exist, so there are no words for that beyond words and language. Self doesn't need to understand itself. Freedom is before the concept of freedom. You are what remains when the concepts of I, mine, and past disappear. Nothingness is no concept. Identify as peace, beauty, love. Do not experience it. No, I am inactive. The activity takes place in me. I am that. I am the screen. I never come and I never go. Identify as consciousness itself. If you do not forget who you are, this appearance of activity is the cosmic dance. Stay as I am, not as what comes and goes. The individual I sense is mind, but being has no frontiers. It is aware of itself itself. Identify as being. When mind is pure, you will see self in all beings. Purify the mind by removing all concepts, especially the concept of purity. Then self reveals itself to the empty mind, which is consciousness. Ego and mind and all creations arise out of self as self. Even the ugliest of doubts and the most separate of differences rise from the beautiful sources isness. In self, there are no do's and don'ts. If there is unhappiness, you are not unhappy. You are the untouched awareness of this unhappiness. As waves are not separate from ocean, nor rays from sun, you are not separate from existence. You are the moment in which all is. The scriptures speak of the three holy rivers within. These are existence, consciousness, and bliss. Being beyond thought and effort, they cannot be objectified or subjectified. They are so dear, so near, behind the retina and before breath. You need not see this; you are it. You are not different than existence, than being. Thee being everywhere by not looking. The seeing is being, not the objects seen. Consciousness is the original mother. If you know this, she will take care of you and give you happiness, peace, and deathlessness. This mother we do not recognize, and this gets us into trouble. This unknown is your nature. Return to that because the known will give no lasting peace, no lasting love. Bliss is eternal, even though it appears to arise when the mind dies. Bliss is not an experience; it is your nature. This is the heart of the wise. This gift is always calling to everyone. You are seated in the heart of all beings. This is the truth. Your face shines, as the king gardening in the garden is still the king and not the gardener. So the I am can be in the garden of the world and remain I am. It is you who is active in all the activities of the world. Go to where the physicality of the world rises from, and you will discover the vastness, the secret, sacred core of your heart. This is who you are. But hold any object or take yourself to be anything, and you will forget this, all due to desires and hopes. 
All is one and one is all. Identify yourself with the common center giving up old habits of desires and hopes, and you are the emperor of the universe. Go to this here and now and you are this here and now. All is self. The only difference between you and me are the words and concepts of you and me. Self in you is the self in me, and in all beings. The source of everything is the same and this is self, this is love and compassion. From self try to go anywhere. I am the ocean and all forms seen are my waves dancing on me, this is knowledge. When waves rise the ocean loses nothing and when waves fall the ocean gains nothing. As waves play so the ocean plays. I am ocean, I am water, I am wave. Separation between water and ocean and wave cannot exist. There are no differences, no disturbances, no one to be disturbed. Giving rise to an eye or any other thought is giving rise to a wave. Water remains water so allow everything to be, for it is yourself. As a river discharges into ocean, discharge into what you are, happiness bliss being cosmos. Here is only awareness, here only self is. You are that which is present even in forgetfulness because you are aware that you are forgetful. You are the consciousness of awareness in the three states of waking, dreaming and sleeping. Only self does not vanish in these three states. Self is no mind, no mind has no body from this beauty of no mind art and intuition arise. Nothing ever happened or ever will. You have always been perfect love and peace. What changes is not real, and what is real cannot change. You are that secret, that purity beyond change and description, but if you touch the I, you become polluted with pride. The I rising from the effort of ego is not the real I. The real I knows that everything is my reflection projection. Simply knowing I am I am is effortlessness is meditation and is sahaja the natural state of being. In every speck of dust there are innumerable Buddhas shining in innumerable universes. It is very hard to explain it to you and for you to understand, but this is a fact. You can see it. Everything emerges out of the atom. It is a mystery that no one can solve. It is the same as the moment that we normally speak of in satsang. In it, you can see all your lives. Everyone is intrinsically Buddha. Questioner, I want the revelation of eternal undefinable being. Answer from answer from Papaji. This is who you are, why have doubt about it? Enlightenment is not about words and thoughts and concepts which can be doubted. Enlightenment is always here. By here I don't mean this present space. Here is somewhere within where mind cannot reach. Presence is always here and you are always that. This here is not the opposite of there. This here is nowhere, it is your heart. When mind is still all comes back to the heart. All the cosmos is but a speck in your heart. Turn mind over into this here and it is lost. Then only light, wisdom and love remain and this you are not different or apart from. If I am not this body mind form what am I? You are formlessness which takes the form of Satyam Shivam Sundaram. This is your form, you are truth, you are Shiva, you are beauty. This is what we are directly working on here, but you are not going toward this, you are this, I am Satyam, I am Shivam, I am Sundaram. I am Satchitananda. This is the form of the Atman, truth consciousness bliss. This is your own self, you are not hankering after it, it is within. Bliss is within. That you are. Truth is within. That you are. Beauty is within. That you are. Love is within. That you are. This is addressing to your own self. I want to stay in my own self. Then decide that only self exists and you will never be out of it. It is unlimited. How can you jump in and out of it? How can you jump into limitations when you are the unlimited? Decide, I am self, I am truth, I am God, I am grace and there will be no trouble. I feel at home in consciousness. And where are you when you are not home? 
Everywhere is consciousness and everywhere is home. Everywhere is but a small corner of your heart. You are that vast. There is no travel because you are always home. Surrender your ego and you are home. I had a dream while in the West that you gave me the name Satchitananda. What is this name? It is the name of the self of the formlessness. Though everybody has this name, it is hidden in the core of your heart. That Chitananda is the end, weller of all beings, but few recognize this. It is not the name of a person, but of that which has the qualities of truth and consciousness and bliss. All three are one. Wherever there is truth, satyam, there is chit consciousness and also bliss ananda. You say that this was a dream, but I tell you it was neither a dream nor waking nor sleeping, but something that transcends these. Thus, it is known as the fourth state or Turiya in Sanskrit. In Turiya, you have the darshan of God and receive the messages of God. This is why this dream is so easy to remember, while you tend to forget others. Is beingness the same as God? Is a sabaja samadhi? Beingness is very different from what most people call God. God is a concept created by you. Beingness is just beingness, and nobody created it because it is beyond creations and destructions. That in which all creations abide, including God, is called being. Thajith Samadhi is the melting of the individual into the natural oneness and beingness of all things. It is the Samadhi which involves no effort, no use of mind. It is the natural Samadhi which is your natural state. If you are here and not thinking, it is Sahaja Samadhi. You can eat and drink and carry on any activity while in Sahaja. The Hajja Samadhi is self in the exquisite experience of the fullness of being. What is true awareness? There is the awareness which is aware of objects like flowers. True awareness is the awareness which is aware of the awareness of objects. It is the undisturbed simple awareness in which things rise and fall. There is an awareness beyond the awareness of objects and events. You are that awareness in which the awareness of object stays. This awareness has no name, and when you try to give it a name, the trouble arises. You are nameless and formless. You can't see anything. No, I am nameless and formless, and that I am aware of my own self. The pure consciousness will pull you back. It is not that you will enter into it. When you enter into it, it is ego entering. But when it pulls you, it has made the choice to take you home. This happens somehow, and we can't know why. Very rare beings are picked up by consciousness. Once drawn, in that man's travels are over. Though, do not give it a name, or it will just be another object of someone's observation. Consciousness cannot be observed. It is fullness itself, limitlessness, eternal itself. You have to merge with it. Actually, it is not merging. There is no word which describes it. You have to be as good and pure as it, so that you are picked up by it. By your own efforts, you cannot do it. To see that you are so beautiful that you are chosen by the bridegroom. This is how it ends. I hope you have understood. I feel like a distant observer of all that is going on. This observer cannot be touched by anyone. This observer is beyond any identification, any name, and any form. So when you are this observer. No one can touch you. You can't even touch yourself then, and there is no fear. You can go into any forest and be fearless of the lions and tigers. Just look into their eyes, and nobody will eat you up. I have had a glimpse of supreme consciousness. It was the expansion of consciousness and the absence of a center of existence. When you have a glimpse of anything, you become the seer of the glimpse, and what you glimpse is the object of the seer, the seen. To have a glimpse, you must have seen or sight and seen. So how can you have a glimpse of supreme consciousness? Because this can never be the object of anyone. Not even God can see this, because even God is an object of perception which a devotee loves. The devotee extends his mind, and this becomes God. 
This glimpse of superconsciousness is not possible, it cannot be objectified because it is the subject, though truly speaking it is not the subject either. Where there's no relation between subject and object there can be no glimpse. The whole world is seer sight and seen, but this you cannot place in a category. When someone has a strong desire to be free, it moves towards superconsciousness, merges with it and becomes that itself. As a moth runs to the flame and kisses it, what happens? No more moth. The flame rises in happiness and says, Come my dear boy, I have been waiting for you. This moth will not return, it has become the flame. Like this there can be no glimpse. Whosoever wants to be free is being led by something which has been calling that person. What relationship is between energy, golden light and awareness? Water is English, Agua is Spanish, Pani is Hindi. Three different names for the same substance. Though you can call it Shakti or Light. Light means to have knowledge of something, for instance knowledge of the missing child. With the light you can see the child, and this light is knowledge. Knowledge is the energy which takes you to know that you are one. You are knowledge itself and energy and this is the same thing as awareness. Only words are different according to different persons. One person will say, I want to be free. A Buddhist will say, I want to be empty and still others want nirvana. All these different words mean the same thing which has no name. Pani Agwa, water itself has no name. So it is only you who will call it awareness, light or energy, but it doesn't know its own name, because it is nameless and formless. Wherever there is a name there must be something not true. Any name or form leads you to that which has no name or form. How will you find what has no name or form? Don't try to search for the nameless and formless because you can't do it. But this light is there, and this is knowledge, this energy is awareness, there is no difference. Jakti and Shiva are the same. One is knowledge, and the other is the energy to know, I myself am Shiva. Energy cannot die. Energy will always remain. Forms may appear or disappear, but energy will always be here. As the substratum? Yes, it is the substratum, and now the substratum knows by energy that I am the substratum. It doesn't make a difference. This knowledge of energy that I am that, is energy itself, knowledge itself, light itself, wisdom itself. This is also called freedom. But, I can have awareness and I can have awareness of energy, so are they not separate? No, they are not separate. The wave rises from the ocean and appears separate. The name is different now, the movement is different, the height, breadth and width are different. Also, it moves and now she forgets that once upon a time she ocean. There's no difference between the content of the ocean and the wave. So now the wave somehow knows I am the ocean. So let there be movement towards shore. Let it rise and fall and disappear. This is the world appearing and disappearing, but the ocean is not worried at all. The substratum, the essence, doesn't mind that it has become a wave and the question of falling and rising will not appear. So the energy will always be there. No, it will always be here. Wherever there is an ocean there will be energy within itself that allows the waves to move and disappear. And if you die? That is equal to the wave falling into the ocean. Death you have only heard from someone, it is not your experience. Therefore, you have agreed that you will die only because you have accepted from someone that you were born. But energy itself, the substance itself, does not die. The body, like wave and like forms, will disappear while the essence cannot change. This understanding is called energy. Returning to the substratum is called Shiva, the ocean which does not change. I want to enter the cave of the heart and stay there. This here and now is the cave of the heart. In the books, it is written that there is a cave in the heart, and you must have this idea from those old scriptures. Your desire to find this cave takes you out of here and now. 
then you lose the experience of now and search for the cave which never exists. Don't try to live in a cave for the cave is just a concept. You can only live in now. When you live in now you will not have any desire for anything else and likewise, you will only be in now when you give up all desires, even the desire to be in it. Give up all desires to stay here or there or anywhere and give up the desire for this and for that. How can I give up all desire? By keeping quiet. Please tell me, did I lose my identity or did I find myself which has no identity? You don't know what identity you lost and what identity you found. Identification with body is identity. Then you become a son, a father, a mother or whatever. This is physical identity and as long as it stays you can't see the identity beyond all identifications. As long as body identification stays, you can't have the identity beyond all identities, the identity of I am. This is identity with your own self, not with the ego mind body senses objects. How can I totally destroy the mind so that the beauty of self can shine forever in ultimate freedom? Be the ocean of bliss, and you will not see the relationships with the world, you will only see ocean. You won't have any relationships with what is outside the ocean, just a connection with your own fullness of water. This fullness is your original state and this is to be enjoyed. Stay within the ocean, as the ocean, thinking only of ocean always. Nothing else but this ocean should come in your mind eyes or contact. Always be in the contact with the content of the ocean. This you must do. Think of that smell that hear that touch that. This will end your conflicts. One and a half years ago when I received Diksha, initiation in hard war during Diwali, everything changed, though it appeared no different. I am so thankful and grateful to you. Papaji, there is a small flame which burns in the fullness of itself and I am its servant, though not always willingly. Thank you. Where do you see this blue flame? I don't see it though it is wherever I am looking. It is there but you cannot see it. You feel it though. It is looking at you. It means you are a rare one, a lucky person who this flame can look upon. This flame is divinity itself. It has no form and not even a name. It will work, you have to keep it up. This flame will reveal itself in full formlessness. As you see the dawn before the sun, having had a vision of the flame shows that you are heading in a good direction. Keep it, keep quiet and simply see you are not to do anything. This will always attract you and this is called meditation. When you are attracted to something, it is called meditation and this is the best attraction and the best form of meditation. So let it be as it is. There is more that I can tell you, but I won't openly because so many people will copy your experience and will start seeing blue lights since it becomes whatever you imagine. But, they'll just be fake experiences. This light is within and reflects that which is within onto the outside. It is within your own heart and seeing it is a good symptom which will give you peace and happiness like the big blue sky does. You have to see this light in your heart equal in size to your thumb. This light in your own heart enlightens the whole universe from here. This is the light of your own self of your own Atman. When you are pure with no desire you can imagine or feel this light and you can never get rid of it because it is always with you. Wherever you see, see this light and see that it is your own self. This light wants to appear to you in satsang and not while you are in the fish market. The fish market will only give you bad smells and most people prefer this. What is this interval between the stream of thoughts? In that interval is consciousness. Between two clouds, there is an interval, and that interval is the blue sky. Slow down the thoughts and look into the intervals. Yes. Look into the intervals and pay more attention to the interval than the cloud. Where the first thought has left and the other is not arisen, that is consciousness, that is freedom, that is your own place, your own abode. You are always there, you see. Shift the attention, change the gestalt. Don't look at the figure, look at the background. 
If I put a big blackboard the size of the wall here and mark it with a white point and ask you, what do you see? 99% of you will not see the blackboard. You will say I see a little white spot. Such a big blackboard and it is not seen and only a little white spot which is almost invisible is seen. Why? Because this is the fixed pattern of the mind, to look at the figure, not the blackboard, to look at the cloud, not at the sky, to look at the thought, not at consciousness. That's all the teaching is. Always look to consciousness. Always look to consciousness and know this is what you are. This is your own place, your own abode. Stay here. No one can touch you. Who can enter here where you are? Even your mind cannot enter. You are not the body is often spoken here. There are some who believe in the preciousness of the body so that there can be the experience of life as sacred. They feel a liberation by feeling completely present in the body. The sacredness of life is the purusha within you. Experience that. It is not the body which can be made male or female. You are the pure Russia within the heart of everyone whether they appear to be male or female. It is mentioned in the Upanishads and other holy sutras that this pure Russia is equal to the length of a thumb. It is within your own heart, forever burning as a flame. It is your own self, your own Atman. When you concentrate on that you will see that you are this pure Russia and not the gender male or female. Though everybody is pure Russia, they don't identify with that but identify with their body for their own interest. No one is told about this eternal purusha which doesn't come and go. This is what I spoke. Neither do I come, nor do I go. It is that purusha which speaks. If you become that and merge with this purusha then it speaks from where the speech arises from and not what the tongue can speak. The tongue can speak, but where does the strength come from which enables to speak? That comes from the fountain which is called the Purusha, Aham Purusha. It is that Purusha which I refer to. How to release the self and be in love at the same time. Self is not bound, it is not chained, there is no prison for that. It is always free. I know that your grace is the only thing which will wake me out of the world of my mind. Even the strength of my longing for freedom is your grace. Will you tell me what my real name is? All the names which are given to you are given by parents and priests, but this is not your real name. When you are born you don't come out with a name. Only later do you become a Susan or whatever. You have no name and don't think that you have one. You are nameless. Where there is form there is name and where there is name there must be form. You are not that, you are within the form and you are someone which has no name because only a form needs name. Who is sitting in your own heart? Does this have a name? The indweller of the heart, that is what you really are. You are not born of your parents, you are that which has no name, which will never die, or be born, that which is eternal. If you believe what people say why not believe that, I am that. I am Atman, I am peace, I am love, I am bliss. If you don't believe this then continue this mantra forever, I am bliss. I don't want to take on any new identity because I do not want to impose form on this bliss, on this formlessness. If you decide that you do not want any identity that touches name and form, you will instantly become formless. If you do not touch this concept of identity then you are free here and now. You go to the past every time that you use your name. People have to call you by some name, but that name should not touch the past. Buddha also is a name, but when you call him Buddha, what personality comes to mind? Though your name should not remind you of any attachments or relations. Therefore, many names are given here in this satsang which do not touch any personality. People leave their old names and pasts here. If I say go and bring Miss Emptiness here, will you bring her? The word is there, the meaning is there, but will you bring her? It can't be done. Like this the Atman in you has a name, but you can't hold it. It is beyond space and which cannot be touched. I see that I should not necessarily reject the negative things in life that come and go, I should just not be attached. 
Everything in the universe comes, stays, and goes. What doesn't come, stay, or go is your own self. They say that there are three classes of seekers, those who get it fast like camphor, those who get it soon like gunpowder, and those who get it slowly like wet wood. What advice do you give the wet wood? That there are no classes and nothing to be gained. You are always free, but your attention is somewhere else. Just return your attention to yourself and away from impermanent objects. What you are is always here. I want to burn like camphor and remain here. When you put camphor near a flame it quickly catches fire. The guru is the flame and your heart is camphor if your decision, dedication and seriousness is strong. Then if you go close to the flame in your heart, nothing will be left. If you are a charcoal it will take time and there will be residue, and a fresh branch will take even longer. Yet even these people will get everything in a matter of minutes if they're not looking anywhere but to self. Is this awareness in me it? No, it is not. This awareness is not it. You are aware of persons, objects, and ideas and all of these are from the past. Awareness of the past is not it. The one who is aware of this awareness is it. Do you follow? Who is aware of awareness? When you are aware of an object, you are also aware that you are aware of something in your mind. So who is aware of this awareness? Turn your face to that which is aware of something, and when you know this then forget it. If you do not forget it, it will become a past experience and draw your attention to the past making this something which comes and goes. It is not the past so forget about the experiences of it. If you do you are a free person of the world, not even attached to enlightenment. Forget about everything. That is all. But if you remember then this remembrance is memory and this is past. So whatever comes in front of you react. That is all. This is the advice. How can I know it? We describe it as happiness, peace, love. It is not that, it's much more. It is much beyond whatever you can expect. Expectation is only the mind, which itself doesn't even exist. It is much more beyond this, and it can be had in this very instant. You need not have any big program to arrive there. No effort is needed, no method is there. Simply keep quiet, and it will reveal itself. Simply don't interfere. Give it a chance now. You have spent millions of years, now give one second to it. Let it unfold, let it reveal itself to you. You are imposing your own notions, intentions, expectations, and ideations, therefore, you cannot see this revelation. It is a revelation, you just keep quiet, it will happen. Not with meditation, not with concentration, not with pilgrimages, not by going to church, not by penance, not by yoga. All these things will not help you to reach there, it is here. All these things take you on a program of postponement. Mind is cheating you, don't listen to it. Simply keep quiet. Don't start a thought, even that much effort is not needed. It will reveal itself. I see only the inside is real, only that is always here. If the inside is real the outside also has to be real. Therefore I do not prescribe any unreality. Everything is real, everything is self. I would like a name which reminds me of self. When you look at the sky or ocean you see that it looks blue, but if you take a handful of air or water it is not blue. So how can something which has no color have a color? It is by virtue of its depth that it has color, and so that which is beyond measure in depth or height looks blue. The river is not blue, but when it touches the ocean it becomes blue. It is the same with a raindrop which is clear only until it touches the ocean. So the name of formlessness and depth is Neelam, the blue which is not blue. This is the unseen in all beings which gives all. To know this is wisdom, light, freedom, emancipation from the cycles of samsara. You must see that your own depth is colorless and formless. To know this, you must go to the teacher who will instantly tell you that which you did not know. This blueness is the blueness of Krishna, who is the attracting, incomprehensible depth of love. 
Will you give me a first shove into this depth of love beyond mind? You want to go beyond? Then go alone and carry nothing with you. Don't think of anything. Go even without thought. Not thinking is beyond. The trouble is with your thinking. You think you are suffering or with a relationship. All this you must give up absolutely. Then you will not come back to the previous habits. Simply do not think and stay alone. Troubles only arise with thoughts, as the whole world arises only from thoughts. Why get yourself in all of this trouble? Simply do not think. When you don't think you don't need to do anything else. This is quite enough. And don't make any effort to not think. She gets it and laughs it is so simple. This laugh from beyond is conceptless and very different. This is how it has to be done. How did you call me here? I am so grateful for everything. You are like a bird which flies over the borders of countries with no need of a passport. The bird is never arrested only the man. You are free like a bird, free of all societal impositions and identifications. Don't listen to society. Be free and go wherever you like, and then of course, you will be called to a place of freedom where similar birds fly. Those who stay behind will continue to suffer. It is true that the individual I and mind never existed and that ignorance has never existed? It is too much to understand, but it is true. Where there is light there is no darkness. What is that light that enables you to know that there is light? I feel so good now, in your presence that my mind won't move enough to allow me to follow your words. This is intelligence. I feel that I have touched something like nothing I have never touched before. And this is bliss, this is the happiness that will never disappear, this is nothing. One touch of this is enough because it is not in time. One ray from this is enough to hold your mind forever. It will not allow any conflict between you and your old habits and activities. You are very lucky. I will tell you a Sufi parable. In one of the great ancient courts everyone was waiting, according to rank, for the king to enter. In came a plain, shabby dressed man who took a seat above everybody else. The prime minister ordered the newcomer to identify himself. Are you a minister? No, more than that was the man's answer. Are you a king? Asked the prime minister. Greater than all kings I am, said the man. Are you God? He asked. I am above that also, replied the poor man. The prime minister retorted there is nothing above God, which brought the reply, that nothing is me. Since God has manifested as the world can you worship the earth as a form of worship to God? Everything that is created is in God. Then who will worship whom? If you are separate then you can worship, but if you know that all creations are the choice of God then you can't make the choice to get out of this choice in order to worship the choice. We need not worship anybody because we are that itself. Let worship be for those who do not know this. True worship is the spontaneous love and adoration of self. Anything else called worship is just an idea of worship coming from the heads of religions in order to give you fear. If you don't worship, you will go to hell. The worship and fear go together. You can't worship if you don't have any fear. But why have fear? God is living inside you and you are living inside God. Make the decision with right discrimination. Then you can do whatever you like. If you bring the concept of sin and merit in your brain then you can go and follow any church, but I don't advise you to go to any church because you are not different from that. You are that. Give belief to this fact. Sit quietly for ten minutes before sleep and after waking up, and give the rest of the time to the world, helping those who need your help. Pythagoras once said, it is best to stay silent or to say something better than silence. I think that he knew the teaching. Habir says something similar. Habir spoke from a pure heart, and only a pure heart can catch hold of the meaning. In his own words he says, Japa mure, ajat mure. Chanting dies, silence also ends. Anabat bimarjai. 
that which has no limits space also dies. Tharati Samani Shabd Main, when awareness merges with the word Tako Kala Na Kui, then that does not die. What you speak dies, what you do not speak also dies. What has no limits also dies. The awareness consciousness enters into word, and that does not die. Many people at the Kabir Math in Varanasi wanted to know what this awareness word was and how the limitless could die. Anahat means limitless, and it is also a word for Aum. So beyond Anahat there is a word that nobody knows. Anahat is not limitlessness. Your message should be still has finally come home. Thank you so much. Tem glad you are back here and that you went to Arunachala, the place which gives you silence and peace. Establish your identity with the one who has no identity or name or form. Identify with that. Nobody is there except silence. Identify with this place. Is the self that which is the center of all things. Self has no center, no circumference, no meditator to meditate on a center, and no meditation. It is very free, very fluent, very natural and spontaneous, and has no fatigue because there is no doership. Doership is I am doing this, I have to do that, I am troubled and I am happy. All these relationships will not be there because they are just passing through the body. You are untouched by all of these. You are beyond even the concept of all of this. You can turn your back on all manifestations, gods, creatures, but do not be shy to your own self. You have been shy all of these millions of years and looking at what was not worth looking at. Now, don't be shy of your own self. Open your eyes and see. Papaji, it is just space. Excellent, excellent, it is space and it has no limitations. Everything is in this space and you are the space. I am space. There are no limitations. All desires are met here when you are in this space because everything is in this space. This is how all the desires of one who is this space are fulfilled before they arise. The king of a country does not say, I will buy this land and that land over there. This idea does not even come to him because he is the monarch of the whole kingdom, he owns everything. Though it is when you become this space, there will be the end of desires, and therefore, the end of suffering. Desire gives you suffering. Whenever any desire arises, you want to go near it, you want to achieve it, and you do then you are happy, isn't it? You may think that the object made you happy, but really it is the absence of desire, that moment of emptiness that makes you happy. Being empty of desire is happiness. Return to your own source and you are happy. This is the trick of happiness. To get rid of all suffering and all death stay as source. There nothing exists, all is perfection, fullness, and that is your nature. You are already that and will always be that. All these notions like I am the body and I am ego give you suffering. These notions you have been told, and there was a time when all these notions did not exist. You were perfect and even now you are perfect. Get rid of all these notions that have been dumped on your head. Check them off. Check them off and you will see who you are at this present moment. What notion is in your mind right now? I'm noticing how much struggle there is when I don't let go. There is no need to struggle. It is the struggling that is the suffering. Don't give rise to any thought, not even the thought of who is going to struggle, and not even the thought of I. No I, no body, no ego, no mind, no senses, no objects, no manifestations. To return back see that manifestation is not other than these senses and sense perceptions. The manifestation is what your sense perceptions are. Senses are not other than mind going out. You cannot really separate the mind from the senses. There's no mind without the senses. Mind is not other than ego and ego is not other than the I. And this I, this sense of being, is not other than the source. Now let's start from source and see what happens. I rises from the source like a wave rises from the ocean. Let this I arise and let everything belong to you. 
I arises and becomes ego, ego becomes mind, mind becomes senses, senses become the objects of their respective senses. All this is within you rising within you, within consciousness. You must be consciousness to see everything in consciousness. But you are in trouble because you think that you are the body and mind, and this is the cause of suffering. It is arrogance to consider yourself an individual ego mind body and to attribute all that you do to this individual, it is just simply arrogance. Why not call all this the source? Why not call all this consciousness? All of this is emptiness, you just play the game of the dancer in it and let this game be played. You can see yourself as individual or as consciousness. One is destruction and one is peace. What more? They as is and see. You don't have to control anything, don't desire anything to happen. You are the space. Everything is I, everything is you, everything is itself, and this is your nature. You don't have to do anything about it. Keep things open, and see now the emptiness, see the screen on which all is projected. When you go to a theater you see pictures projected on a screen. Some are of mountains and rivers, some of romance, and some are people being attacked by robbers. When the movie is over the screen has no wetness from the river, nor smell from the romance, nor bullet holes from the robbers' guns. The screen is immaculately clean. This manifestation is all a projection of your desires which fall across your mind and cause you to identify yourself as the projected watcher of the picture. You are not these projections, you are the screen. If you identify yourself with the immaculate, unchanging, eternal screen itself, which is the same before, during, and after the show, you will not change and so you will not suffer the changes, but enjoy them. All beings are this one immaculate screen. There's no need for practice to clean the dust off it because it is beyond everything. The teachers who want you to do lifetimes of practice can clean this dust off their own minds. I want this forever. This experience you did not have before, and all the experiences which you had, they have left, they are gone. Therefore, we still want this forever. This will not leave you. Before things were leaving you. Now here you will not be left. You are in the grip of a very supreme power. You will not be allowed to be left. It's not your fear now. You can't escape now you cannot escape. You cannot escape love. You cannot escape love. Once you touch it you get lost. Nothing ever exists that can come out again. Everything is discharged and becomes that itself. When the river enters into the ocean, it will turn instantly into the ocean. I still cannot believe it is possible. When the river enters the ocean, does it ask the question, will I be forever like this? That is the previous fear that is leaving now. All the experiences get lost because they were not perpetual, they were not permanent. They were only imaginations, only hallucinations therefore they get lost. This is beyond concept, perceptions, imagination. Where will it be lost? The wave is afraid, I want to ever remain a wave. Here is in the mind of the wave, I will be lost, I will be lost. Wave is now fearing, I will be lost. Where will it be lost? Where will it go? Whenever lost, what will it become? When the wave is lost, no more a wave, it returns back to its source, the ocean. The ocean she was, the ocean she is, and the ocean she will be. Where? Forever. There is no time concept at all. Time is in the mind of an ignorant person. Ignorant because in light, in wisdom, there is no such notion that I am separate from all or separate from fullness, from vastness. That was a notion before, in the mind of an ignorant person. In wisdom no such notions arise. No separation. All is unity and love and beauty. There is no escape. Ignorance is gone. This is eternal life, this is nectar. Yes I see. I see nothing. Excellent. If you see this seeing is being. 
when you see through the eyes at objects that may be distortion, but this seeing is being. There are different eyes to see. It depends on you which eyes you want to use and are using. This sight has nothing to do with eyes. It is inner being, inner sight, and if you do it, you will see always with the same eyes inside or outside. There will be no difference between Nirvana and Samsara. Whatever you will see will be inside. All beauty, all wisdom. That eye has no limitation. Not inside or outside, you see. When you give up looking through these eyes on your head, the other eyes will open. They'll pick up the eye thought as you have done now, return back, and that sight will open. When you said I see nothing, nothingness is the beauty of that sight, that divine sight. You will get it and you will see everything as being beautiful. When you can see a pig or a dog, why not see God? God is the seer in you. When you see a dog, know it is God who is seeing the dog. That much faith you should have, and you must do it by yourself. Everybody is going to cheat you by telling you that what you are doing is stupidness. Though, I am happy that you are a strong person. Stick to your path even if there is no body. Then you walk alone. I understand that from the point of view of the self there is nothing to do, but from the point where I am is there anything I can do to loosen the grip of the mind and remove this addiction to ego. First of all find out if your point of view is superior to the point of view of the self and if it is follow your own. If you are superior to the creator, to your father, to your own self, if you are more superior than the Atman, then you follow your own point of view and see the consequences of the practices. Point of view of self is self. Truth is truth. This is already here and now. What practice do you need to arrive at yourself and to see yourself? Do you need any? No, but when thoughts come up. Self is earlier than your body, earlier than what you speak, earlier than the word. How do you reach him? Give up the concept of any practice, any method. If you have done this then tell me what is it? Where are you? Don't give rise to any concept of effort or practice. Don't make any effort and don't stir your mind. Don't think and don't make any effort. If you really understand what I mean, tell me who you are and what do you want. No practice, no thought in between these two. Don't think, don't stir a single thought in your mind and don't make any effort. If you have heard what I speak about, then it is your time to speak. Now tell me who are you? Don't think, don't make any effort. I just want to see God. Therefore, God has brought you here now. Everyone is God, but we do not see it unless we see God within ourselves. If you first see God in yourself, you will see him in the animals, birds and rocks. More and more, I do see God hiding in people's eyes. Laughing God is not hiding. When you do not see God, it is only because you are looking elsewhere. So you must absolutely see God and nothing else. Then, it is the God that is looking through your eyes. Surrender to God and keep quiet and he will take your responsibilities. As long as you take your responsibilities on your own head, God doesn't take care and it only seems that he is hiding. You say I am God. Is the drop the same as the ocean? There is no difference between the drop and the ocean. It is the totality of drops that make the ocean. Endless drops are the ocean. Are they of the same quality? Is your no mind the same as mine? Yes, they have the same quality. One grain of sugar and a pound of sugar taste the same. And yes, your no mind is the same as mine. You say that no mind is no doubt. Laughing no mind is no doubt because there is nothing there to doubt. What is the experience in no mind? There is no experience. There is only experience out of this of some object. You have to get rid of the experiences of the past and in this second, there is no experience, nothing to experience, and no experiencer. You are free of everything. Experiences happen in time, but in this moment there is no time, this instant is out of time. It seems easy to miss the beauty of ordinary no mind. There is no ordinary no mind. No mind is no mind. No mind is where you don't think about anyone. 
not about you, not about anyone else. Where words and language disappear. This is no mind. Let the mind sleep, this is no mind freedom enlightenment. But when the mind is awake then you are bound. Let the mind sleep and you stay awake. Please illumine my mind with the truth which will set me free. I want to see the Atma Surya shining in the heart, which burns away all desires. Please enlighten me. This Atma Surya which you are referring to is in your heart. How to see the light of the Surya, is right belief, right knowledge, right actions. And you will see it, it will reveal itself. Your belief should not shake. I have to see this sun in my own heart, this is right belief. To understand this is right knowledge. With this you have to improve all your actions to all the beings. You must act with love and compassion so that none is hurt by you. This will take you to see where the sun abides in the heart. This sun abides in the hearts of all beings. Once you see your own sun you will see this same light in all beings, not only in the animals, but even in the insects. But you have to see your own light first. You have a beautiful name, Hari. Who gave you this name? Anandamima. It means one who steals the hearts of all beings. One who swallows the heart of all beings. It is a beautiful name of the self. A wave called Jasmine would love a wave called Papaji to look into her eyes and celebrate that. A celebration will take place if these waves are not separate from the ocean. It is only a wave who thinks that he is separate. I can travel anywhere in the water. I have length and breadth by which I swim to the shore. But again it falls back and becomes ocean. Though know that I am ocean, because the water content of the wave is not different than the water content of the ocean. This water is the basis of the unity that is not affected even if the wave thinks it is separate from the ocean. You are not different than the ocean and the ocean is not separate from the wave. This you must celebrate, the end of separation. Nothing arises without self. All existence is one in one's own self. The wave plays on the chest of the ocean, feeling separation, she moves through time. Eventually, she falls back into ocean. As she rises from the ocean, and walks in the ocean, and she falls back into ocean, the oneness is not disturbed. The movement of the wave makes no difference to the ocean. The ocean being not separate from you cannot cheat you. If you know this you can play as you like, love doesn't forget. If you don't know this you will suffer. I had a very strong dream last light after which there was considerable silence. I don't know what it means. This silence is a border. There is neither waking nor sleeping only silence. This border behind waking and sleeping is the silence in which you do not experience anything. You do not have any memory of the past. It had no name, but if you want to use one, silence or emptiness are the best. Not knowing what it means is confirmation of the border of the silence, because senses and memory are not working and the ego is not there. This is between sleep and waking. Here there is no I and no you and no they. This can be called emptiness. From here everything emerges or appears and into this all disappears as well. Would you please speak again of how the Buddha's face is on every sand grain. In every sand grain you can see the face of Buddha. Everyone can do it. Everywhere you can see your own face. The face of Buddha means the face of your own wisdom, your own self, your own Atma. Then you will see the Atman living in all atoms of the universe. But you must first introduce yourself to this grain of sand, to this most minute particle on earth. First of all, remove all desires to see anything anywhere. Then you will see your face everywhere because where are you not present? I cannot actually speak of this, but it is an experience that every enlightened person has. Everybody will have this experience if they only give up their desire for any object, any person and any idea. When you do it instantly you will see. Don't have the desire to meet with any person because every person belongs to past. Any object or concept that you speak about all belong to the past. 
If you don't touch the past, then you will see your face everywhere. Otherwise you will think that you are a donkey. I know that I am a lion, but I want to know why I am walking with the donkeys. I want to let my donkeyness go and always be a lion. If you know that you are a lion then there is no problem to walk with the donkeys, because donkey is the food of a lion. The trouble comes when the lion forgets that he is a lion and thinks that he is a donkey. I will tell you the enlightening story of a lion. Once there was a washerman, a laundryman. In ancient times they would load the laundry of the village onto a donkey and bring it to a riverbank to wash it. One day, a lioness came to drink water at the place where the laundryman was washing when a poacher shot and killed her. As the lioness was dying she gave birth. The poacher came and skinned the lioness, but left the newborn cub behind, so the laundryman came and took it home in his basket and nursed it with milk. Now be careful to listen to what happened to this lion. This cub did not know who its mother was and was fed by the washerman, who also took him to the river every day. Eventually he was big enough, and so the washerman started loading this donkey up with linen. This donkey started to eat grass with the other donkeys, because one acquires the habits of those that they keep company with, just as a child who stays with smokers starts to smoke. This is how habits are formed. One day when this donkey was grazing with the other donkeys, a lion saw it and thought, I am confused, how is this lion eating grass with the donkeys? His food is donkeys, but he's eating grass with the donkeys. I will go near and see. Though he went near and all the donkeys fled away including this donkey. But the lion was very big and fast and caught hold of the donkey by the neck and said, what is the matter? You are a lion and yet you are running with the donkeys and you are afraid of me. We belong to the same community. No sir, don't bluff me, I am a donkey, the young lion said as he trembled in the grip of the wise old lion. I am a donkey. Please don't eat me. My brothers and sister are waiting for me. Let me go please. Don't make a joke, I know I am a donkey. You are a lion, don't be so foolish to think that you are a donkey said the wise lion. How can I believe this that I am a lion? I am a donkey. So this wise lion took him to the river and said, Look at the reflection of your face, is your face not similar to mine? The young lion exclaimed, Yes sir, my face is like yours. Now open your mouth and utter a roar like me. This lion didn't know how to roar. He had been braying with the donkeys, and had forgotten how to roar because nobody had told him this. But to roar was his nature and so he opened up his mouth and roared. Instantly he became a lion. This roar removed all doubt about who he really was. Then this lion went after the donkeys to eat them. Now the question is, how did this donkey become a lion? In one instant of time he was a lion. What made this donkey a lion? He uttered a roar. Otherwise he was always braying. Though you need a Sakuru to take you to the river and show you your own face. You are not a donkey, but you are living in the society of donkeys, which are the people who are body bound and say I am bound. Those who say I am bound, I am suffering, I am dying are all donkeys. Yuru tells you that you are not bound. Utter a roar that I am free. That makes the difference. But you have only been bleeding because this is the habit of the society that you live with. Lions become donkeys when they are in evil company. When you come here I will forcibly part your jaws and make you roar. You have been born to parents who are donkeys and this made the difference, but a donkey cannot stay in front of a lion. Stop staying in your own shit which you have shat for lifetimes and be a lion. It's up to you. Wait, grow up, suffer and do what the donkeys are doing. Somebody will put dirty linen on you and you will be under the charge of the laundryman. No. Someday some lion will look at you, and you will become a lion, because you have always been a lion. No donkey becomes a lion. Only stupid foolish wicked society turns you into a donkey. Tenses are the donkey, but you really are a lion, eternal unborn consciousness. The lion Sakuru takes you to the lake of consciousness to show you your own face. 
you are already that, and this is all the teacher has to say. Anyone who identifies themselves as individual is a sheep and has very big arrogant ego. Lions have no eye, no ego, and no identification. Sheep are led to the slaughterhouse to be butchered, but butchers are the food of lions. My dear friend, you are a free man. Who told you that you were bound? Think about this, no one has bound your hands, no one has chained your feet. You simply think that you are bound and so you are bound. If you think you are free, you are free. It is up to you. I am free and you are free. This is a thought only. When you don't think, you are a realized person. Thank you for bringing me to the river. I have only been yawning, not roaring. A yawn is when you are going to sleep. A roar means you are awake. When the lion roars it means that it is awake and all the animals of the forests like the deer and rabbits run away because it is awake. But when the lion yawns everybody says, the lion is sleeping so let us go and find our food. Hearing the roar everybody goes back to their holes. So when you roar all the tendencies of the mind of the laziness and all thieves of peace which keep you from finding yourself will run away and not be there. Now you are awake. The roar is I am free. Looking for something to only feed your body or your mind or just your eyes means that you are yawning. Therefore, you have to make the roar I am free. Where to go? The ego is sleeping and so this is the perfect time to go and attend satsang. Those people who are sleeping have not yet heard the roar of their self and therefore have been sleeping and will keep on sleeping. There is no way to bring them to satsang because it is not the time for those people. Let them sleep but you stay awake come to satsang and roar like a lion. Chapter The Sat Guru The self is the Sat Guru, you will get help from within. Here your true guide is, here all wisdom and knowledge is, but due to your preoccupations you do not see it. The Sat Guru is within, meditate only on that. The Sat Guru is greater than all else even God. The Sakuru is truth awareness bliss, and is like the sun, you no longer need a torch to see. Because you do not understand the language of the self, the Sakuru manifests as the outer guru. If you think that you have a body you need a teacher with one. They with the holy one who gives you peace. He is like a shade tree in the desert of Samsara. This guru is the butcher of the sheep ego. His function is to tell you I am within you and to give you the conviction that you are existence consciousness bliss. Every true teacher tells you, look within, there is no difference between yourself self and Guru. The Guru shows the treasure which is already always there. The teacher will not be recognized by the diamonds on his head or by the number of students he has. Know the teacher to be the one whose presence gives you peace and removes all craving, attachment, and desire. Johnny's torch burns down the house of false convictions, but as Kabir says, nobody takes this fire. The teacher is one who knows the truth and can transmit this truth to a humble one by look, by touch, by thought, or as Aaron Achala does by silence. This silence is the light that does not move. The true teacher has no students, all is being and only silence speaks. The perfect teacher has no teachings because he knows that you are free already. Though the true teacher's non-teaching is that there is no teacher, no student, no teaching, and that nothing has ever existed. This teaching must be without words and must land in your heart. If you try to understand, it will only land in your head. The true teacher removes all names and forms and concepts. The preacher adds them like a noose around your neck. The preacher clings to you like a vulture clings to a fresh corpse. The true teacher will teach only to the extent that can be absorbed and then send the student away. So you must test the teacher. Look at the guru's lineage, it is very important. And their answers must be backed by practical experience, because all the saints sing from emptiness, not from the mind. Association with the mind is not beautiful or worthwhile. Approaching the self is like walking on a razor's edge. Two cannot go there, you can't even bring your mind or a thought. Though the only one who can help you is self. 
anything that touches this flame becomes flame. Touch a sage and you become a sage, knowing self you see only self and this self is your teacher. Eventually you have to get rid of the name and form of both your master and yourself, you have to reject the finger in order to see the moon. Where there is name and form there is falsehood, there is an impediment to freedom, because nothing that you see will give you freedom. Hold on only to self when you are drowning, reach for anything else and you will die. Sakguru is within, meditate only on that. The true teacher is self, all else is pointing to self. Don't cling to anything made from the five elements. The guru has no body, visible or invisible. Do not depend on any body, which are just fingers pointing to the truth. Guru is your own self, not ego self, self here and now. Reject the form of the guru and only the supreme is left. It is not possible to lose your own self. You only have to be told by the guru who you are. This pilot is love beauty, this freedom is the master. To sit quietly, all is taken care of. Questioner, what is the guru? Answer from Papaji. The literal meaning of this word is the one who dispels darkness, so the guru is that which opens your heart, that which shows you light. Guru is wisdom and light itself. How can one identify a true master? Is it true that the master is the one who stops your mind? A true master cannot be identified through his words or his actions, but your mind will likely become quiet around him. Often people propagate signs and symptoms of the teacher, but the true teacher has no symptoms at all. Somehow he can convey his message silently. Some people once came to me and said they would only accept me as a teacher if I could stop my heart from beating. They got what they came for, but really there is no question about stopping the heart or any other said, I that anybody can attain. Why are so many masters male? There is only one master that is neither male nor female. That master shines within you as your very self. Identifying as male or female keeps you from knowing this. What about Budba and Jesus and? There is no male or female for the teacher. The teacher is within your own self. He is neither male nor female. You only speak about what you see. This male and that female is created by your mind. When you sleep are you male or female? Do you need a guru, a living guru to be realized? You cannot realize the self without the grace of the living guru. If you are in a body, you need a physical guru. If you are in a body you need a guru in the body, otherwise the guru is within, but you don't understand his language. So the guru in the body is necessary for the student in the body, so that they can converse with each other and remove the doubts of the student. Then the student will know that the guru is within. You need a guru without just to tell you I am within you. Guru is formless within you and you also are formless. If you know this you don't need a guru with a body. If you are fortunate enough to find a teacher with a body do not miss the chance. Do the masters who are not in the body have the power to be my master? You have that power so that you can listen to the master who has no body, then you do not need an embodied master because that master is always there without body. It is that through which you speak. It is in your heart. Do you listen to him? Do you listen to that formless teacher who is teaching within you? Yes, I do. If you did you would not have asked all these questions. So how about Christians and Budbis who have no living Kiru? You must find a living Kiru whether in the west or the east and test him. If your mind is quiet in his presence, then obey him and stay with him. If you think you have a body you need a Kiru in the body to help you. You will find this guru when you have an intense desire to be free. Then you will see that the guru will come to your door, as it happened in my case. I had such an intense desire for freedom that no other desire was in my mind. Why are some people like Ramana Maharshi able to find the truth without a physical guru? Ramana Mahar, she also had a physical guru whose physique was very big. It was Aranachala itself. Guru can be in any form. Arunachala is silent and does not move which are symptoms of a good Guru. 
The real guru does not teach by words because by words the truth cannot be conveyed. Silence is the teaching. The Maharshi also taught by silence, like the mountain. Most other teachers bark day and night. If you are quiet and at peace this shanty is your own guru. That cannot be found anywhere except within. This is why we begin each satsang with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And you have to remove the doubts from the student's mind so you can speak, but this is not a talk. If you have doubt come to the guru and ask him your question, so that your doubt can be removed. When you have no doubt you are in peace. Can a person have two gurus? Do I have to choose one or the other? Everything is your guru, rocks teach you silence, trees teach you compassion, and the breeze teaches you non-attachment. You can have many gurus and lecturers and psychologists, but the sat guru is one. How to meet this master? With no ego. That guru is within your own self and nowhere else. Your sat guru dwells in your heart and in the heart of all beings. Since you don't understand his language, by grace he takes a form to point you within. The Maharshi often would say, the real guru is within. Most teachers will not tell you this, and will insist that you keep their picture and no other. But you don't get peace from them. However, if you just go to Ramanashramam and sit in Ramana's hall, the peace will unfold itself to you. My heart seems to be burning with two fires, my love for Papaji and my love for my Western Master. As you say, they seem to be the same source, the same fire. If you say that the fire is the same, then you are not concerned with the candles. There may be one, hundred candles, but the flame is one. Don't worry about how many candles there are, just take care to find out if the flame is the same or not. Put your finger in each flame and if it is the same you need not worry. Flame is only one and that flame is within you. Candles have nothing to do with the flame. The bodies, the names have nothing to do with the flame. Flame is within you and that is your teacher. This flame within is your teacher. Not that without. This flame is within, and if you depend on that without, you are making a mistake. Anything without will disappear including your ego mind body, senses and objects. What will not disappear is that flame. Try to see this flame within you and don't depend on what is outside. If you have a glimpse of it, then speak to me about this flame. Gurus can be thousands like mosquitoes, but the sad guru is one in all the universe. Those like mosquitoes will bite you and suck your blood and then run away. The sad guru will totally swallow you, your ego, your mind. You can only love one and that is not in time. The mosquitoes are in time. What is the master-disciple relationship? How does it work? The master is the one who shows you that you are light itself, and that darkness never existed. He looks into her eyes, pauses, giggles and then says, This is how it will work. Why do you want this relationship? Who told you that there is a relationship between the disciple and the teacher? Where did you read this? You have heard about it, but you do not know what the relationship is. If I tell you, you will not understand it. You must first fall into the this relationship and then you won't need an explanation of it. Just like you don't need an explanation of love when you are falling in love with a boy. If your mother describes this relationship to you when you are a seven-year-old girl will you understand? You are not to make any effort in this relationship. When you are in front of your beloved, this beloved will not ask you to make any effort. This beloved will take care of you, and whatever she does you will accept it. At that time you will not think, what is going on? Because in love there is no dialogue. In love there is no dialogue, no question, no answer. Simply both are quiet. You are quiet, and your beloved is quiet and something great is going to happen now. You have to wait. What is the difference between you and me? Why do you sit on the chair? and I sit on the floor. Those who believe in difference belong on the floor. Those who do not, sit on the chair. Papaji, who are you? I am that. This and that or only that. Not this and that. 
that that is that that which is beyond any finger pointing to it, and if you hold on to the finger you can't see it. Who is God and what is your relation with him? I will give you this reply, I am God. I have no relation with him. In order to have a relation you need another person and there is no other person besides God. Therefore I have no relation with anyone else. I am full as God. Is the Guru one with God? There is no difference between a realized being and God. God with capital G capital O and capital D. There is no difference at all because Guru and God have no form and in formlessness there are no differences. I know nothing about immortality. What happens when the master dies? Is there any entity remaining? My guru died many years ago and often I wonder if he's still available. How was it for you when your guru died? My guru is not dead. I never thought that my guru was just the bones, skin, blood and marrow. I see my precious teacher only and that teacher is within, within your own self. This, within your own self, comes without to teach you that I am within you. If you would have had this teaching clarified during the lifetime of your teacher, you would not be sad today. The teaching is more important than the body of the teacher. When you drink water in a cup, do you eat the cup and throw away the water? No, what is inside the cup is more precious, not that without. What is without is only the container, but what is contained nobody knows. Though you can see that your teacher who was without is still within your heart in a subtle form. This subtle form never died. When you look within you will see. You also must become subtle and you will see the subtle form of everybody whom you have loved. When you love someone, even though they are dead, you can see them with your eyes closed. Even in sleep you can see them in dreams. But the love must be very intimate love, true love. When you love someone truly from the bottom of your heart, that person can never be absent from you. So now you are here. Stay for a few days and find out what you have missed. Physical attachment can be kept on forever because the Guru never dies. Can you help me find the inner Guru? The outer Guru gives you the address of the inner Guru. Then you will know that this inner Guru has been hiding because there is too much going on in your mind. Therefore, you can't see him. You don't see the inner guru because you look somewhere else. Stop looking and it will reveal itself without your effort. To stop your mind from chasing all its loves and enjoyments. The trick of the mind is to run after things for ages, getting kicks from everywhere. Few people want to be free of these nasty kicks. You decide to be free and not be a slave of the mind. Control the mind as a slave and it will be very helpful to you. Know this trick from the outer guru. Control the slave, love the slave, keep it quiet. Don't trouble the mind and don't let it trouble you. This is how to control the mind. Everyone will not do this. Just a few of you will be successful in this attempt. Can you speak about service to the guru? Am I serving you by being here? Once I said that to receive knowledge one must serve the teacher for twelve years. This was the tradition in ancient times, but now people are very much in a hurry. They come and say that they want to be free and that they have a reservation on the evening flight. To them I say you have come in a hurry and with a rope tied to something else. The ancient said twelve years as a test. The man was not really desiring freedom he would run away. People who come only to cheat the teacher will run away when presented with twelve years of service to the guru. For that purpose the teacher said to the students to stay for twelve years, after which he would give the student knowledge. Actually I don't require twelve years. Here I just want one instant of your time and people still find it difficult. Out of a whole life span, I only want one instant to be spent here with me. This is difficult for most and if they miss it they have to go through another cycle of 35 million years of births and rebirths. So, since you are here spend one second with me. I served my master for nine years before he dropped his body. You are looking very good. There is a shine on your face which shows your nine years of dedication. Now your former teacher has pushed you to spend three years in luck now. That is why you are here. 
This is the invisible grace of the former teacher, so for three years you stay here. I will tell you a very easy method to be free, clean the shoes outside of the people who come to satsang. This will wipe out your ego. Don't simply come when the hall is ready for satsang. It is not that. You have to clean the seats, clean the floor and also clean the shoes. Try it just for one day. It means you are cleaning your ego and without ego that nothing is possible. Is there anything I can do for you? I just told you. Do nothing for me, do it for everybody. Look after everybody so that they are happy to see you. It is better to serve the devotee of God than to serve God himself. That is what is said. Therefore in India when people are going into a temple they take the dust from the threshold of the temple and smear it on their forehead before entering the temple. That is how it should be done. Otherwise the ego is very strong. The ego will not allow you to get moksha liberation in this life. Each day you shower the love on us. But I don't feel worthy or pure enough. It is good that you see that you have some impurities because now you will try to make your heart clean but nobody knows or believes that their hearts are impure. Look after your own impurities to begin with, and when your own mind is clean, you will not see any impurities in the mind of others. So, remove the impurities, the thoughts. Wherever there is thought, it is an impurity. If there is no thought, you are worthy. Papaji, I have a question for you that I would like to ask so that I can write an article about you. I can do it later if you wish. I leave tomorrow at 10 a.m. Why not now? Why later? You have already been postponing for two billion years. Today is the time. Don't make any later appointments. Ask your questions now. Time is very short and you are leaving tomorrow. First of all, that is not the way. That is not the way to go to a teacher. If you go to a teacher, you must forget your return ticket. You must come on a single ticket. You are talking about tomorrow at 1000 hours, so you have only 24 hours until then. You have already bound yourself to the next day which has not come. Why do you speak of it? Don't even speak of the next second. Don't postpone it. You do not know what will happen. So make the best of now itself. The teacher is there. Your desire for freedom is there. What trouble is there? Laughing. Nothing. I told you not to postpone and there came a laugh. Where did this laugh come from? The teacher gives no teaching. He only makes you laugh, and in this laughter there is only emptiness. Can you say your laughter is containing something? No. Laughter is just laughter and it doesn't take time. To cry you need a person to cry, but not to be happy. Laughing so now ask me your questions. Ask me questions of just now. Don't ask your old rotten questions of yesterday. Ask me fresh questions which just now arise. I have no questions. The question on this sheet is for an article that I would like to write. It will be answered when you take a pen and paper in hand. The answers will come simultaneously. Write an article which makes a reader laugh instead of writing a book with so many things. Let your reader laugh and tell them how to laugh. That is a good message. A book or article should not be passed. Your questions are passed now already, but you must write something very fresh. Let me hear one of your questions. I will clarify this for you so you can tell to others what happened when you were here in India. India has given so many enlightened people, but the people you teach are mainly Westerners. Can you explain that? Of course, almost all sages and saints who have been enlightened have been from nowhere else but India. I have rarely seen anybody even with a desire for freedom. I have traveled the world to speak with those people who are enlightened to have their views and to find out what they are doing. I once was told that there was an enlightened person living on a mountain near Montserrat in Spain. Though every other Christian goes to church, he does not go. He has been allowed by the Pope not to go. Otherwise, Christians who do not go to church will go to hell. I also heard of a man called Alfonso living in Greece on Mount Athos, a very holy mountain they say, so I wanted to go see both of them. 
The man at Montserrat lived in a small hut nine hundred fifty steps above the monastery. I found him meditating with an alm in front of him. He told me that when he concentrates on alm, all his impurities are washed away. He also was wearing an alm around his neck. There was nowhere that he needed to go because concentrating on the alm was enough. I saw that these men had attained something, but the formula was from India, this alm that we start satsing with. This alm was picked up by Christians and called Amen. The Muslims call it Amen. They are both forms of alm. You and the other Westerners are coming here because you once upon a time lived here in India. But you had some personal physical desires that you wanted to be fulfilled and since you could not fulfill then in India, these desires gave you a birth in the West. Now, you ask why are these Westerners here? Because they have fulfilled their desires therefore you are here. Otherwise you would not have come. Though anybody who has a desire must have it fulfilled where this desire will be your next life. If your desires are over you do not need to go anywhere. Then you will see the real secret that everything is about. It is all your desires that you see. But when your mind in quiet, without desire, this is called enlightenment. Don't wait to do it after death, do it now. When you laugh it means your desires have vanished, so just keep laughing. I want a sharp weapon to kill my thoughts. Surrender to the person who is very intelligent and sharp and who knows about the tactics of war and peace. Give him the reins to your chariot. Listen to his commands and do as he says. There is no other weapon as sharp as surrender to the teacher. He will fight for you. I advise you to surrender to the teacher and listen to him from the inside. Then let the body become like a machine. You don't work it, it is just working. Find the charioteer seated in your heart and you will be at peace always. You have been in my dreams often lately. Do some teachers manifest themselves in the dreams of their students? This happens to very serious people who do not find a guru. In the dream they will be given instructions. In my own case my guru first appeared to me like this. Some people say that he came to me in a dream, but even at this, it is a fact that he came. Eknath Guru Janardhan Swami came to him in a dream also. As Eknath dreamed an address was given to him. When he woke up he went to the address, found his guru there and was enlightened. You just have to be a very serious seeker, and then you do not have to find a guru because your guru will find you. Even gods will come to you, but you have to be very serious about your search. It doesn't matter if your guru is there or not there. In a dream a few nights ago, I saw Ramana Maharshi coming to me in a cave. The next night I saw Ram, Saita, and Gangama in a dream. Are these darshans diamonds or distractions? Having darshan of saints and gods and even the holy river Ganga shows that your mind is pure. Each of these visits will purify you, they are not harmful. To have a vision of a saint or a god in a dream is very beautiful. Let it continue. When you come to people in dreams is this just a dream or indeed a visit? It is neither dream or waking state. This is the fourth state, the Turiya state. It is the true state of a person. There is no difference between the devotee and the teacher, so the devotee can see the teacher in this way. We are just playing parts given by the divine. Form we take doesn't matter. Actors take different roles. Sometimes they are friends, sometimes they are enemies, some are females and some are males. But the essence is neither male nor female. Who is it that hates or loves? Nobody knows. I woke up this morning and remembered that you had come to me in a dream last night. We were sitting on the side of the river when I gave you a flower. You looked at the flower, smiled and said, The flow of the river is one. I will take you to the life of Buddha. Kashyap goes with a flower and gives it to the Buddha. Buddha smiles and Kashyap became enlightened, Maha Kashyap. Since then for centuries, people have researched what this means. Handing over a flower, a smile, enlightenment. This is a great teaching. You pick a flower, bring it to the teacher, he smiles. 
Nobody can give the exact meaning of how he became enlightened with a smile from his teacher. If you find it, keep quiet and simply see. Kashyap returned there. It means it is so easy. Take a flower, offer it to the teacher, he will smile and you are enlightened. Don't ask why he smiled. Don't ask and like a flower you will blossom. Many things can be attributed to this but don't ask. It is a very deep meaning. You have to find out yourself. The questions I can give you are, what is a flower? How to offer the flower? What is the meaning of smile? To whom did you give the flower? What is meant by flower? I want to live so close to you and stay at your feet. Why my feet? Why not closer? Do you know what is closer? I want you to dwell in my heart. This is the best place and it has no distance. Here the sun and moon and stars do not shine. This is my dwelling place. Once you arrive here there is no return because you become one with me, losing all the vasanas which would otherwise cause you to reappear on earth. You have enjoyed everything in this world. Now enjoy your own peace and love by simply staying quiet. Why do I come to you in order to trust myself? If you do not come to me you will always have mistrust. When you come to the teacher you have a trust that he will remove your doubt and then your dream will be over. For that reason you should have no doubt. Your doubts are like clouds, how long can they stay in front of the sun? They will move away so that you can trust in the sun where the light comes from. May I come and look into your eyes so that I will find peace? Who told you that if you look into the eyes of a person you will find peace and rest? There is truth in it, if you see the eyes of someone whose mind is still then you can find peace within yourself also. Either look into the eyes of a man whose mind is still or look to his heart. Then your mind will be still. Whether you look into the eyes or into the heart, it is the same thing. You will find peace, you will be attracted by those eyes and you will forget to look anywhere else. Look into your eyes behind your eyes, not to any outside object, but into your eyes from behind. Then you will know the trick of how to keep quiet. I would like to eat the food from your plate and walk in your shoes and speak with your mouth. I am yours. I love you. Eating the food on my plate means eating the words that I speak about. You have to digest these words. If I tell you that you are free, you have to digest this food in your heart. Walking in my shoes means doing as I do, that is walking in the shoes. Speaking with my mouth is identifying as me. Then your mouth and tongue are mine and you can speak the words that I speak. These things you can do. Can you show me who am I? I am a tiger, can't you see? You are a sheep. Laughing there is a sheep in front of a hungry tiger. How long will it take for one of them to disappear? This sheep will be a tiger in one instant. This is what I am. There is no sheep. This bleeding will stop and there will be a roar that says I am a tiger. Any questions that come, come from a sheep and this question is bleeding. Let it face a tiger. That's all. It will be finished. Bleeding is mind. Tiger is your own heart. So push the sheep in front of the tiger, and it will be all over. It takes no time. Ramana Maharshi said initiation and upaitsa from a guru is necessary for freedom. This is absolutely essential because otherwise teachers will give you things to do. But a perfect guru who has attained freedom knows how to transmit this freedom. So, you are very lucky if you find a guru who will initiate you into no method, no practice, and who will only tell you that you are already free. I feel by coming here to see you I am betraying my master who has left his body. The master never dies. Do not stay in the graveyard. Papaiji, in a few weeks I have to go to the west. Is it okay? Yes, there is no east and west. This is only on the map. There is no east and west for the master. Wherever you go is the presence of the teacher and you will feel it. When you have surrendered, it is the responsibility of the teacher to guide you at every step. In the west old habits, take over again. 
Is this just a trick of the mind? How does presence of the master help in being free? Why do you think that you will be disturbed when you go to the West? When you came, that disturbance was there. But now, when you know the peace, you will take it with you as you. This peace nobody can disturb. Only you disturb the peace yourself by desiring this and that. So try this now, and your peace will not be disturbed, and you will always be in satsang. Only a few lucky people will have satsang in the span of many lives. You must have been aspiring for satsang for millions of years, and during this time you did your tapas and penance, and therefore now you will win peace. This is the right age. You are a young man in satsang. It is a rare phenomena. The Sufi saints call this a rare phenomena. Satsang and the desire for freedom together. You need to be free, but it will not work in Washington. You have to be in satsang. The Sufi saints say, women and wine both together at the same time. What a luck! You must have read this, and if you didn't, you can read Omar Khayyam, a great Sufi saint who wrote a wonderful book, the Rubaiyat. Pig of wine on one hand, a woman on the thighs, and kissing. These two things are very rare both ways. I have decided not to go to Arunachala on my way back home because it is here you are the embodiment of Arunachala. I have heard that one should stay with the one who kindles your flame. Some people hold the belief that you must go to a Himalayan cave to meditate, but these caves are for animals, not humans. You need not go to a cave because what you seek is available anywhere. Even in Hazrat Ganj in Manhattan or in the forest, what you search is within you, and so there is some sanity to just stay where you are. Is Ramana Maharshi still alive in the same sense as Jesus Christ? Ramana Maharshi is still alive. This is not a belief, but reality. Nothing is created, and nothing vanishes. All is always there, but only open eyes can see this. All the beings are still here. They cannot disappear. Where would they go? They are here to stay. All the beings of the whole cosmos exist in your heart, nowhere else. Everything exists and stays in the heart itself. Nothing is beyond your heart. Everything in the universe, from beginning to end, from mountains to meteors, are but a speck in your heart. You are also here. Everything always is. This is the end of knowledge. No creation, no preservation, and no destruction. It is as it is, and will continue to be as it is from even before the Creator, who was born out of the essence of this heart. This afternoon, I will take the train to Arunachala. I would like your blessing. Yes, yes. After being here, the only place to go is Arunachala. It means the mountain which does not move. You have to find the mountain which does not move. This is called Arunachala. This mountain which does not move is the light of the self. You will see it there. To commemorate once, twice, thrice, and then you will see the light. This Arunachala is calling you, and you will see that this Arunachala is calling you. This is the light of the self, and you must make a visit there. Arunachala is the best place to sit quiet. You are called there. You must go and fulfill your mission. Though many people find this light from you, you can attribute it to the teachers who tell them. But he only gives the information that you are already at peace. That teacher, which is attributed with giving peace, is not different from the teaching itself. The grace that radiates out of a saint makes such a difference to the people around him. I would expect that it makes a big difference on the saint as well. Then why is there sickness? Body itself is sickness. This radiation is not from the body to the body, but comes from somewhere else. It is not body to body relation. When sun falls on a mirror or on a lake, it reflects, but when it falls on a stone, it doesn't. So the body of one who lives in truth simply reflects the radiance like a ball bouncing off the wall. This light shines on a dark mind and sets it free, and then comes back because there is only one person who radiates, and there is only one person who was radiated upon. There are not two. This is the answer to your question, Papa G. I would like to spend more time with you today before I go. Time.
Even if you stay one trillion years, you will not make it. You have spent so much time already in so many lifetimes and still you have not seen the peace. I don't want a lot of time, I only want one second of your life. Just one second where you won't think or go anywhere is all I want. Now you have to assure me that this one second belongs to you. Make sure it doesn't belong to object senses mind or intellect and if it doesn't then what happens to this me? This is my question and you can answer in any way, silence, a laugh, a word. Don't step out of this one second. I love you and your teaching. I can read in between the lines and I know you are hurt by some disappointments you have with me and the teaching. In between what you speak is what is in your mind, so between the lines you should keep quiet. Then there will be no difference between your tongue and your thought. Many people say I love you but it is not true. Their mind is different than their tongue and so they are only deceiving themselves and the God within is not happy about it. So do what you have in your mind and speak what is true within and without. There should be no difference, then you will be happy and this is called wisdom and enlightenment. You must be the same at all times and speak the way that you feel. Apogee reads a long letter sent from America about a man's long struggle to be free and his attempt to change his environment to be more conducive to freedom. Commenting on this letter that I have just read, I see that there is an inspiration rising from within to be free, but that the circumstances have not allowed it. He has not gone near a real guru to stay and learn. All the rest he has done, but now he is just attached to the desert, the monks, and the nuns. You can live anywhere you like. Why make the difference between a mountain and a fish market? Why should there be a difference? Wherever there is a difference it is the mind which is cheating you. You can be quiet in the midst of Hazrat Ganj, and you may not be quiet in a Himalayan cave. Though forget about it. During your lifetime it is better to stay with the one who knows and who can deliver peace and love. This teacher is a raft who ferries you across the ocean of life. Otherwise, it is not so easy. Don't waste your time on meditation, whether in the mountains or in your home, but instead go to the teacher. He will take care of you as the raft does. Only the raft carries you, not your meditations or effort. This raft is the teacher, learn this and don't waste time. Search for the one who knows himself and who can tell you what is unknown to you. Now is the right time. Don't waste it. Here I don't teach any meditation or any other exercise. Just keep quiet for one instant and don't stir a thought in your mind. If you don't realize and one finger snap then come in front of me and tell me that this formula has not worked. Come face to face with me and tell me that you have not sat quiet and have not yet seen your own love, your own peace. That challenge is open to everyone, today, tomorrow or the next day. I've heard that it didn't take much time when you met Ramana. Is it true that a single glance from the Maharshi liberated you? What then is the nature of the transforming power of the Guru? The Maharshi was always sitting in his hall with open eyes and not looking at anybody. His eyes were empty. I would sit in front of him and think that he was only looking at me and nobody else. Also there was Chadwick, Devaraj and Rao, but he only looked at me. This glance is grace and it falls on the one who really wants the grace of the Guru. One glance is enough as is written in the Upanishads. One glance, one touch, one word from the Guru is enough. You need not do any chanting or meditations or exercises, but you have to be a holy person. Then only this glance will fall behind your eyes. Then the whole of your body will shine in silence and in love. That glance I cannot compare with the eyes of even the greatest saints and sages of the world. That is a glance from the self to the self. Therefore I believe that if the sage looks at you then the purpose of your visit to this world is fulfilled. Habir has said this, blessed is the life in which you are born in the human form, so make up your mind to realize the truth in this life before you pass away. Why this life? Why not today? Why today? Why not now? Otherwise you will repent when this bird flies away from the body. 
I so love living in Manali, but the mountains don't compare to being with you. The depth of inquiry and the power of devotion are both so much greater near you in your presence. Many scriptures say that God, Guru and Self are the same. Will you reveal the secret of this blessed trinity to me? I know that the Vedas say that God, Guru and Self are all the same, but I believe that the Guru is higher than God and Self because you can only know God and Self through the Guru. I will tell you a story about a man who was a hairdresser to a king. This man would go to the king to massage and shave him every morning at eight. One morning as he was leaving his guru came to his house. Though he bathed his guru and prepared breakfast and then lunch for him. He totally forgot to go to the king and only remembered when his guru was totally comfortable and taken care of. He said, Guruji, I must go to the king now and massage his legs because he has arthritis and without the two-hour massage he cannot go to his court. I am very late and so the king may not be happy with me. In fact I may not return because he may have me executed. Guru said, Go now but come back to serve my tea this evening. So he left for the palace. When he went through the palace gates, the senators were smiling big smiles at him, and when he appeared before the king the king prostrated before him. Please sir don't bow before me. This is more of a punishment. You can kill me, but I can't stand the disgrace of you bowing to me. The king said, Your massage was so good this morning that for the first time in decades, I am able to walk with no assistance. My legs are healed. I tried to give you my own diamond necklace as a reward, but you disappeared. My dear king, the hairdresser said as he saluted the king, I have served you for so many years, but now I cannot return. I will serve my guru now. Though he stayed with his teacher for the rest of his life. Though I place guru first, then self, and then God. As you learn here. Recently I dreamed that I jumped out of an airplane, but that I forgot to take a parachute. I know that this was related to the guru. What does it mean? It is what this story is about. It means that whenever some trouble arises, you should use a parachute. Avoid all danger and fear by keeping the parachute in your hand. This parachute is your faith in your teacher. He will save you so you need not fall. Have complete trust in the pilot who knows how to fly the plane. He said there is no teacher, no teaching and no student. Tomorrow I will go to France. Can I find liberation without a teacher, without coming back to Lucknow, by only following my inside voice? Is the grace of an enlightened one necessary? Without a teacher and his grace you can't be enlightened, you can't be free. Only one with very clear eyes standing at the perfect angle can show you the new moon. Those with jaundice in their eyes and standing in the wrong place looking at the wrong angle will not see it and will go for help. The one with clear eyes will tell you to align your sight with his finger and the head of the crow seated on the tree. Then, looking beyond the finger and the crow, the moon is sighted. But if you hold on to the finger or the head of the crow, can you see the moon? The indicators have nothing to do with the moon and so the one with clear eyes will tell you to reject them. Don't get attached to the teacher's form. If you do perhaps you won't be benefited. Most teachers keep their students holding the finger and they both are satisfied. As ego becomes inflated the finger is worshipped and the new moon is forgotten. Only the selfless one says to go beyond and declares himself a mere indicator, a humble messenger not to be held. Finding that selfless one, the one with clear eyes who helps all people is very difficult. You also said that if a devotee has an intense love for his guru that this love and the desire to see his guru will compel the guru to take another birth. Is it true? It is not possible. The guru is that which enlightens the devotee. A magic manger like so many famous saints are, are not gurus. The guru is one who shows light and gives peace to the devotees even without them asking for it. Others are commercial teachers interested in building ashrams and making money. It is better to be without desire. 
peace of the desireless man is not comparable to anyone in the world. Don't be attached to the Guru's form. What passes away is not eternal. Every form will pass away, and the essence is formless. If you are attached to the form, you are making a mistake. It is not the form which gives you light, but something else which is deep inside your own heart. That is your Guru. That Guru abides in the heart of all beings, not only just the human beings, but all the animals and plants. You will see this when you see your own essence within. Then every plant and animal will speak to you as they speak to me. If there is no teacher or student, then why are there so many people here benefited from you? Can you tell me about this grace? Could I benefit from it? When I say there is no teacher and no disciple, no giver and no receiver, I mean that there is no physical person. The teacher is not physical, neither the disciple is physical. The one who gives is not physical, and the one who receives is not physical. This is what I mean. It is not a person who gives. There is no permanency in any physical body. The body will appear and disappear. What teaching can it give you? What can the mind and senses teach? They themselves have no permanency and are ever-changing. The teaching can only be given by the Eternal and received by the Eternal. The Eternal has nothing to give to the Eternal, so there is no disciple and no teacher. You are already that, not physical, emotional or mental. Leave beside these forms and find out what is left and what it needs. Though many processes to find this out are given by the teachers, but none are worthwhile because whatever is gained afresh will be lost someday. All gains are temporary gains because everything comes and goes. To look at what you have not to gain, look at what is already there. Who can give you this that you already have? This is why I say, you don't need a teacher nor teaching. Some people don't believe it but it is a fact. You can't depend on anyone else or on your own self. Dependency is not peace and love. That which does not depend on anything is happiness. Find out what is peace and what doesn't need any help from the outside. This cannot be known by any practice in time. It is not in time so how can it be found there? Time itself is not happiness. Wherever there is time there is mind. There is no difference between mind and time and thought. So if you want to be in peace don't think of time. Don't think about anything because thought is always of the past. Peace does not belong to the past. Peace is instant presence. Thought is past, mind is past. When you don't make use of thought, mind, or past, that is the moment of your wisdom, light, and peace. It cannot be gained or attained. It is already here. You don't need any experience to have what is already here. You just need someone who can tell you that peace is already here, you can't get it from me. Only a rare one can have that understanding. Most people think that peace is enjoyment of senses. It is not. It is not from rubbing with the opposite sex. That is over in a second. Find out what the joy is which will not fade away. Most saints will tell you to do something, like in the West they say you must go to church, or you will go to hell. All over this fear is given. So much yoga and seva and meditation is scheduled in all the ashrams around the world, but here in luck now, I will not tell you to do anything. Doing has been enough for you. You have spent millions of years doing things, but you are not a worker anymore. If I tell you to do this, or that to attain freedom, it means that freedom is a mere result of doing something. Freedom is totally independent of any doing and of what you have done. Though so if anyone comes to me, I don't tell him to do anything. To stay here with me, your freedom is my job. You are not to do anything, simply stay quiet, giving no rise to even a thought. This much rest I give to you. You don't even have to think, though everybody else is thinking. I tell you that you have not to think. I will think for you. If you don't think for one second, you will see that you have fulfilled your purpose of coming to luck now. If you are not enlightened, then catch hold of my throat and tell me that I speak lies. 
But before that stay quiet for just one finger snap, one half second, one half of a half second. During this quarter second tell me that you are not realized. Why do so many of my desires come true in luck now? It has gotten to the point where I really have to watch what I hope for because it will come true. Desires of those who come into the presence of a jani are fulfilled because it is like throwing a rubber ball against a wall. It will come back. The saint does not fulfill the desire because he does nothing, he is still like a mountain. However, desires are fulfilled as they meet the silence. This silence gives peace to anyone who comes near to it and enlightenment to a rare ripe soul. A saint can give you anything you want, even if it is not in your destiny, for the tongue of the guru is not controlled by God or destiny. If you have the desire for enlightenment, it will be fulfilled in the silence of a saint, in the presence of a desireless man sitting quietly like a mountain. Sitting quietly in the guru's presence is quite enough. But most people who go to the Jani forget what they go to him for and continue their old ways. I have seen this around the Maharshi. People very close to him were not benefited because they were lost in their desires. You must win the heart of the Jani so that he gives everything without you even asking for it. I have only one desire left. I really want to be with my Guru. All other desires have dropped. I am surrendered to him completely. I just want to sit with him. Is this okay? No. I knew you were going to say this. Did your previous guru tell you no? No. I say no because I say don't stay with or depend on any person who has name and form. On this basis I say no. Stay with the guru who has no name or form, stay with it, which is formless. So if you still see my form don't stay with the form. Stay with my formlessness. The people who are staying here are staying with formlessness, not with form. For some it is taking time to reduce my form but they will wait. Some people have immediately seen my formlessness. Those who have not seen it are not ready to see it. When you are ready, grace will bring you here and if it doesn't work then it is a disgrace for you. If it does work and you know the formlessness then your work is over. Be here complete your desires, become desireless, and this desirelessness is called enlightenment. Where to find you? What a question. Where to find you? Nobody can see and so what you see is not the fact. Therefore search for me somewhere where the eyes do not see. Look nowhere and you shall find me. Do you understand? Look nowhere and thou hast found formlessness. There is a Tibetan proverb which says that a guru is like fire. Get close and you burn, but if you don't stay close enough you won't feel the beat. This is very true. When you go near the guru it burns your ego. But even if you are far away you will be burnt. You try it. Go to the back of the hall and you will find the heat there also. Sit here and feel the heat. How do I keep to my true nature where bliss is as natural as breath? When the veil which does not exist is lifted, then you will have bliss and love. The veil never is, it is only your desire which hides your true nature. You want to live with someone, but then they grow old and so you want to live with a young person. This is the workings of the demons of desire. You can't get peace from any person, not even God can give you peace. If you have a mountain of merit perhaps you can contact a teacher. Maybe this teacher is the real Satguru. Then by grace of the Satguru you will have peace. But most teachers are not the Satguru. You must have discrimination to know who the Satguru is and to know he can give you freedom. But this discrimination is very rare. You may live with a teacher and not know who he is because you are lost with his habits. Even his way of speaking and walking can blind you to the truth. I am so attached to your beautiful form. I want to drown in that so please take my hand as it happens so we will go together. Drowning is going by yourself into the ocean or river, but what does it mean to say take my hand I want to drown? I don't understand. You can't drown like this because you have the protection of someone who will not let you drown. He will bring you across the ocean of samsara where everybody drowns because they have no protection. 
A few here and there seek the protection of a teacher. Hebir says, Men are being washed away in this ocean of samsara, all are going to the hell. I try to bring someone to the shore and out of the current, but many deny the protection. Now I don't know how the noble and wise Kabir can say what he says next. If the person does not accept this protection then kick at his ass and throw him in the middle of the river where the current is the fastest. Giggling he must have been in a lot of trouble to utter this because otherwise he was a very peaceful man. What I do is not to kick his ass, but go myself and get washed away a little bit with that person who's getting washed away. You must have seen it. They say my father was washed away by my mother, and so they are from birth. Though so I go and kiss the man, not kick him. Then, I suggest to them that we get out of the current since we are being washed away, and I tell them that I know a good place to get out. Then I bring that man to the shore, out of the ocean where one is safe. So even if you are washed away you are pulled out, not by the force, but by love. Once in Aedia on the banks of the river, I met a very troubled man. For decades he did so much sadhana for the sole purpose of having darshan of Lord Ram, and he had vowed years before that if Ram did not appear to him by this day, he would walk into the saryu and drown. I tried to talk him out of it, but he wouldn't listen, and slowly he walked into the current until he started to be swept away. I went in after him and brought him back to shore where he pranamed to me, thanking me over and over for fulfilling his desire. He insisted on following and serving me, but I didn't allow him. I gave him a little advice, got on my motorcycle and rode back to Lucknow. We are all so happy just to be in your physical presence. You don't even have to say anything and people get it. Where the teaching is there is attraction. Though people go to that man in whom the teaching is. That attracts people, not the form. Form of the man who has wisdom attracts because that has compassion in it. It wants to give what it has and so people come and are benefited. What does the poor man have to give to others? But the king will give you a fistful of pearls and gems. What is your spiritual will? What ambitions would you like to see completed when you are no more? That day will never come when I am no more. You may turn like a spinning wheel for thirty-five million years, coming and going, and you will see that I am here at this place where I forever have been and that is my abode. I will never go anywhere, nor will I return anywhere. I have no will at all. If I am here or not here it doesn't make any difference. I will not impose anything on anybody and therefore I have no personal will or ambition at all and have nothing to be fulfilled. I do not need the help of any other person to speak on my behalf those things which I couldn't say in my lifetime. I have stayed with many masters during the last seven years in India. Is it right that I have left them or should I go back? Stay with someone who gives you peace of mind. Don't judge him by his ashram or by his beard, but whether or not you are getting peace. If you are there stay with him and remove your doubts and hindrances. Aim for peace and not necessarily the most comfortable circumstances. Though many kings are miserable and so many of the saints have been simple people in simple circumstances, like Rikina, the cartsman who was the guru of the king. With this simple cartsman the king found something he could not get in his palace and then ruled the kingdom while staying quiet. So stay with the one who gives you peace and see what is happening in your mind. It doesn't matter if the king is in Manhattan or the Himalayas, don't worry. Stay in the peace and learn and then you can go anywhere you like. All of my life I have been terribly afraid of dying, but now that fear has disappeared. I can't find it anywhere. The mind that feared death has itself died. Few people know how to avoid the fear of death. If the person is very pure-minded and obedient to the teacher, the teacher will remove this fear by look, or by thought if the person is not present, or by touch. Also by kick sometimes. This happens when the student is not getting it, but the teacher is bent on giving it. It may seem to be a cruel way, but the teacher is looking out for your benefit and not necessarily what you want. He wants to give you that precious diamond for which you will forever be grateful for. How can I get over the fear of taking what I really want of taking freedom? 
If you are afraid and don't extend your hands to take it, I will take your hands and force a diamond into it. Your part is to come here and my job is to thrust the food into your mouth even if you don't want it. I've just arrived here from Ramanashram. Sri Ramana has long been for me the perfect example of the one true self and the embodiment of my heart. His grace has shown me that I am not different than the very perfection of being. I walked through the ashram as if I was looking through his eyes. This is how to look. You are so blessed to have him as your master, and I hope you will share with me something from your association with him. What you speak of, the ego does not touch. The one who surrenders to the master gets this kind of experience. Then he sees that he is not the doer. He doesn't do anything but gets commands from within and the work is carried out. One is not even to think. The self will think on your behalf. I have spent time with lamas who say the path is difficult. But the time has come to be silent and free of the transient suffering and practices. I am through with searching and having suffering as a teacher. Now I just want to sit at the master's feet. The credit for this first goes to your mother. To get love in these days is very rare, but she built from love a good spine in your body to face the sufferings with. Now due to your mother's love you are here in satsang. You'll be grateful to your mother. Regarding the teaching, when you are near to a teacher, your responsibility is over, just as your responsibility and effort to cross the river is over once you are in the ferry. What effort do you make in the ferry? Do you run from one end to the other? Whether you run or sit quiet, it is the ferry that will bring you to the other shore, not you. Perhaps though, if you do make effort, the boat will tilt to one side and you the other passengers and even the boatsmen will be in trouble. Though keep quiet here. Here we neither chant nor meditate. This is something easy, this is satsang. For your part only have full faith in the teacher, and the teacher will hand over what you really want, and what is really good for you. You are such a mystery to everybody. Is this okay? If I say it is okay, it is not a mystery. Mystery is mystery and so it cannot be ocked or rejected. Last night in a dream I was surrounded by Ninkarali Baba Osho, Ramana, and yourself on all four sides. Can you tell me about the value of so many spiritual teachers? I feel so lucky to be so connected. These four teachers are like four walls of a room. If you are attached to any one of these teachers, your face is toward that wall. Remove the walls, they only come and go. What is before the wall is and after the wall is gone. Tell me. Silence. To get to the silence will you lick the wall? No. Though there is no use licking the wall. Silence will stay. It was here it is here it will be here. That silence doesn't depend on any walls which are temporary. It is only a concept of your mind that you will be happy by licking a wall. Don't lick anything. The only thing that can give you peace is nothingness. They attach to what you can't see, touch, taste, or hear. That is all. This is the truth. I love you through all that is seen and unseen because you are my very heart. It is so precious and unspeakably pure. Though I am what is nameless, I would love to be named by you before leaving for Arunachala. There is no place on the face of the earth which will give you peace of mind like Arunachala will. This is the Guru of my Guru. Aruna means light, the Sakguru Achala means that which does not move. Arunachala means the immovable light. To celebrate this there is the festival of Deepam, where they burn a very big light fueled by 1,000 kilos of butter oil. This may still be burning by the time you get there. So I give you the name Aruna. You are the light. I give names according to the face, because it is the index of mind. You can't hide the mind because it is on the face therefore, you get the name of your heart. When you walk on such holy land as Arunachala where the saint has lived, you will have the same feeling as when he was there. There will not be any difference. Always remember this. You can keep the dust of this place with you. It is just as holy. 
keep it in your room and you will not have to chant any mantra or even meditate. You sometimes say that you must forget and reject everything including your family and even God. Yes that is the highest truth, but you are misunderstanding what is meant by rejecting. Reality is one, there are not two realities. Either you are real or the other is. But other is based on you and so you are the only reality. This is why you must reject even God, meaning, reject your separateness from God. Rejecting other means to reject that you are separate from other. The highest experience is when everything disappears, even God. Until this happens you will continue to be reborn. Though forget everything, even forgetting, because forgetting and remembering belong to the mind. Without mind you can't see your God or Guru or country or parents. Just don't give rise to identifying as a body or mind or personality and there will be no forgetting or remembering. First forget yourself which means stop identifying as the body. You are the essence which does not disappear. Find it. I can forget God and my country and the family, but I can't forget the Guru. Did I really forget the Guru? There is no shooting. I am not saying that you should do anything. All automatically goes. Just know who you are and you will know who the Guru is. Perhaps he's the same, disciple and Guru. Don't give rise to any concept of separate personalities and tell me what is here. That which remains you cannot speak of. Even bliss is not an adequate description. One who has tasted it cannot speak, and one who speaks has not tasted it. It is being, and it is independent of the taster. You will have this consciousness of real being. Though don't have any desire or any relation for some time, and it will reveal itself by itself to itself. But to whom? Love, truth, freedom exalts a holy person. So you must be holy first, and you will get everything without asking. Where will you go after you leave your body? Will you ever come back to planet Earth? If I come back, I must go, and if I go, I must come back. Therefore, the truth is neither I come nor I go. This is the truth. Who goes? You speak of the body, not of your own self. The self doesn't come and doesn't go. Why should it go anywhere? What will he do going from here to somewhere else? He's not a businessman. Everything is included in the self. Why should you go? The king does not desire, I want to buy the house or apartment or place because the whole kingdom belongs to him. The king has no desire to acquire property because it all belongs to him. Therefore, when you become a king, you will have no desire to go anywhere and with just a clap of your hands all is fulfilled. What is the essence of your teaching? I teach about that which cannot be attained by any teaching. My teaching cannot be taught. I have no teaching for the essence from where all teachings arise from. This essence doesn't need any teaching or non-teaching for it is beyond everything. It is from where all words rise from. From the very source of being. From where everything comes from, even the words. Master, I want to know the Satguru, I want to be free. Satguru is within. The Maharshi says the same thing, the Satguru is within your own heart. You need this, and if you are honest, certain, sincere and one-pointed, you will understand that you are that itself. You are here itself. You don't need any effort, just convince yourself that you are here. Reject all your desires and don't make effort and you will be alone. Then something will shine and envelop you completely. Chapter Grace The grace of self gives rise to the desire for freedom. The grace of God brings you to the Guru. The grace of the Guru removes all doubts and leaves only freedom. I want to be free is the first grace. It is freedom itself calling you. This desire will take you to where it rises from, self. All other desires will burn in this fire. The grace of all the masters and the self has brought you to freedom. Don't have any doubt about this or about freedom. Grace is the relationship between the teacher and his worthy disciple and is available nowhere else. This grace has no equal in the world. 
As the story of Kalyan, the humble sweeper shows, grace comes only to a worthy disciple, one who is pure in heart and who serves his teacher because truth exalts a holy person. If you are holy the teacher accepts you and bestows his grace upon you. It is not you who makes this choice for freedom. It is grace taking you where you must go for freedom, the Sakuru. It is grace giving you what you need like inquiry and devotion and which removes what you don't need, thought and desire. Without grace you can't cross the ocean of Samsara. Without grace there is no enlightenment. This peace and love cannot be had by penance, austerities or meditation. But if the teacher is happy he compassionately gives you the prasad of grace and ends your journey in rest. It is a gift, it cannot be demanded or commanded. Gods can fulfill your desires and give you heavens, but they can't give you grace. So be careful and know what is grace and what is disgrace. Even if the king gives away his kingdom to his wife it is not grace, but due to some interest it is disgrace. In this way, everything you get from the world is disgrace. Questioner, I want to feel the grace of self every minute of my life. Answer from Papaji. You can keep this desire while you are doing yoga or whatever you are doing. It will not disturb your career. What you learn here will go with you and reside within you wherever you go. It will not matter if you are in Lucknow or in a cave in the Himalayas or in a San Francisco supermarket. When you find that there is no distinction then you have crossed the ocean of illusion. Start from here. Go to wherever you want, stay wherever you like. I feel so much love for you, and I know this love is love for my own self. I thank you for the grace and wisdom that shines through you. You are beautiful and I love you. This is all I can say, if somebody loves me then they come and sit in my heart. One who loves me sits in my heart and is so close to me. They have nothing else to do other than this. This love is fearless and cannot die. I have a lot of trust that your grace is doing everything that needs to happen and I am feeling such a deepening due to this grace. Is this grace stronger or more accessible the closer I am to you physically? Regarding grace, it doesn't make any difference whether you are physically close to the teacher or not. But if the physical presence of the teacher is available, that should be given preference. In this half of the century most sages and saints are no longer here in their bodies and so, if the presence is available, make the best use of it. Doubts which come up in the mind while in the presence of the teacher can be given to the teacher, answered and cleared. Later, if the presence is not available, it is difficult to believe the truth because the teacher is not present so these doubts tend not to be cleared as quickly. So make the best use of the teacher's physical presence. For grace it doesn't matter if there is a teacher or not. For instance, so many people have been benefited by Buddha though they have never met him. Although like Kashyap and Ananda, they would have enjoyed the benefit of his presence if they would have been there. On Buddha Paranirvana Day, as the death of his body was very near, some man came to see him, but he was told that the master would be dying in a moment. But the Buddha saw him and cleared all his doubts in an instant. Then Buddha lost his breath forever. The presence of the Buddha enlightened over five hundred people. With his very first sermon people were enlightened, and to this day millions are benefited. If you have occasion to be with the teacher, don't miss it. I know that time and space are illusion and I know that grace is real, so it makes sense to me that grace transcends time and space. This is correct. There is no time or space. It is just a concept of mind which vanishes when it is transcended. At that time you must be sure that you have achieved everything, and there is nothing more to do. This is the only thing worth achieving in this human incarnation. But I do feel strong changes when I am near you and this is why I am asking these questions on the nature of grace. The nature of grace is to enlighten and to stop the cycle of birth and death. You must be in total trust of this. Know that you are not to be reborn and even more know that this present birth is an illusion. 
then you can be sure that all the world with its suns, moons and stars are illusions which are real only when we think and when we think they are real. When you don't think nothing is visible. I am happy that you are here and happy to answer your questions. What is the role of grace in the process of surrender? Only with grace can you surrender to the Satguru to your own self. You can't do it with your efforts. You must therefore please your teacher so that he is happy and bestows grace upon you. With this grace you will surrender everything to the teacher. Only this is called surrender. Using your own effort and your own mind is not surrender. Something will guide you from the inside and you will become a tool in the hands of the divine. Let him work, let thy will be done. Everybody wants my will be done. They want this and that but this will only last ninety years or so. This is the end of teaching. Grace comes when you surrender, this is grace. There is no other way. Do I deserve to be so peaceful and happy the way I am now? Though few people ask this after getting the maximum. This is perhaps the Indian way. People of the West are so arrogant that they never use this phrase, do I deserve it? Though many Western people say instead, I already knew it or I know what your answers to my questions will be. I hear this every day, this is called pride. But there are some who after hearing the words of the Guru bow to his feet. This is like Hanuman who claimed he never deserved Ram's grace. Hanuman had crossed the ocean to burn the Lanka of the demon Ravana in order to bring peace back, to bring Sita back, restoring her to her husband. Then Ram told him, Well done Hanuman, you are so great, who else could have crossed the ocean and done the job? What a brave person you are. Hanuman folded his hands as he heard this, prostrated to Rama, and went around him three times. Then he said only one word, Kura Kripa, meaning thy grace. Who am I? I am just a monkey, how could I cross the ocean to fight this demon? It is only by your grace that I was able to do it, and to tell your Sita that you would soon be coming to bring her back to Ayodhya. What is the difference between grace and Skaktipat? Jaktipat is the transmission of whatever power a person has to you. You are not to practice anything because they transmit the power to you. I have had Shaktipat from a guru and it made me feel very quiet and stoned as if I just smoked three chillums. So why go to a guru when you can have some hash for one rupee behind the Gandhi ashram in Hazrat Ganj? This high will stay for three hours and then you can have more. In this same way Shaktipat of power, without knowledge of the truth, will turn the guru-disciple relationship into dealer-addict dependence. Don't cultivate a habit which is dependent on anything. You have nothing to do and you will not get anything. Here, there is no transmission or Shaktipat, but all that happens is within you. Nobody can give you peace of mind, it is within. The nearness will give you the peace which belongs to you. I don't transmit anything, I don't give shack to Pat. All that I do is remove your dependence on anything else. If you don't depend on anything else tell me what will happen, you won't lose anything. Just remove your dependence on God and on methods and everyone else, and it will shine and reveal itself. That you can't lose. This is the clarity given here. Remove the confusion and concepts from your mind that you will win peace from anyone else. You will definitely lose anything that you are given so have no dependence. When you do not depend on anything it will reveal itself without any method. Don't depend on gurus. What is the grace of the guru? It is the grace which has drawn you here. God within will take you some place to fulfill your desire. This is grace. Since you want freedom grace has brought you here. What keeps one from having grace? Some people's hearts and lives are so full of grace and some seem less fortunate. What prevents someone from being grace is the same thing that prevents success to everybody who walks on the path of freedom. They are looking somewhere else and not surrendering their search to peace. Even though they are in sats and they still look somewhere else and not within. You are where your mind is. 
It is like the student in the classroom who is really out in the field in that coming night sports match. You are where your mind is. Though if you keep your mind surrendered to yourself in the satsang where you are, it doesn't take time. I came here because I knew I needed to finally bear the truth. I had met one of your messengers who told me about you. When the time is right you will meet someone who will take you to the teacher. It is good luck that you didn't sell your soul to someone. Though many teachers are not even able to even find their own self. These people deviate from the truth themselves. The Divine has gifted you with the discrimination to see if someone is a good person or not. The Sanskrit name for this grace is Karuna. This will be your name. Thank you for your grace. Wednesday I will be leaving for the States to attend to my business rather than spending most of my time in luck now and who has decided that it is better for you to go to the States and who was it that brought you here to Satsang? Even then you had to tend to business, but who was it that brought you here? What is the difference between the who that brought you here and the who that wants to go back and attend to your business? I don't think that there is any difference. Angrily no. There is much difference. The difference is that you were busy with your business and somehow due to someone's grace, and your own merits which you have won in the previous lives or even in this life, this who has decided to take you away from all of your activities and to bring you here. Now you have to decide if the who that is calling you back is the same who or if it is the ego. When you say that I have to attend to my children, then it is the egoistic who, not the one who decides for everyone what they have to do. How do you know whether you're going is better or that staying in luck now is better? Who do you think is really taking care of your business? Who gives you the strength and intelligence to do your activities? Most of the people say, I will go now and their body leaves, but who is it that operates the body to take this body from luck now to the states? Is it the body that is attending to it or the mind? What activates the mind, body and the senses? Who is that one? We do not know and so we have to surrender to the supreme power. We have to go, we have to go, if we have to stay, we have to stay. There should be no difference, but you cannot decide. Most of the time when people have decided they could not fulfill this decision. A couple of years ago, I had a friend in Delhi who planned to visit me in horrid war with his brother, who had a garment factory in England. At the last minute this brother said that he was too busy for the quick trip up to hard war and wanted to go attend to his business in London instead. He did promise that the next time that he came to India that he would surely come to see the master in hard war. Four days later I was in hard war when I received a telegram from my friend in Delhi. He said to meet him at Kusha Ghat where the after death rites are performed and the ashes given to the Ganga. He met me there and showed me a little bag and said, This is my brother who said that next time to India he would go to hard war. These are the ashes. Please bless his soul, and we will give him to the Ganga. He had died in London of a heart attack. Though nobody knows. You have no time now because you don't know what will happen the next minute. It is better to surrender to the supreme force inside that makes the decision. Let it make the decision. But when you say I have to go, this I, is different than the one who is always there and functions in all of your activities. When you surrender to the supreme power, it will look after you very nicely and no mistake will be made. Even your business will not be affected. You can say, it is that doing the business or it igmi doing the business. So that and me has to be decided. You can look after your children who says not. Some people are here who say that they are leaving, but just return back from the airport. They do this two or three times and it means that the one who has brought them here decided to keep them here, and so they cannot go. In the last few days I have felt that it is my fear of changing and my need to be a doer which makes me want to go to the States. It is so. It is so. It is your fear. But I do feel very connected with you regardless of where I am. Though there is a double crossing in the statement also. It is a double crossing because you think it is correct, but it is not. It is a very high state to be with me regardless of whether or not you are in my physical presence. 
In this state, you will never use but. Is there any special advice that you have for me? You must surrender to the supreme power who is working in all the activities you are doing. When you are not doing any activity, it is that that is keeping quiet. Then there will be no mistake at all whether you are here or not here. Thank you. How do we know when Atman is revealed and how to have the Atman revealed? It is not your choice, as it is described in the Upanishads. I reveal myself to those that I choose. It is not your choice, but the choice of the Atman. Then it reveals itself to itself. I want you to choose me like that. You have been. If your neighbor calls you, you may not come. So how is it that people from all over the world come when I call? They don't even know until they get here that I have called them. No one knows this. Everyone is inside me. The one who calls and the one called are the same thing. This must be known when the one is chosen. Everybody is suffering and dying, but if you believe in the protector, the suffering will be destroyed. If you are equal to that you will be exalted by the divine. So sit quiet here, you can't find this teaching anywhere. It is not a mantra or a practice. To sit quiet, don't stir thought and don't make effort. There is no method to freedom. There is no technique and no method, simply keep quiet. Methods belong to the past. Any method that you bring to mind is something that you only heard of, so forget every method. With your grace I know that a leaf from the Bodhi tree has fallen on my head. I am so grateful for what you have given me. This is the grace of the Bodhi tree. This leaf fell on the head of the Buddha, and he was enlightened. Today, 2006, hundred years later, people still go there. Those who are true and seek only wisdom will be enlightened. Will the grace follow me back to the West? As grace is here, so will it be there. If you love her, she will not leave you. He is the most precious person in the whole world, because nothing gives happiness except her. Chapter, Satsang, Association with the Truth Satsang is the association with Sat with Truth. Keeping association only with that which will not destroy love is Satsang. Being Truth, being with the wise is Satsang. It has is no past, no future, no this, no that, just your own nature, a field of beauty. The one who comes to Satsang is happy, even gods will take a human form in order to attend. The presence of the Guru is Satsang. The Guru's part in Satsang is to show you that there are no parts. When you do not inquire you are in parts and you become that which can be destroyed. Satsang in the human body is so precious and rare, don't waste it by asking, what is this and that. Just humbly ask, who am I? Don't let your mind be distracted in satsang. If you tie ropes to the past via memory and concepts you are not in satsang. Time is a concept and satsang is out of time. They where there are no ropes, no concepts and no distractions or explanations, this is reality. Satsang is a tongueless teacher and headless students. So shut your head, let your heart open, and truth will reveal itself to you in silence. Only pay attention to that with your open heart. A strong desire for freedom rises only in an open heart. This desire is the fertility of the land to take the seed of the Satyrus teaching. Thatsing is raindrops on this opening heart. Only people near freedom need instruction, not those in the dark and not those in the light. Only Satsang will take you out of suffering because it shows you the silence that you have always been. Satsang is abiding as yourself, not as I am so and so. Asking how you are bound is Satsang. Satsang strikes at the root of bondage and arrogance, and is the death of mind which few can face. Peace is not living in memory or mind, it is only here here. It is your nature and Satsang reminds you of it. If you are on fire with anger, grief, and confusion run straight to the river of satsang. There are three ways, jhana bhakti and yoga. In satsang we speak of only of jhana, or vikshar knowledge of who you are. Yoga is not spoken of here and bhakti, the love of the divine, cannot be spoken of at all. 
In satsang you have to remove your doubts because it is only doubts that keep you from being free. This serpent of doubt living in the heart is killed in satsang. Satsang is giving up beliefs, notions, intentions, desires and illusions. This is the secret of freedom. The notion of creation rises out of pure Russia and the creator is created along with all its concepts. Our attachments to these concepts become our reality and only in satsang is this removed. To get rid of this suffering attend satsang at any cost. Not activating the mind means attending the satsang. Satsang means a place of seclusion of quietness. It is a place within your heart. Come to this satsang naked. Questioner, I only have a few days to spend here. How can I best spend my time here in luck now with you? Already your presence has touched me deeply, and I no longer desire the objects and experiences of the world. Answer from Papaji. It is enough to cease your desire for the objects of the world. Through any of the senses you can get lost in the world. Fish die due to their sense of taste. Deer die due to their desire to hear certain sounds. Elephants are caught and killed by the sense of touch. They put an effigy of a female elephant on some bamboo which covers a pit. Then the male elephant comes to touch the image, falls in the pit and is trapped. A moth dies due to sight as it goes toward the flame. The difficulties of being drawn by the senses can be overcome because the human being has discrimination and can foresee the results of his actions. Then they can choose to go towards peace instead of suffering. For thousands of years the way that people have gone towards peace is to go to the Guru for one instant of satsang, ask their question, and have all their doubts dissolved. Then only Moksham remained. Is it okay not to have any question? If I don't ask am I missing anything? No, it's not okay. You must have a question. Otherwise you are missing freedom. If you don't ask you are missing freedom because any pig dog or donkey does not have any question and therefore they miss everything. Every human being must have a question to be happy. What is that question? Who am I? If you do not ask this question you belong to the community that I have already named. This question is the last question and only a rare man will ask this question. All the rest will not ask him. Ask the question and find out the answer by yourself. The other night I was dreaming that I was in satsang and I did ask this question. That is wonderful. Though many people are having satsang in the waking state and in the dream state. Next will be satsang in the sleep state and that will be eternal satsang. Dreaming satsang is good because your dreams are just the thoughts you had in waking state that get carried over. This shows that your waking state has been very well spent. I dreamed I came to satsang naked. Satsang is the garden of Eden where you must be naked. You must even be free of nudity. Remove even nudity which means remove the ego. No dress and no nudity will really be a good satsang. Then you will see what I speak about. I felt your faceless kiss. Now what was once a fear of the unknown is an invitation to freedom. Excellent. This is the result of attending satsang. A very wonderful experience. This teaching is not available in any of the books. You must be faceless when you are in satsang, then the teacher who has no head on his shoulders is going to teach you because you have no face. The teachers who have a head are better not to see, head means ego. Satsang happens when neither the teacher nor the student have any ego. I think I will cancel my plans to leave because I just want to stay here. Let the cancellation stand and don't think about anything, just stay here. You need not go away because here you will get everything. Wherever you go it will be here that you will get what you need. So don't think about this. Be here. Understand you have to be here alone. This is a mystery working. I am carrying a child within me. Do you have any advice? Could I abide in silence? Don't be silent speak to your child. Start satsang with your unborn child so that when he is born he is familiar with it. Speak to your unborn baby. You have given me the greatest treasure. 
I so appreciate it. So many people are doing such hard work, but they do not know the treasure that lies below all this work. What they need is a reliable person whose word they can trust, to tell them that just below their work is gold. That is what I tell you and those who believe it remove the practices, all the hard work and immediately they become rich beyond what I can estimate. Riches of gold are lost every day. India even lost the Kohinoor diamond to the British. Even Krishna and the Pandavas had this diamond and now this priceless treasure is lost. You can lose any object gain but you can never lose that. That night I also dreamed that I lost my house to a fire, but when I called the fire marshal to put it out, I found that you were the fire marshal. By just looking at the burning house, you made everything burn more. I will tell you the meaning of this dream with a story. There was a sadhu living in a thatched hut who was cooking some rice on a fire. He left for a while, and upon returning he saw many people throwing water on his hut and dragging his few possessions out of the fire, which was engulfing his little house. He took his possessions and threw them back into the fire. Soon it started raining, and the rain was putting the fire out. So he started putting buckets of water from a nearby river onto the hut. Some of the neighbors asked why he first fed the fire with his possessions and now was putting the fire out. He said, once in a lifetime a fire comes to burn your house down. I was very happy with this and gave everything to this fire so as not to annoy her. Now it is raining and so I am bringing water to be friendly with the rain. Put everything into it and let the fire burn including your attachments to the past. Even let your present and future attachments burn. When everything has burned the rain of grace will fall on you. Don't save anything and the grace will come and help you and look after you now and in the future. You need to think nothing and do nothing. Simply stay quiet and see how it works. Burn the bushes of attachment and you will see the grace. So this is the fun. Very few people will understand this secret. Keep the flames burning as hot as possible and when the water comes, let it come. The desire for freedom are these flames and grace is the rain from self. I feel a drift on the ocean of ignorance. Can you guide me to the shore? I desire to be free. This is the only desire I have brought here. Everybody is ignorant but nobody knows it. Everybody is proud of what they have done. This is called world. But when you have come to know that you are ignorant, you have come to me. It is enough. This satsang is a raft across this ocean. You need to do nothing, don't even speak about this ocean at all because it has crocodiles which will swallow you up. Countless people have been swallowed and are being swallowed every day, but nobody knows that there is a raft. Just get into the raft and keep quiet. The pilot is there, and you are his responsibility. You will be safely landed onto the shore. Actually, this ocean of Samsara does not exist. It is only your desires, and when they subside there is nothing which has ever existed. If you know this ocean is dreadful and filled with alligators and sharks this is enough. These alligators are your desires for objects for persons for some enjoyment. Once you forget them you are very safe. This is good advice to a young boy like you. I am glad you are here. It is a right age to come here. Even Socrates said that to know God you must be on the right side of the forties. Ramakrishna writes the same thing. He prescribes coming to the teacher while in youth due to a very interesting observation which I've seen for myself on Marina Beach in Madras. I used to spend all of Saturday and that night at the ocean meditating on the beach. In the morning I would watch the fishermen put the net into the ocean from two boats and after making a circle, close back up. As you watch this you see four types of fish which to Ramakrishna symbolized four types of men. Some fish see the net immediately and decide not to touch it, and they escape. This is fisherman number one. They do not even enter the net. Sukadev is an example of this. Number two fish see no difference between one side of the net and the other and do not mind either way. 
Ramatirtha is an example of this. He enjoyed the world and was a householder and a professor of mathematics in Lahore, but at the age of 32 he left everything and went to the Himalayas and never returned to his town. This number two fish also escaped the net. These are those who escape at a very young age. Type number three jump out of the net at age 50 or 60 after the net has been closed. But what I saw is that as they jump out many were caught in the air by the seagulls and cormorants. Few did land safely back in the ocean. Now the fourth ones hold the net tight in their mouths for their own safety. Those were the fish that the fishermen brought to shore. They didn't even try to jump but just held on to the net. These fish go on the table every evening. I saw the fisherman load all these fish into the baskets with the help of his wife. They were very happy and grateful and out of gratitude put some of the fish back into the ocean which so generously provided their livelihood. Though by a special grace these fish also made it out of the net. The second time he went to put fish in the ocean his wife held his hand and said enough. Though some people escaped this net in childhood, some in youth and some in old age like me. Not holding the net, I could do it. Though all the people with gray hair don't worry. Be sure that you will be offered back to the ocean. Fisherman is very generous you see. Why are these books and photos and things for sale here? Seems to detract from the purity of satsang. If you go to Hazrat Ganj you will go to the shop which has what you want. If you want shoes you will go to the shoe shop and not to the tailor. Though in satsang if you divide your attention here and there it means that you have not come for satsang. You are just walking in to judge other. If you have come for freedom you don't see anything or anyone else. It is like the man who gets a phone call in his office which says that there is a fire in his house. Immediately he goes. On the way he meets a friend who asks him out to lunch but he will not go because his house is on fire. Instead he will go straight home to find out what can be done. The when your house and on fire with, I want to be free, you will not accept an invitation of any judgment or relationship. You will straight away go to your home and look after it. But if you have no fire you can stay on after office hours and then go wherever you like. This must be like a house on fire. A normal house doesn't really matter because you can always get a new house. But if this house is on fire you must finish it as soon as possible because you don't know when your next incarnation will be. I want to be free is this house on fire. I do want to be free but soon I am going home and I am worried I will go none the wiser. You must find out what does not die and what is not born and this you will find in satsang. This is hiding in the cavity in your heart where death does not touch. It is the source of the power by which you touch, see, smell, hear and taste. The teacher will tell you that it is within your heart, so look within and you will see it and you will become it. Then you will no longer come to this land of suffering. I want to see it and be one with everything, but the habit of separation and judging is very hard to break. In satsang it will happen by itself. There is no other way besides satsang. Only desire to be free is needed. The main impediment for you is that you focus on other things. You must focus on what you want. I have no question in particular, but I also feel that I have not arrived home yet. When you have not arrived home how can you say that you have no question? You are in the fish market and you are lost. You have to take a guide and ask them where your home is. Everybody is lost but they are happy in the fish market. There they stay and there they will die. It is better to ask. If you don't like this ugly marketplace question someone who knows and who will take you out of this market. If you know that you are here then you can go anywhere even to the fish market and yet you are home. I want to have a better connection with you though mine says it is enough to sit in satsang. How can I feel your presence more? Sitting is not so easy, but you tell the mind to let you sit quietly here. It may not want to be quiet, but you must win this battle. Sit and watch what the mind is doing, watch its tendencies, watch where it rises from and where it goes. 
then you will see that the mind will not allow you to sit quietly because it is attached to the past affairs, past persons, past objects and past thoughts. These attachments prevent you from sitting quietly. But if you can sit for one moment, it is most precious. I advise you, when the mind goes out like a monkey bring it back again. Again, it will go and again bring it back. Again, it will go and again bring it back. Play the game and eventually the mind will stop going. You didn't do this in California because if you would have, there would be no reason to come here. Get quiet and see that your mind doesn't run out and if she does bring her back. Take away mind's attachment to the past and mind is no mind because mind is the attachment itself. So remove the attachments and you will see the light of peace and love. Do this and if you have any difficulty please tell me what you have done and what the results were. Did you follow what you have to do? Simply look at the mind like you look at a pair of glasses. When the mind is looking within there is no object to be seen and it will stay with itself. Since you are here take the opportunity to change your old habits which lead to suffering. Then when you return your friends won't recognize you. I want to see you alone before I leave for Nepal. You are invited to see me alone. You come alone to me, don't bring anyone with you not your clothes, not your body, not your mind. Then you can see me alone. Always you can come to me like this. I have been in satsang for a month and though all my questions are answered, I still feel that I am in the dark and that I can't keep quiet. I feel I will never keep quiet. You could have said, I will never keep quiet in your country. This is just conditioning from your country. Forget the past and stay in satsang and don't look for anything. It will just come by itself because your desire is tremendous. The merit that brought you here will work, so just sit quiet and don't do anything. I can sit quietly, but I feel like I have come here burdened, and that I still have some burden on me. You have to get rid of the burden on your head. Suppose you have pounds on your head, and you go to a teacher who says to get your mind clean of all concepts. This only adds to the weight. The next teacher tells you to do something else, and it is another burden. Here I don't tell you to do things, no practice, no meditation, but simply I shake your head and there goes the burden. To say I am free is to shake your head free of arguments and other things. Then you will go light-headed and light-minded. We are so lucky to be in satsang where understanding just happens by itself in the heart and not in the mind. Is there anything more required than trust and openness and to be here to realize the truth? That is enough. You don't need anything else. You are making this Shava Shada, you are purifying me and removing my burdens. What is this process? How do you purify this Shava, this corpse? A corpse cannot do anything. And like that it is done. He points to a painting of Kali on Shiva. Shiva is Shava under the feet of Kali. Even Shiva is Shava. Even all of your knowledge is useless unless you are under the feet of the teacher. This is what that means. Being under the feet of the teacher purifies. People here have such a different look on their faces. What is this difference? Everybody is becoming young here. Normally worry eats everybody in the world. Who is there that has not been smitten by this serpent? But if there is no worry in a person, then they are forever young and death cannot touch them. This is the secret, don't have any worry in your mind. This worry is a deadly serpent. A man may survive the bite of a cobra, but if he is bitten by worry he has no chance of survival, it will kill him again and again. People look so much younger when they sit in satsang and have no worries. My parents back in Ireland are worried about me and wonder what I am doing here. I try to tell them, but I just can't communicate to them what happens here. It seems you have come here without the consent of your parents, and worrying about them is one of your burdens now. You have done very well, not only for you, but through you they are also benefited. Assure them that you are taken care of and that you have no problems here. Some parents send their children off to a university in a foreign country so that they receive a higher education. 
It helps the welfare of the whole family when this happens and so the wise parents don't worry about it when their children leave for higher studies. Those higher studies may win them a good job, but this education and luck now will give you contentment, peace and love which you can pass on to your parents. So stay on here under any circumstances. They are displeased, let them be. You must be very strong in this affair and don't try to please anyone who stands in your way. You march on until the battle is won. This battle is between you and a very strong enemy which even the emperors are defeated by. This enemy is ego. He may look weak but is very strong. He has defeated everyone in the universe and has made them her slaves. You will win this battle of life. I do not advise you to reject your family, but you must fulfill your desire to be free. While here in luck now keep only this desire to be free. Then as a free person you can return to any desire including wanting to help your family. I am so glad to be here. It feels like the best thing I could ever do. Attending satsang is the best thing that you can do, it is the best work to be done. You have looked all over the world, but unless you see yourself first you will never see anything else. First look at who you are and then if need be look at anything else in the world. If you see yourself you don't even have to look to God. A woman came here recently after searching for 25 years. Though many swamis and gurus gave her practices and pictures of themselves and of gods. But nothing gave her peace. Then she came here and without asking any question and without getting anything she realized that she is God, the God she had searched so long for. I am leaving this evening to travel around and visit other places and teachers, but I would like your guidance. You want guidance but you don't want to stay in satsang and hear it. You plan to leave. Though it is better that you go on searching. Maybe after years you will be fatigued. So in the year 2075 why don't you come back? Until then just visit all these places and the black holes. Please shake me up and wake me up. I want to find what I have been looking for. You have been shaken and that is why you are here, you don't need anything else. Buten Satsang, you must be shaken up. Then you are to do nothing. You have been shaken from the previous circumstances and now you are after something and I promise you will have that. Can you say something to me about freedom? First be free then enter the world and you will never be miserable. First things must be first. In your case, since you are in old age it wasn't. If you first get free then you remain young and energetic and nobody will get fed up with you, nor you with anyone else because you have seen the beauty inside. You are here now. The past is past. You are here in the field of beauty because now you have found that freedom is the most beautiful thing to be attained in life. The past is past and do not care for that. Now be here in satsang and you will see every cell of your body renewed. You will see the beauty that is within your heart and without also. I am happy you are here and I hope you stay a while longer. My girlfriend with whom I share a strong mutual commitment wants me to go to Europe for relationship counseling. I would like your advice about this. The people who are giving this workshop are in trouble themselves. How can they help you? Tell her to come to India and be here in Satsang. Satsang is the best workshop. Thank you for the precious gift of being here with us. Though often I have such strong dreams of Satsang and other things. These dreams are not dreams but more real than reality. If you are after something seriously, sincerely and honestly you will see that even the dreams will be real and you will dream about what you have done throughout the waking state. More or less this is the projection of the waking state into dream. But what is happening to you are not dreams, but visions and these visions are better than the waking state experiences. This shows a very deep intention to realize your own self. Like everybody here whether they know it or not. One day you will know who brought you here. You will know who your guide is and who compelled you to come here and sit in satsang. This you will know. What is the difference between satsang and psychotherapy? Psychotherapy is a machine which makes money. Satsang simply gives freedom and doesn't make money. 
is simply for peace of mind, not to disturb your mind. It gives peace and love, but psychotherapy can be very confusing. If you go to a typical therapist, they will just take you to the past and leave you there forever. In satsang, we don't dig the graves. We find out who we are and find that we have no disease at all. Most therapists will stay in front of you for only one hour, take dollar one, hundred, and then leave, but the Sakuru is always with you forever. That is the difference. I am not satisfied. I am not free. What is this dissatisfaction? But doubt. Where is this doubt lodging? If it is in the head then cut off the head. If it is in the nose then remove the nose. This is the teaching of seven-year-old girl in Varanasi. Her name was Kamali and her father was Saint Kabir. Kabir was giving satsang and many people were attending it. Kamali asked her father, why do so many people come to see you so early at four in the morning? He said, they come for freedom and truth and to be enlightened. Why else would they come so early in the morning in the winter time when it is so cold Papa? 500 people coming for freedom and satsang. I don't believe it, they must be coming for something else. Then she went away and started playing. The next morning though, she stood at the gate and told each person who came that her father was going to interview each person before they were allowed into satsang. She told them that they had to lay down with their heads on this log, and she would cut their heads off, and then bring the head in to show her father. If he agreed then the person would be allowed into satsang. He assured everybody that the chopper that she had in her hand was very sharp and that nobody would feel any pain as she would instantly separate their heads from their bodies. Her's party said, we are here because we have a court case and we wanted your father's blessings for that reason. But now we have touched his gate and so we have his grace and so we think we will be on our way to court now. The second party said, our son is very sick and so we have come to see your father to get his blessings so that our son does not die. The next party said, we didn't come for satsang, but for his blessings on our daughter's marriage. We will just salute at his gate and be on our way. Tomorrow we will come for satsang. All these people and more had their reasons. After two hours her father came out of the empty satsang hall. Though it was six and no one was around except his daughter who had a chopper in her hand. Apaiji, I told you that nobody comes for freedom, she said. Why do you waste your time? You give satsang from four to eight every morning, and then you leave and give satsang in other places, only to come back after ten days. You don't even give us your love. Why are you wasting your time? Today, everybody had some other interest. So if you are to see a saint you have to remove your head and then he will interview you. Your doubts are only in your head and when you remove it you are doubtless. Then you are free. If you understand you will not keep any doubt. Are you in doubt now? Yes. Then you go out and chop off your head. The Papaji sometimes. Interpret sometimes. What do you mean by sometimes? What teacher taught you this poor grammar? This is a different class where there is no teacher. This teacher has no tongue to speak to the students and the students have no heads to understand with. This is that class. Though if you have a head you have to find some other place, some butchery where heads are beheaded. This ego is the head, you see. It is worth taking to a butchery. They will take very good care of you. I don't need heads, I need hearts. Here heads are not needed, but there are many institutions that need the head only. Remove your head outside and then speak. Then your heart will speak the language of love for the first time. Allow your heart to speak. You have always been speaking from the head so be headed like Kamali says. This girl knew how satsang had to be attended. These eyes and yous and she's are not allowed in satsang. You are now going to see truth face to face. That is the meaning of satsang. You are facing truth freedom. Who can kill you? You are afraid of your own self and you depend upon other selves. You are too involved in matters which are not permanent and now you can't save your life. 
Millions of times you have been born, and millions of times you have died, and so you know the taste of death very well. Now is time to know how to live. It is so simple to be in bliss always, but you want death. This lovely garden of love and beauty you have converted into a butchery. Stop a moment and see who you are. You have never allowed time to your own self to reveal itself to you and to kiss and hug you. You have tried using your head for millions of years, now at least give time to your heart. Keep quiet, simply keep quiet. If you keep quiet your own self will come and hug you and kiss you. Allow time for your own self. That thing with you is so intoxicating. I have come to you to rediscover what is always here and rest permanently in the self. Usually you have to spend a lot of money for these intoxicants. How did you get intoxicated here? Your presence the best drink. Usually the best intoxicant is scotch, but this only lasts three hours and off goes all your money. But this intoxicant will grow more and more every moment. This is not that intoxicant which will go after three hours. You must find a famous label, and then only one peg will last you all your life, and even at that this intoxication will not evaporate. Very few people have drunk this wine because they cannot pay the price. You can say that the price is very high, and you can say that it is no price at all. You only have to keep quiet, and you will have this intoxication. Simply keep quiet. When your intoxication depends on somebody else, you are cheating yourself, you are deceiving yourself. No good intoxication will come from any source other than yourself. Nobody will give you happiness, nobody will give you peace. Find out yourself. Only a confused mind will think that there is happiness elsewhere. This love and beauty will arise if you are quiet for the single instant. Then you will attain everything. It looks as if you have tasted it. Otherwise, you could not shine like you are. Okay, I am very happy to meet you. I love just sitting here with you in peace with no other purpose. The one who sits in front of me with no purpose gets everything. This is what the gods also promise. When a devotee comes to me and asks for something, instantly I will give it, whether it be a child, long life, a good partner, or whatever. But God also has fear like others do. He says I am afraid of the person who doesn't ask for anything because I am bound to provide everything always for that person and I must follow him like a shadow. To the one with no desire I provide everything the moment it is needed, so I am bound to that person. Though it is with the person who comes to satsang with no desires. They are given everything even if they don't ask. You lack nothing. Rest assured that all that was ever needed is over now. Papaji, I would like a new name. First I will give you the meaning. When you put your hands together like a cup and extend these empty hands, the diamond will fall into it by itself. This diamond is knowledge of the self and drops by itself, but there have been layers of distractions in your mind which your hands hold on to. These layers are desires person who comes to satsang has withdrawn his mind from the desires and returned them to his self. This automatically happens in satsang. Then this cup is ready, and the diamond drops and there is self-revelation. Self reveals itself to itself. This position of the open cupped hand is called in jolly. You can hold this self-knowledge because your heart is open to receive this knowledge. This is a story from the Upanishads. When someone got emancipation and was asked how he did it he said, It was like a gooseberry, an amlaki, dropping in my angiali. I didn't do it, it just dropped down from the tree of satsang. This will happen if you stand under the amlaki tree and not under any other tree. The names you get in satsang are names of love and beauty, and those who use these names get drowned in love and beauty and grace. Even the one who calls, your name gets the benefit. The name should be such that everybody enjoys it. If you utter the name of joy, you are joyful. The names represent a new lineage. Out of suffering comes suffering, and so many of your names hold the suffering. 
but now you belong to a different atmosphere and the new name is a part of this. It is part of starting your life afresh free from the past. Papaji, does one need to ripen like a fruit on a tree and then be eaten by an enlightened being? There is no fruit to ripen, no tree and no forest. There is no hope but you must trust this. Nothing ever existed. Roots will drop so don't be on a branch of tree. Give up this habit of dropping. I used to feel very much like a dropped fruit. The first 17 years of my life were like hell. Very few people come back from hell. But I know one person who went there. He was a very good man with no sins on his record except that he once was facing an invading army with a javelin and accidentally pierced the eye of a lizard. So when he went after death to the judge, it was decided that he must go enjoy heaven for one million years. However, since he hurt that lizard, which had to live the rest of its time in that body blind, he had to pass through hell for a few seconds on his way to heaven. So as he passed through hell, he asked the security guards why all the people are smiling and dancing. They said, for one sin they are put into the fire, but unlike an earthly fire which consumes once and the burnt object is finished, these fires are very special and once you die by fire you are instantly reborn and thrown in again. This will go on for one million years, this is hell. But they are happy because you are here. Due to the presence of such a good being like you, all of hell is happy. Well then, said the man, I don't want to go to heaven, I want to stay here in hell. If my presence can make them all happy I am going to stay here. So the security guards went back and asked the judge what to do. The judge agreed that he could stay in hell if he really wanted to, but not to tell anyone. At the same time the people in heaven were getting into trouble because though they were enjoying heaven, they were only enjoying the objects. Somehow they heard that there was satsang in the hell and one by one until now, I think there are about two. 130 people there. So now nobody is going to the so-called heaven and everybody is coming to this hell. I have been very blessed to meet beings like Mother Mira Amachi, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Thichen, Hat Han. I am so thankful for your presence on this planet and I bow to your feet. They have given you blessings and so you are here. It is a blessing of God and so many saints and sages that enable you to come to satsang. It is in this satsang that you will know yourself. Be patient and don't run away unless you have achieved the goal. The Budba was my first guru and my heart connection with him is so strong that it feels that I must have known him. I recognize you also as if I have known you before. You must have known Buddha before, we have known everybody many times before. It is not the first time. You can note down the 1st of April, 1994 about 11.30 a.m. Again in the same time we will meet again and we have met on this particular day millions of times, but most do not remember. Very few remember this and realize that it will keep on going unless you decide to finish this process of coming again and again. Even Buddha saw millions of his lives appearing somewhere as someone, but he knew it and he was told that when he was the prince of the Sakya kingdom and his name was Amitabh Gautam, then that would be his final life. All of us here have been together in many incarnations, therefore we are here. The purpose of us meeting here is not to appear again, as Buddha himself has done. What he did was so simple. He just sat under a Bodhai tree not speaking and all was over. He did it and we also can do it. A story is appearing in my mind and so I will take a short time to tell you. It is a story of the Ramanaya which occurred about 7,000 years ago. This is a story of the Lord's incarnation as Rama. There was a battle going on between the sages and the Asuras or demons. The demons kidnapped Rama's wife and in short Rama killed the demon and brought back his wife. Now they must sit on the throne and the coronation ceremony must take place and so Rama, the king sent a message to his guru to come and do the necessary pujas so that he could sit on the throne with the blessings of his master. He sent his brother Lakshman on the fastest horse and told him to deliver Rama's ring to his guru and to ask him to come to perform the ceremony. 
The Lakshman went to the forest ashram of Rama's guru and said to the guru, I am Lakshman, the brother of Rama. We have come back safely from the south and next week is the ceremony of coronation which Rama requests you with his ring to perform. Now the ring of the king is so precious that it can have no equal in the country. It had special diamonds which could be found nowhere else. Lakshman offered the ring to the guru and the guru said, I am busy cooking some rice, go into my thatch hut and put the ring in the earthen pot. Getting off his horse Lakshman went and put the ring into the pot, but a sound that was unexpected came when he dropped the ring. He was quite curious as to what the pot could contain and felt it was not right to put the ring of the king into a simple earthen pot. He turned the pot upside down and many rings appeared all similar to the one he put in. How could it be? He thought. There are so many rings I can't count them much less find the one I just put into the pot. He went out and asked please tell me who has put these rings into this pot. Sternly and seriously Vashish to said Lakshman you have done it. You have done it. How is it possible? I am coming for the first time. He exclaimed. No, many times you have come and you ask me each time to come to the ceremony while sitting on your horse's back, and each time I have told you to put the ring in the pot. And it will continue to happen like this again and again, unless you get down from the horse and remove your pride. Then stay with me and I will teach you something and you will not appear again, answered Vashishta. So we will keep appearing unless we remove the pride and stop identifying as any name or form, and when you have no name or form, you will realize that you have never come at any time before, not even this time. This is the beauty of this teaching, the truth is never has anything existed. I have just come from Bodh Gaya with so many Buddhist ideas of merit and karma. It seems so meaningless and irrelevant to freedom if nothing ever existed. It is not meaningless, actually it has great meaning. Without good karma, you would never have come here or to Bodh Gaya. Few people have the merit to come to Satsang. It takes a mountain of merits to come here, and this is how you have come. It is destined when you will be free just as it was for Buddha. The strength of your merit will be so strong that freedom will come to you even if you try to reject it. If you are meant to be free the circumstances will be such that you will not be able to leave here even if you try. Papaji, Ananda once said to Buddha, Noble friendship is half of the holy life. Buddha replied, To have noble associates, noble companions, noble friendships is all of the holy life. Papaji, the association with you here bass enriched me like nothing before in years of experience. Thank you for being here when you could just as easily be in the cool mountains. Kabir has said something about the noble association of the teacher. I have to rub my memory because she is old and doesn't like to stay with me. If you associate with a saint for just one moment your sins that you have committed in previous generations will absolutely be destroyed and you will not have to appear again. I don't want to just grow old and die. I want to be free of this. Thatsing is like a beauty parlor which will remove all your wrinkles because it will show you your true face. Here the price is not 950 rupees, the price is not to think. Anybody can pay the price. If you don't think then tell me how beautiful you could be. When it comes, clench your teeth and tighten your fists in determination and jump into your own Lake Manus Rover. It seems that since coming to Lucknow I am not as happy as I was before I came here. I do enjoy being here in this beautiful Sangha. What is happening to me? The happiness you had before Lucknow was probably a mind conceived happiness based on a person or persons or objects who returned happiness to you. Maybe you got happiness just from your own concepts. That is not happiness. True happiness cannot be described. If you can describe it or its source then it is only a mental flight whose purpose is to gain or attain something. Happiness doesn't come from another person, not even from a saint or sage. Happiness comes from within. Happiness is untold, unaware. You can't even get happiness in satsang for it is always within you. 
You come to satsang and are told to be quiet and not to think of anything, including your own body and mind and ego and activity of the senses. Then you can be quiet and at peace. Here you learn to be quiet, not allowing any thought to arise from your mind. Then you will have a happiness beyond description, and your face will show this within you. Your face will absolutely change when you are happy. And anybody who looks at your face will be happy. This sadness welling up is a good sign. It was untouched in the bottom of your heart and more was accumulating there for lifetimes. This sadness has become one with your body and is not separate from it. Like dust collecting on the bottom of a glass of water, this sadness will accumulate in your heart on account of your wrong behavior and wrong activities. The reason that you are feeling this sadness now is because satsang stirs it up and brings it to the surface where it can be removed. Everybody's mind gets stressed in satsang and what is unnoticed for years comes to the surface. But sadness cannot stay in satsang and so it is dissolved. Actually, it is the suffering and sadness that brought you here so you must be thankful to it. Once you know your own self, all of this sadness will no longer be an issue for you. You may feel unlucky but actually you are incredibly lucky. Soon the past will no longer affect you and you won't care about these burdens that you have carried. You will only know now. I am so caught up in thought and streams of judgments and feelings, it is barred to feel lucky, though inside I really know I am. You are in the middle of a stream? Why did you enter this stream if you are not a swimmer? Only those who know how to swim can enter the river and enjoy it. Though, you are advised to not enter rivers if you don't know how to swim. First learn how to swim and you will not fear any river. Learn swimming by staying with those who know how to swim. Slowly you will learn to swim as they hold you. Then you will move the hands and in this way you will not drown. Moving the hands is swimming and this is self-effort. Then you become a swimmer. If you don't make self-effort you will sink. You can also make use of the depth of the river and balance your body so that you float without moving any part of your body. Though keep the company of the wise and not of the stupid people who do not know how to swim. You are here now. Slowly you will learn how to swim without making effort. Recently in my return to the West, I was treated like royalty wherever I went. But here in luck now I am not treated like anybody special. This is true. Here you are not treated special because everybody is like you. But when you go away from here you will see that you are treated like a queen because they have never seen a face like yours in Sweden. Here all the women are queens, but you only realize this when you are away. It is like teachers being trained in college. There they are all the same and nobody is special. But when they go into their own classrooms out in the schools, then all the students pay them so much respect. To be a queen, to be beautiful, look within yourself. Looking without you are not beautiful. You must look within to be beautiful, then this inner beauty will reflect through your pores and attract all those near you. I am so excited to see you again and to be in your presence. You are most welcome. Let us see each other. I will see you, but you will not see me. What is this phenomena? Usually if I see you you must also see me but you don't see me. You only see my face. Don't see my face only see what cannot be seen. Then you will really see me and I will see you. Kiss your own self and tell me what taste it has. To describe this kiss you can only give a kiss. It cannot be described because it is beyond the concepts of the mind. This kiss is no mind and desirelessness is the taste of it though have no desires and have this taste. This is how it comes. When you are desireless then happiness comes. Try this now and this is happiness. It is so hard to speak about what you have given us. Often words spoken about this are misused and just spoil the person. You must speak about the diamond to someone who can appreciate it not to the foolish. One thing I can speak of is cricket. I know you love cricket. Can you give us a sad thing about it? Yes, it comes and it goes. Whatever Leela happens, just enjoy it. Then it becomes a Leela. 
if you get involved in it, you will just get lost. Papa, am I here for shack to pack, or to remove my doubts, or to satisfy my spiritual appetite? Preferably, you are here to remove your doubts and after they are removed the self will transmit its power onto you. This is called Shaktipat. And you are not to satisfy your spiritual appetite, but live as spirit itself be spirit itself, I have no more questions. Two people have no questions. One is a wise person and so they have nothing to ask, a man at home is not lost. The other one is someone who doesn't know that there is something to question. Though some have no question on account of their light and wisdom. But some simply do not know. Though when the questions arise please don't be discouraged or disheartened because it is a good sign. All the mud which is settled below the surface of the mind rises when stirred and is on its way out in the form of a question. Therefore the questions have to be asked and so don't be shy to ask them. When these doubts have been removed, you will see the reflection of your own self within the mirror of your own mind. Then you will recognize that this is what you came here for and you can't do this when the surface is disturbed. When you come to the teacher you are obliged to ask a question because there is no person who has solved this question. Those who are born have a question, how to be happy. Nobody from the king to the farmer is happy. So ask the teacher how to be at rest, how to be peaceful, how to love my own self and everybody else. Like this I request that you ask the question how to remain at peace. For I asked if you could put your feet on my head in the traditional way but you refused. I don't follow traditional ways like this. I don't believe in this kind of tradition. It may have symbolized the removal of someone's ego. But feet and head have nothing to do with ego. Both of these are physical and that means that peace and love would come from the physical, but that is not true. It is your ego which waits for some traditional rites. It will never submit. You think that your ego will be dissolved if I put my foot on your head? No. Why waste time? Why ask for a foot on your head? Why don't you straight away rush inside? Don't wait. I would be very happy to rush in. No, do not say that you would be very happy to rush in, just do it. Happiness will come when there is no ego. But making plans that you will be happy is for the future. This would be his future and has troubled you for a long time. While your hair is still black rush in. Don't wait until they are white. What is this longing and yearning that I feel and how can I give myself to this longing? I have been so troubled by my husband leaving me and about the welfare of my daughter. You have left your home and have come to India, but if you have not left behind the relationships then you will trouble your mind. Then your stay here will not benefit you. If you are half here and half there it will take you a lot of time to be quiet. You have to understand that one day you have to leave all the relationships with your husband and children. If your husband has left you, you should be thankful and happy because you have experienced that all relationships start and end. Now you won't be fooled by another relationship. Now, it will be easier for you to go beyond relationship to where all is one. We recommend which books would be best to read in order to help my contemplation lead to meditation. This is a very good question. I will show you one instance so that you will have good literature for your meditation. There was a man who went to the king and asked just for some stale food which had been left overnight. The king gives him a diamond on the spot because the king has no stale food, only fresh food is served to him. He gave the poor man a diamond so that the whole of his life he could have fresh food from the wealth this diamond would bring. You are this questioner, no other. From literature you want to learn how to meditate, but tell me what happens here now in satsang from the beginning. You don't need to read a book to stay quiet and meditate. Yes Papaji, it is time to sit in front of you and see that nothing ever happens to the space of Ananda. You have found your own friend which is Ananda. You will never be able to describe who this is with you when you have lived forever. Only in waking do you know who is sleeping next to you. Now you know he has been your friend for generations, though you were not looking at him. 
You were looking somewhere else and that is the trouble with everybody. They don't look within their own self, but look for someone else somewhere. Therefore, they cannot have a friend as intimate as Ananda. I heard of so many people speaking about how hot summer would be, but nobody ever mentioned how sweet and charming these hot season satsangs are. Some people will like to stay here, because when you are in satsang you don't look at what is going on outside of satsang. Once I also was in the summer in the south in Turavana Malai, at Arunachala during the month of June. It was very hot, about 46 degrees Celsius. Most of the people were running away to Udi and other hill stations. I think it was Major Chadwick who told the Maharishi that all the rich people had gone away to the hill stations, and the few people who were left were too poor, and could not afford to go, and were staying here with him. Maharishi said, I am also a poor man and can't go to any hill station. Let me tell you, to stay in summer in satsang with the master's penance is tapas itself. Chapter, Signs and Symptoms of Immanent Freedom Before the Guru's grace brings one to satsang it is working in the person's life by manifesting in them the many signs, or qualifications, that appear as they become more and more ripe for freedom, as the veil of illusion gets thinner and thinner. The most important qualifications are holiness and brahmajignyasa, a burning desire for freedom. Next is Vivek, the ability to discriminate the real from unreal, the eternal from the transient, and between peace and suffering. This is followed by Varajya, dispassion, and renunciation for the unreal transient world of sense objects. Other signs include humbleness, stillness, a dharmic life, a healthy body, inquiry, devotion, and ahimsa, non-violence. All of these signs are aspects of one thing, the immanence of self revealing self to self. These symptoms arise on their own. Don't be fooled and focus on them. Focus incessantly only on self. Brahmajignyasa, the desire for freedom. The raft across the ocean of samsara is the strong decision to be free. This intense desire is absolutely necessary. The intensity of this desire is itself the Satguru, the pain in the heart is the self-calling. Always desire self because you will always get what you desire most. The burning desire for freedom is enough and is the result of blessings. The desire for moksha is moksha because now your relationship is with freedom. Now discriminate between I and freedom, and find out how far I is from freedom. When there are no more places to go there is no more I to go there, no more tourist left. Then have faith like a rock in this freedom so that the water and winds of thought and doubt will not move it. If the desire for freedom is continuous, then all the habits and distractions of mind will drop. Think only of freedom, and you become freedom because you are what you think. As persistent as the pain of a toothache, always think of self. The desire for freedom is the high tide which wipes out the sand castles of doubt. Without this desire man is a tailless animal questioner, I have such a burning desire to be free of it all. Answer from Papaji. It is enough if you have a burning desire for freedom. It will burn the whole universe including you, your mind, your ego and your body. Let it burn and whatever is left throw back to the fire. Anything that goes into the fire will become fire, even the thought of freedom will enter this fire and be consumed and become that. It is so easy, but very few are burning to be free. Most people want sense objects and so they enter into the universe according to their own will. Let your will burn in this fire so that it takes you nowhere else. Let yourself be burned in this fire of eternity, love and peace. Don't be afraid of this fire, it is love itself. This desire for freedom is the fire of love. Most people are afraid of this fire. Very few people have shown this love for freedom and those who consume themselves in this fire are still living. Signs and Symptoms of Emain and Freedom Buddha has done it 2006, 100 years ago. This thought of freedom came to him while he was in the pleasure garden surrounded by the beautiful young girls that his father had arranged. 
His horoscope showed that he would be the king of the ascetics and so his father kept him in the prison of the pleasures of the world. But this fire of love was blazing inside him and so he is still alive. We don't remember our grandparents, but this Prince of Peace is still alive in the hearts of the whole world. Like this you must do it. He was a human being too. Though if he has done it, surely we can do it too. Everybody can become Buddha. The only thing that is needed is the fire of freedom and to recognize that you are the stillness, that you are also are that enlightened one. I want to be submerged deeply in this pool of stillness and drink its water. Let me melt in love with you. I am at the edge. Very few people are at this edge, looking at the eternal water with their ego transformed into ashes by the fire of love. You have left behind millions of people. Now it is good if you jump yourself, but you are afraid of the depths. I'm behind you watching the game between your fear of jumping and your desire to jump. Since the diving board is narrow you can't leave it because I am blocking your way. Though if you don't want to jump, I will push you. But it is better if you jump because I will not let you return. You will see that you are the eternal ocean, and you will be lost in this ocean like a block of ice is lost when thrown into the water. This is how Ramakrishna Paramahamsa of Bengal who lived along the shore of the ocean and along the banks of the Ganga, said it. To win freedom, to measure the depth of yourself, be a salt doll and dive into the Ganga. You will forget that you are a doll and you will become the Ganga. This is the absolute oneness of the eternal waters. You will never be allowed to return to its banks because there are none. I want to dissolve in my true nature and never turn back. You have decided very well and you expect something very great. Try to be here for some days more. Stay here and it won't take so much time. This decision is very strong and so you will get immediate results. Don't lose heart. There once was a man called Matwala who sat under a tree and said, Unless I get enlightened I will not get up. Though he was always sitting meditating and not getting up to eat. Then someone came to him and asked him what he was doing. I'm meditating Matwala said. What for? Asked the stranger. Just to be happy. He replied. He'll tell you, said the stranger, you see how many leaves this banyan tree has? So many incarnations you must take in order to be free. No problem, replied the confident meditator. There may be thousands of leaves on a banyan tree, I will meditate. And so with this decision he continued to meditate. I don't care about incarnations, I'll just sit. After a while another saint came and asked, What are you doing? Again Matt Waller replied, meditating. Why? Asked the saint. Everybody is suffering and so to get rid of suffering my teacher told me to meditate, he replied. The saint said, I tell you, you must stay here and meditate as long as it takes for one leaf to drop from this banyan tree. When one leaf falls, you will be enlightened. Then boldly the matwala yelled out, I can't wait for the dropping of a leaf. What does the dropping of a leaf have to do with my light and wisdom? He stood up and started dancing. He was enlightened. Though the meaning of this story is that you are not to wait one year. This does not depend on the months. You have already spent 35 million years and this tree is always there growing more leaves. If one leaf falls another will grow and so how long will you wait? Why don't you just get up and shout I am free? After all when you are free you will enjoy your life. Why can't you enjoy it now? Most people are afraid and can shout I am dying but never did I see a man jumping on the road and shouting, I am free. Though if you are real Matt Woolley go out on the road and shout, I am free. My ego is very strong. Can you help me to destroy it? I want to experience freedom. I am without anger and fear. Can you show me your ego so that I can compare my strength with the strength of your ego? Have you ever seen her? I have just felt it. Have you ever seen this girlfriend? He's a good friend, let her try her strength on you. Then you will run away because she's very strong like an elephant. Though you have to tame it with love. 
If you tame it with love she will not give you trouble. Let her alone. When you want something that you do not get the ego will trouble you. You must have the ego to that extent as, I want to be free. Let this ego continue. Is also ego to want this. Desire freedom not tomorrow but today not today but now itself. Then you will show me the ego. If she is strong this is a strong desire for her to have, I want to be free. Then this strength will help you. This is also ego. Wanting something is ego, so utilize the strength of your ego by desiring freedom, no other desire should touch you at the same time. Make use of the strength of the ego by desiring freedom. Say it now. I want to be free. Like this day and night, say that you are going to get it. Buddha had it so you can also have it. Say this, he was a human, I am also human. He could get it so why can't I? Sit down under a tree and don't get up unless you are free. This is the decision and he had it. Indecision will not work, so you have to decide. Many lives you have had and many species you have cycled through. Now is the best time. Your decision is good, you have come for satsang, and there is a place to sit and be free without any practice or effort. Simply keep quiet without any thought. No training is given here that you have to do. Simply keep quiet. Don't stir a thought from your mind. How easy. You are a young boy, you can do it. Of all the world those who want freedom are few. Those who are burning for freedom are even fewer. Those who strive one-pointedly are even fewer. Those who do not return to the senses are even fewer. Those who go on the razor's edge are even fewer still. Those who do not fall off this edge are even fewer still. Those who attain the self are so few. Strive, strive, it is so rare that you are here, you have a mountain of merits to bring you here. Do not waste it. Thrive. When this desire to unite is extremely strong what do you feel? When you jump into the deep river not knowing how to swim what happens? I will drown. Yes, some bubbles will appear on the surface and then break. Though these sometimes when you are extremely in love with yourself, this is going to happen. Though at the time when the bubbles are coming will you write me a letter? You will not take your pen and paper, because they are not necessary when you are jumping into the self itself. You don't need anything else. You don't need to communicate anything to the people who are standing on the bank and who have not jumped in yet. This sometimes that you speak of cannot be shorter than the time it takes to drown in the river. When you jump only water exists, there is no air in the depths, otherwise ego could still live there. But it is very deep, and there exists only that, only self, only love exists there. Here you are not to gain anything, but you are to give everything to whom you love. Then everything will vanish. You have the real experience of this, nothing will ever disturb you. But if you have a disturbance in your mind then, you cannot see the light. This disturbance will be attachment to something which you cannot forget. I am sick of these attachments, and I would love to give myself to love. My only desire is liberation now. I want to attain given mukti. This desire is how you have attained the experience you have. Given mukti liberation while still alive is all you want. Mukti moksham liberation are of two kinds. One is when you are alive give an mukti. The other is after death vida mukti. This happens when somebody cannot do it while alive, but it occurs at death. Here what we do is neither vida mukti nor jivan mukti. Here we speak only of now, instant mukti, like instant coffee, like Nescafe. The teacher will give you enlightenment like Nescafe. This is the time you must be strong and near the teacher so that if trouble arises you'll seek advice. Finish your work here now. Don't run away. I want to share a Sufi poem by Rumi, Come come whoever you are. Wanderer, worshipper, lover of learning, it does not matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair come. 
Even if you have broken your vow one thousand times, come, come again, come. Apaji, is it the love and grace that stills the mind without effort? Shall I convert all my will into longing? You have to convert everything into longing. Your longing must be so strong that you forget who is longing and for what. This must be the longing of everybody who is seeking for the truth. He must forget all else. This is enough, and this rises only in satsang. Though again and again be strong, then you will know what you longed for was you alone, and the longing will vanish as you embrace your own self. It seems that if I really had a true desire to be free, I would be. You need a one hundred percent true desire that you must be free today, now, and no other desire. Have only the desire I have to be free, and no other desire of the world. Then immediately that desire will be fulfilled. How can I have a true desire now? Now, this is how. Have a true desire now and tell me what happens. Sit for one moment with a mind absolutely free. Then this mind will be enlightened at once. Just don't think of anything in that moment, and you will see that you are free. After satsin, sit for one second and don't let your mind go anywhere. And if it goes, just watch it as a witness. Watch it come and go like you watch your breath come in and out. Don't stop. Regularly keep watching. When there is no thought, you are free. I have always been a doer, but now I would like to simply abide in my true nature and stay awake to this. Is this just another desire? This you may call a desire, but it will burn away millions of desires. Most people experience one desire as soon as another vanishes. This continual flow of desires is called samsara. As long as there is desire, you can't escape rebirth. But the one desire I want to be free will stop all of this. This may be a desire, but it will burn everything else. I am so glad that you have started so young, and that you did not postpone this to old age. Now do not give rise to any kind of effort, and don't think about anything, whether you are free or bound. The time will come when this desire to be free will also vanish. But to begin with, you must start as a student, not as a teacher. If I leave this body before I am realized, will I continue this work? Whatever unfulfilled desire you have, if it is kept up to your departure and is the last desire at the last breath out. Then this soul takes birth in some circumstances to fulfill that desire. The soul travel in the skies looking for a proper womb to enter. It will search for a pious family in the case that it desires freedom, and if it decides that the family that it has chosen will not be right, then it will, as a fetus, abort itself and continue its search. I hear from so many people here that they spontaneously inquired or meditated at very young ages. This is a sign of what your last life was, and the last desire of that life. If you don't complete your journey in this life, it will be the next life. My inability to know the truth causes me so much pain. It is only because you don't want it. Your pain and suffering is much more readily available to you only because you don't want the truth. Why is my decision to be free sometimes strong and sometimes not? It doesn't matter. The desire for freedom is so strong that it will destroy all other desires. This destruction means that either the desires will not rise or they will be fulfilled. The desire to be free is so strong that even when other desires come in temporarily, it still reappears. I've had so many plans to travel all over, but I keep canceling them because I can't leave. Wherever you go, eventually you must stay here for final realization. Your best guide is your true desire to be free. This will take you to where you have to be, which is where your mind will be killed. But she does not want to be killed so easily, and will appear as your friend. No, she is your enemy. This death of mind and the birth into the truth is all that I am interested in. This is the true birth, and it will never meet death. All other birth meets death in a short while. With this birth. Death is forever removed because now you have your own self and not someone else, not other. If you love someone else, you have to face the consequences of death. 
If you don't have any contact with any other person or object, you will conquer death because you are beyond death in the oneness and happiness of the self of all beings. When I came here to you, there was such a strong decision to do so, even though it went against the advice of my friends and family. How can I let go of everything and open up to your grace and enjoy the oneness and bliss of I am? You left everything behind in Denmark. You didn't listen to your friends, but you listened to the call. Make the decision that you must find your own light here and now. Leave behind attachments to thoughts, friends and objects. This decision will immediately pay you, I want it now. Say this and you will change instantly. I cannot tell you what will happen, but I can say you will have no fear and no doubt. Make this strong decision and you will have more strength than any king. If you have decided that I am free, it is quite enough if you honor it now. Why do you have to doubt? When you say I am free, you must honor this freedom, and if you do this now it will be the responsibility of freedom to look after you. Why do you say I want to be free all the time? When you are free you have gone beyond time. How can you return back to time? It is that timelessness which will take care of you. You have to understand what you have done and what reward has been given to you. You do not have assessment of the diamond in the palm of your hand. You have to honor it. To honor your commitment is most important. Otherwise, everyone is always free. They are already free but nobody honors that freedom and therefore one suffers. People only honor suffering. People honor what their parents tell them, you have to suffer like us. The neighbors, the priests, the saints, heads of all religions all say that you are suffering and that you have to go to hell. This is the proclamation of the founders of religions. I tell you that you are already free, why don't you respect my word? You have come here to the teacher so you have to respect him and be obedient, and do as the teacher says. He tells you that you are free, so accept it. I don't feel any happiness, in fact I feel like I am dead. Please tell me what to do. Have only one desire in your life, the desire for freedom. Only this desire will not allow any other desire to trouble you. Whenever it can be fulfilled sacrifice everything for that desire. This desire will give you peace and happiness and you won't return to samsara. Sacrifice everything like even kings and queens have done and you will be free of every struggle of life. Don't allow the mind to cheat you. Only mind keeps you from freedom. You people here understood the nature of mind and will not listen to the mind. They refuse what comes from mind and they make the mind listen to them. They sit quiet until they are free. Only after freedom will they look after the desires of the mind and fulfill them. You are a Hanuman Bhakta, aren't you? Hanuman had only one desire which was to serve his master and never allowed a personal desire to arise. Follow the footsteps of Hanuman and work for Rama alone. By doing Rama's work the strength will come by itself and you will be able to leap across the Indian Ocean. This much strength you will have. There is such a longing to reach home and be in peace and connect with people on a deeper level. This longing even hurts my heart. You have traveled for a long time but you can't feel rest until you go home. After you have made all your purchases in the market, you will go home and take rest. You can spend time in the markets and hotels, but home is the best place, so wandering must someday stop. You have spent millions of years marketing buying commodities that you want, but you have no rest. So return home and rest. Home is the best place to abide always. I am not talking of the house outside of you, but the home inside of you. When you feel you are fatigued by those in the market who want you for money or something else, then come home, the earlier the better. Otherwise, you are wasting your life. This home is always available, its doors are always open, but you must make an about turn. When you stop going out and start going in you will see that this house has always been free and doesn't even have doors. You just haven't looked. She weeps this shows that you are at home. The people who are home have a different face than those who are out in the fish market. I want to always be here. I want to merge with the source. 
The source of light and life is brighter than a million suns. When you want to be it itself, it will burst and instantly end all your desires and suffering. Simply look at it. Don't question but dissolve in the light. They beyond thought and mind where the sun, moon and stars do not rise. Happy G thank God that I weep. This weeping is a deep desire to see something that very few have seen. This is due to your previous karma which is not fructified in your last incarnation. That is why you are here in satsang. Now you will start smiling and laughing. This crying is not a bad sign. Many people cry at the loss of their property or of a dear one. But you do not cry for all these things. Just as a child cries for its mother and will accept only its mother, and not even a chocolate will do, so you must continue this very auspicious crying. I rarely see anybody crying for that which gives you peace. Keep weeping until you find your mother, your own self, the supreme power. I am very happy to that you have been crying. I have been crying and burning inside to be free. One must burn inside constantly. When the inside is all burnt, that is the time that you will meet your beloved. Having something left inside you can't meet your beloved, so let it burn for years. Then you are left young, fresh and youthful to meet your beloved. Though you are well born, you have had a lucky birth. A lucky birth is when you have known yourself and you are peaceful. Most births are unfortunate, unwanted and unlucky. Lucky births are those who were well looked after by their parents who desire to know the truth, who have found their way to satsang, and who can speak that they've seen that and all darkness is gone. I have come to you in order to end my struggle to be free because I can't do it alone. The vastness of your presence has helped me so much already. You have come here with a strong desire to get something which you could not get alone. Let me tell you, you can only do it alone and not with the help of anyone. You cannot walk abreast on the blade of a sword. It is impossible. When you walk on the sword you must be alone by yourself. You can't look this side or that side or behind because the edge of the sword is so sharp that you will be cut into two parts if you look anywhere. To go for freedom is not less than walking on the edge of the sword. You can't take your friends, near ones or dear ones, you have to walk alone and look nowhere. If you look, you will shake and you will never arrive at your destination of freedom. This means that you cannot have any thought in your mind because if you do you will be in the past. Do not think and don't do anything. Simply keep freedom in your mind, nothing else. Then just one glimpse of the beloved will remove the darkness from your mind which has collected for ages. Be so quiet that you forget even the desire which brought you here to win freedom. Be so quiet that there's no attachment, not even to quietness. There are no attachments in presence, because there is no mind. Mind is the past, and there is no past in presence. Mind will only take you to the graveyard, and so only dead people live in the mind. Whatever you think of is dead so don't touch the mind at all if you want to be free. Don't allow this old friend to come in and trouble you anymore. Simply keep quiet, don't make effort. You should tightly keep hold of the pull to go within, and then you will not see any other pull. This needs your seriousness. If you want to stay where you won't be troubled by the outside world, stay where peace is available. Outside there is no peace. Why do so many people come here, stay here, and love you, but they don't get enlightened when you say it only takes one second to be free? Self-realization takes one second, but this second takes a great effort to remove all other thoughts from your mind. You must remove all from this second and allow only this second to stay with you. In that second stand up on your toes and with clenched fists shout, I have to be free in this second. It is very rare to have such extreme desire for freedom, such extreme activity and strength that even gods will come and bow before you. You can't do it with your weak body. It takes a very strong body and mind and intention. Then this second will work. You have to do it. Don't just rid the menu eat the food. Defeat the stupid mind. It is not the mind which makes the decision to be free. When you do it there is no mind. 
Control the mind and use it as a slave, but here you don't need the mind to be free. Papaji, what is this grace? What is this abidance in self? I long so much for this which you radiate. This longing for awareness must be classified as awareness itself. You must have such an intense desire that you forget that it is desire. Then you will see the beauty of that which you long for. Don't even remember that you are in love with it, but know that you are that love which you are loving. Merge. Then there will be the radiance. Vivek, discrimination between peace and suffering. Vivek is the intellect asking and determining if something is transient or permanent. Vivek is the choice between the bliss of self and the pleasures of the senses, between peace and disturbance. With Vivek pick up what is real or else you will make a mistake. Wise living is discriminating between the false from the true, between joy and suffering, and then rejecting what you are not. Discrimination destroys clinging by exposing the transience, the illusory nature of the object to be clung to. You must always be centered in self. That self alone is the truth, all else is falsehood. A strong understanding of this in your mind is important. Instantly reason out, is it a rope or it is a snake? Faulty discrimination is a prison in which you are a slave to the imaginary snake. Hamsa is the legendary swan symbolizing discrimination. From a mixture of milk and water Hamsa can drink the milk and leave the water behind. After the last satsang I experienced the Illuminous One for several hours. Then slowly mind and duality came back. There had been no mind and no identification. Mind appears tell it that you will not identify with it. Hit it with the sword. Don't identify any duality if duality appears. How simple. Why get into trouble? If duality appears, say, there is no duality and no unity either. I have trouble when I do this. Who has the trouble? Personalities? Duality? Why are you in trouble with mind? Have you ever seen it? Mind does not exist. The trouble is with your own ego. You think that you appear and decide that you want something. If this something is not available then you are in trouble. All beings are there because of your mind. If you check the mind you won't see any friend or enemy or person or individual, not even time. This is sleep while all else is awake. Don't give rise to any thought. This is in your hands. Challenge all thought with the sword of discrimination and complete full decision, and then nothing can touch you. If your decision is shaky you will not have this light wisdom, love, enlightenment. Enlightenment is not for the cowards or the weak, but for those who are very strong who can fight the weakness of personification and attachments. Stand on your own feet and don't depend on anything. How can I lose what can't be lost? This you must know. You must find that which cannot be found or lost. Go on discriminating what your purpose is, what you should get, and what you should leave, what is real and what is not real. You must discriminate where it is all a waste of time. Begin with discriminating what your purpose is. It is to find that which gives you peace. Know what is real. You are here for enlightenment and not for anything else. This is your decision. Don't entertain any thought which will disturb you. Every minute be on guard. Then, you will be successful. Don't let your decision falter. Don't accept defeat. You must be a warrior with sword in hand. Cut the thought you don't want and you'll be successful. I have experienced two different states here. One is a peaceful, spacious, limitless state with nothing there. The other is like being in a womb very much in contact with a lot of energy. Who is discriminating between these two states? My mind. Both are notions and equally unreal. Both of these states are transient projections as is the mind itself. It is mind which likes one state and not another. Who is experiencing these states and discriminating between them? Find out. Who is creating differences? One may be good and the other is less than good. 
Who has seen these changes? Return to where all states vanish, and then you will enter peace, absolute peace. Mind is discrimination itself, question the source of this mind. Where does duality arise from? Go there and you will be in the source, absolute silence. Go to where differences arise from, before they are differences. Do it here and now. Go there, but do not give rise to any intention or effort and then you will see it. Do it now. Thank you. It has gone empty so quickly. Yes, here nothing will rise. Nothing. Duality will not rise here, this is freedom. This is your own nature. Your own nature. Recognize and identify with this, merge into this. Then you will see that all of manifestation is in the center of this consciousness. Everything is yours and you become all, no states, I am all of this. From here dance. I don't know if I should stay or go or where to stay or go. To be happy you must discriminate and know when to sit in the shade of the tree and when to walk in the sunshine. It may not be good to do only one of them. Though enjoy the sun and when it is too much go and sleep and relax under the tree. Enjoy both. Wherever you must stay enjoy your circumstances. Don't avoid anything and don't accept anything. Since I was at the burning gat in Varanasi my longing to be close to you and myself has been burning very strongly. What can I do? When you went to see the bodies burn you must have seen that only a few ounces of ash are left. These few ounces of ash are the body to which you are so attached. This is burning gat discrimination. Everybody gets this when they go there but soon forgets it. You must remember this discrimination permanently. This body will soon be ashes, so before it happens let me fulfill the purpose of wearing the body. Then when your body is burned you will be happy. Don't give a piece to chase after thoughts which are not even real. Let the thoughts come and let them go, what is the trouble? Your decision to leave happiness is not a good one. Abide in peace. You have been disturbed for millions of years. Why go back to this disturbance once you have found peace? Understand this. Discriminate between what gives you peace and what disturbs you. Whatever is better follow it. When you say that thoughts and feelings are not real I get confused. Are they bad or meaningless? All thoughts and emotions are not real. They are like the waves that dance on the surface of the ocean for a few seconds or minutes and then they return to where they have arisen from. Then they are no more a wave but they are ocean. How long can a wave keep its form as a separate personality? Name and form is not real. Look at the substratum from where they arise. That is real. It will not change. For any thought rises in your mind and goes toward an object of your senses for enjoyment, look at the substratum from where it would arise. From there you can enjoy the forms of thought and feelings because from there you are not ignorant. The wave and bubble are ignorant because they only dance for their own name and form. These forms are transient and to be attached to them is to be confused. Anything that rises be it thought, desire, emotion, feeling or object will give you suffering and no one in the world can avoid this. Both the enjoyer and the enjoyed are washed away. But the wise discriminate between the real and unreal. They know what is real and so allow their feelings and thoughts to arise because they know all is one and the same. In this way you will not suffer. I want to experience the one who experiences your suffering and your joy. It is not the body or the mind. The enjoyer is something else. Everybody is confused about this. They say I am enjoying and they mean that my body is enjoying. This isn't it. Who is the witness of enjoyment when the body is involved in enjoying? Witness is not engaged, but only a witness. This is the self, your own beloved heart. You are that itself. While walking in a field in Poland, I had a strong experience which broke down totally the reality of the world. I clearly saw everything as a mental construct of the mind, but this experience slowly faded away after two weeks. 
I was terrified by this view because I had no idea who I was. My previous identity of who I thought I was shattered. Seeing everything as a mental construct is the best experience one could have. Why were you afraid? All is mental construction. When there is no mind, there is nothing to touch or see or realize. Just like in the sleep state, there is nothing. When it happens in the waking state, it means the person is reaping the reward of his merits and longings. This experience can happen anywhere, in fields, in forests, while awake or asleep. It doesn't matter. But when you had a doubt about it, it faded away. When this happens, you don't need to know who you are. When you question who am I, there must be a subject, the question, and an object. But when everything is an illusion, as you said it was, then this subject and object is also an illusion. Nothing exists. This is the truth. So many of my friends told me that I had to see a psychologist after I had this experience. So finally I gave in. But instead of telling me that I was crazy, as I expected, he told me that it was time to find my guru. I couldn't believe it. I heard about you soon after, and now I am here. Grace has brought everybody here. This is the grace of the divine within saying, "Come home." Grace brings you here to clear your doubts and to end your journey. You have to make the most of this human birth, so that you are not thrown in the womb again to suffer. How can I stay beyond this separation caused by thought only? I have such a strong longing for it. You have a desire to be free, and you have the desire for something else. So you must discriminate which is permanent and which is temporary. Most people want only the temporary satisfaction of the mind, which fades away in a few seconds. Nobody desires abiding peace and love. Discriminate between what is eternal and what moves like bubbles on a lake. This bubble moves across the surface of the lake, shining, sparkling, but it doesn't have anything to do with the reality. With just a small gust of wind, the bubble is lost and returns to its substratum. In this way, you also work for your substratum. With strong determination, know that you have to win it. The stronger your determination is, the earlier will be your success. Varagia, renunciation of the transient. Freedom is beyond understanding, beyond the movements of mind, and yet there is one intellectual grasp that is very important. It is to know that no object will give you peace of mind. If you know this, you will not be attracted to the transient objects. This is dispassion, Varagia. Vivek is the discrimination between the real and the unreal. The desire for freedom is the passion for the real, and Varagia is the dispassion for the unreal. It is the abandonment of attachment to all sense pleasures because they are inherently transient and illusory, not because they are bad. They are your dance. Unless you renounce mind, all other renunciation is useless. Everything you would renounce is renounced with mind. But only self renounces mind itself by varagia, non-attachment to thought, and the renunciation of all that makes you suffer. Varagia is knowing that there are no biting pleasures. A wise one rejects all for peace. I feel that I am on the road to freedom, and I wonder if I break all of my attachments, will I be free? Do I also need to break my relations? When you want something other than these attachments and relationships, they will naturally fall off by themselves. You are not to break them, but they themselves will fall like a wall of sand. All relationships are not more than the walls of sand that the children make at the beach. There is no relationship worth living with like the relationship with your own self, and you can never get rid of that relationship. But any relationship that discourages you from finding yourself must be rejected forever. Actually, there are no attachments at all. How your attachments fall when you go to sleep and there is no father or mother or priest or church to have attachments with. Like this, when you search, all relationships will fall by themselves because they do not exist. They only seem to exist because you need something from them. You have some interest somewhere, and therefore you make up a relationship. The only relationship that cannot be broken is to fall in love with your own self. 
This is how you will find peace. Later you will know that you have always been living in peace, but due to attachments you were involved in other things and you did not look at what was under your feet. Your senses were running out to some place or object or person and therefore you never got to this space at all. So my dear friend, now onward, you are here in Satsang. This is the best place which will not cheat you like all the relationships have cheated you so far. There is such a magic coming from here. I feel that I was pulled from the other side of the planet like a fish is pulled in by the line. You have left everything behind. This is the magic. Coming here to fulfill your purpose is magic. You will know the consequences of this magic in a couple of days I assure you. When this starts to happen, it is some inner drive which wants to love you. This drive does not come to everyone, but to only very few people who reject their kingdoms, their kings, their queens and their treasures and who then go straight away into the forest to find success. Make a strong decision not to leave until you are successful. The stronger this desire is the stronger will be the fire which will burn in the heart of your beloved. Then just as you have rejected everything, he will reject his heaven, and will come in front of you, don't worry. Let this candle be always lit in you. Into this flame the moth will come and consume itself. The truth always is, but can the recognition of truth be delayed in time? No, the recognition of the truth cannot be delayed. Delaying the recognition of truth is only due to the searching for what is not the truth and the lack of the sincere and honest desire to see the truth. Truth is everywhere in front of you, behind you, below and above you. You want something else, some other person or object. When you don't touch these other things, what do you see? Instantly you will see that you are truth itself. I've lost interest in the world of name and form. Finally I came here to luck now. Sometimes people lose interest in the world due to mental tensions which cause neurological problems. Others lose interest due to a greater interest in peace and love and beauty within. I can see from your face that you are not from the second group. I see so much fear on your face. Somebody has probably mistreated you and this is what you are running away from. Just stay here for a while and you will be helped. I am sick of being controlled by things which happened so long ago. I want to be free and always be like a soft breeze. The nature of the breeze is to never stay in one place. She is always moving. If she moves in a garden of roses she is not attached to the circumstances that this is a very beautiful garden. She doesn't say I will stay here. Her nature is to keep flowing. The next place where she comes is some garbage where the pigs are eating. She just keeps on flowing, neither rejecting nor accepting, neither attached nor detached. This is her nature. This nature will help all of us to be free. It is not to be attached or detached to anything that comes in front of you. Just keep on flowing. Now the trouble is, we have attached ourselves to one place. That place is relationship, especially with your own body. You so much like your own body, but this is not the nature of the breeze therefore everybody suffers. You say, this is a beautiful body and personality, I want to stay in this body always, then you identify with it. But this is not going to happen. Therefore, you could have decided for one particular place, one person, and education to make you happy, but you will not be happy. The happy one is the one who keeps on flowing and doesn't stay attached to one particular place or thing or person. This is why the breeze is always happy. Once there was a person who was trying to find a guru. He saw the breeze and said to her that she was his guru because she taught not to stay in one particular place. I will also behave like you and I bow down before you. Like this everything that you see is a teacher. Another time he saw a girl in her house whose future mother and father-in-law stopped in to visit. Since her parents were not there, she had to cook for them. They were very poor and had hardly any food, but she didn't want them to know this. As she started to husk the patty her bangles started to tingle. 
Since she was very wise, she knew that the guests would know that she was pounding the patty, a sure sign of poverty in India. Though she removed all but one bangle from each wrist, and thus, there was no more sound. The man searching for the Kuru saw all this and learned from her that you have to stay alone to be happy. Unless you keep yourself to yourself, you will be wasting time tingling with others. You have to be close to be with your own self. Like this, whatever he saw he accepted as his guru. Earth also taught him. You can do anything and she won't mind. You can pollute her or put flowers on her and she's the same. He accepts everything and so he said that, this mother earth is my guru. Like this you can have teaching from anything, if you really want to learn. The purpose of the story is this, don't keep the company of that which will spoil you and waste your time. You must take some time to be alone and unattached. For now until you serve your guests, until you are free, you must be quiet alone. Find some moments for yourself and don't always live in society, society meaning that which wastes your time. It will be enough teaching for you, learn from everything. Papaji, please guide me through the burning forest of Samsara and never let my mind deviate from the service to the truth. If you are feeling that this whole forest is burning only then will the truth be easily available to you. First you must find that you are suffering from samsara which is like a wild fire in the forest. When you feel this you must give up everything and find peace. This is the right time the right moment. If you miss it you have forever missed it. Didanya said this as well. When the right moment comes don't wait when the idea comes that you must realize the truth you must leave everything. This is what he did. Don't wait leave the kingdom. This idea may not come again in your life and again, you will have to go through the never-ending cycle of the 8.4 million species of life. Though decide, I must realize this love in this lifetime and this year today. This must be your decision. I will not return back until I find peace. This peace will not be available until your whole environment is burning. If samsara isn't bothering you something is wrong. But if it's troubling you then reject the whole thing. This is how even the kings have done it. I've had a very good life but it is not fulfilling. I am fed up and I want to end all desires all mirage. I don't even want the water. This is a very good vow to take. You don't want reality and you don't want mirage. This is quite enough. Only when you have no concern with reality or illusion will you be able to sleep and rest. Self has brought me here to see self in your form. Why can't I give up the illusion? Why does mind continue to argue? Why won't it let me go home? I am tired miserable and fed up. Very good. This is the resolve that one has to make. The mind will argue for some time and then keep quiet. If the mind is there, let it be there, it has no power. Don't hesitate to allow the mind to be near you. Why are you afraid of the mind? Mind is only a name, like a ghost. It never existed. It was only your desire, only then the mind comes and functions. I want this and there is mind. Mind is only in the doubts and desires. Only then do you need mind. Now the trick of the mind is over. Now if the mind comes to you, it will be your slave, your servant to look after your body requirements, not to command you to do this or that and trouble you. It will become like a slave. You are not to think of anything, it will serve you. But if you do not know that it is a servant, then you will suffer. Tell the mind that if it wants to stay with you it must act to your commands and look after you. Then the tables will turn and when this happens everything will change. Your face and body will change. You get a glimpse of the moment when the mind is not playing with you. When no mind is there your face is very beautiful, but when you have a desire then you are not happy, and you have no peace at all. Okay, cello. Do I need to release all these problems and worries before I can go to God? You can't release first and then go. You have to shine first and then things will be released. Go straight and everything will be released. Go straight home and everything will be taken care of for you. 
Don't keep it in your mind that you have to get rid of this thing and that thing. It will not be possible and you will have to spend a lot of lives trying. Straight away keep only this in your mind, I have to be free. Otherwise, there are too many things to handle and this life is too short to look after them all. Time is coming. You have to hurry up and reach home. When you have only this freedom in your mind, everything will be released because your mind is no mind now. Don't keep anything else. Love yourself. Freedom requires you to leave the things you love. It is a fierce price to pay, but worth it. Can this object which loves you love you forever? Will it go to sleep with you? It is only with you in dream and waking states. Even when you die, your body will not accompany you. So always love that which will always be with you, and find it now with discrimination. Keep company with your beloved. Holiness, innocence and purity. Truth exalts a holy person so you must be so beautiful and pure and faultless. You are holy when the vasanas are removed and when there is no thought. You are worthy when you are holy. But worthiness alone will not do. You must find the one who is worthy and be free from worthiness and unworthiness. As the dead cannot say, I am dead, so the worthy cannot say, I am worthy. Stillness is absolutely necessary. Is an inward turned mind, turned inward of all senses, thoughts and concepts, and this is a free mind. Keep quiet. Mind going out to pleasure is samsara, mind in samsara, is the cycle of birth, suffering and death. External purification is important, environment, association, body and mind. Internal purification is the burning desire for freedom. A sapphic pure harmonious mind leads to inquiry, and so a pure dharmic life and diet are recommended. Inquiry cannot arise in a mind disturbed by tamas and rajas. A raja's active mind jeeds to anger and sadhana. It is a monkey mind and will not see its nature. Tama's dull lethargic mind leads to sleep doubt and fear. The dull mind does not listen to the teacher. If you are not otherwise occupied then one word from the teacher is enough. This is the sattvic mind. Burning desire for freedom, constant meditation, inquiry, and giving up pleasures. Be quiet, do not think, make no effort. Those who are holy will attain truth. Holiness is the main condition. I have a strong desire to have a holy nature. This holy nature is a must for those who want to be free. You have to be holy because it reveals to a holy person and not to anyone else who desires other things. Holiness is falling in love with your own self. This is devotion, and it is not different from love. What you love you are devoted to, and what you are devoted to you love. When this love has no object, and goes nowhere but to itself, it will reveal itself to you in whatever form you desire, manifest or unmanifest. If you desire this love don't try to love a particular person, because this love has no personality, no form and no name. God is this love. I want to thank you for the time you spent with me yesterday. Since then all my problems have been burned away like fog in the early morning sunlight. Excellent, I told you it would happen. These quick results mean that you are a very honest person. Only an honest person can do it because the truth exalts a holy person. A holy person enters into the heart of truth without any difficulty. Who is a holy person? Just shut your eyes and see, am I holy? Am I holy enough to touch the divine? There is no difference between the divine and the one who desires to see the divine. Any question I have now instantly disappears. This shows the mind is pure. So pure that it cannot entertain any doubt or question. Many people come with questions, but before they can ask them they forget all about them. This depends on the purity of the mind. When a man is pure-hearted God walks behind him to fulfill his every desire instantly and spontaneously. This is how it happens. To say as Jesus did, let thy will be done, you'll be very happy if you surrender to that will inside. 
I still feel something is not totally pure about me, and it keeps me from seeing the flame. I want to become transparent and disappear. You're pure, but when you feel that something is not pure you will not be able to see the flame. This impurity has to be attachment to somebody else, and that doesn't allow you to be pure. You are not to be attached to anyone if you want to see the flame in your own self. When you are attached to someone else you are seeing the flame beauty and love in someone else. You must first see your own beauty and then you will see the beauty in all beings. Transparency is having no thoughts in your mind then you will be transparent. So have no thought for just a little while. Don't think and you will become transparent. How to purify oneself and become beautiful. To become beautiful doesn't take any time. It is not the beauty of the skin. It is that beauty which the truth exalts. You can be beautiful by not keeping any thought in your mind. Keeping thought in your mind makes you ugly, not beautiful. When there is no thought the inner light shines through your pores making you and the entire world beautiful. When Buddha attained freedom he became so beautiful even physically. Now people use so many methods to become beautiful. In the 60s they even tried to make themselves beautiful by chemically changing their minds with LSD. But this beauty they found was temporary and the drugs spoiled their health. I met many of them including the famous ones. The beauty I speak of is inner beauty. When there is no thought you are beautiful. Why are so few people free? Why are there so few Buddhas? Because so few people want to be free of bondage strongly enough. I feel unworthy of freedom. Unworthiness will not allow you to be free. You have to prove yourself worthy of attainment because truth exalts a worthy person. Truth will come on its own accord and is always here. Truth has been with you ever since the world was born. You are not to achieve or attain it at a later date. It is already here. Avoid looking somewhere else and it will reveal itself. Avoid looking at your body. You are not Bodhisattva but Bod, I Sattva. The Bodhisattva is one who has no desire at all, even if they themselves voluntarily involve themselves in attachments. This is the climax of freedom. The free man doesn't care if he is attached or unattached. This is Bodhisattva. Papaji, I want to focus 100%. Mirabai focused on God 1. 100%. He focused so much that she could even play chess with Krishna, much to the dismay of the king and his sister who thought she was seeing another man. This self can manifest if you are innocent. He didn't know that he was just a statue. Though if you are focused on self, you will see that the self will manifest in whatever direction you want because it is the self which manifests in every form everywhere. You have to change the I, then you will know that everything that you see is a manifestation of yourself within. Though you be sure when you speak about 100% focusing. When you love freedom, love alone must be on your mind, heart, and activity. When you speak it speaks. When you hear it hears. Can you show me God? This is the question of questions. There are many questions, but this is the highest you could ask. I remember a story. It was the same quest and the same request. An eight-year-old girl came to me and asked me to show her God. I told her to go to school and tomorrow I will show you. Then tomorrow came and she said again, show me God. I told her that the driver was waiting to take her to school, you should go with him and then tomorrow I will show you. She said, every day you say tomorrow, but this day I am not going to school. You have to show me. I said okay, I will show you God in this little room, but to see God you must have something to give to him. What do you have to give? He will give him the chocolate that mama put in my lunch, she replied. I said, you give the chocolate and God will come. But where is God so that I can give him the chocolate? She questioned. Give the chocolate first, only then will God come. He will not come until your hand is extended, I told her. She was a child and she had no doubt and so she extended her hand. 
Then there was a lot of noise in the room and her mother came in and asked what happened. Mom, I gave the chocolate to God, and he took the whole thing and didn't give half to me. Though I slapped on his face. Can't you see him? I see him, Papa sees him. Her mother never agreed to what she said, and so the child made a drawing of what she saw which was the most beautiful picture of God I had ever seen. She would go out walking with me and meditating with me and would even tie a rope around my leg which she held while she slept so she would know if I left. What I want to tell you is that it is innocence. God is everywhere. Those who are not innocent cannot see him. Cleverness is not needed and will only get you into trouble. You need innocence. Then you can see God everywhere because he's everywhere. Why can't you see him? Because if you have a doubt you can't see him. The veil between you and God is only doubt that God cannot be seen and only could be seen after long penance in the caves of the Himalayas. Now itself, who do you see? I don't see anything. I told you not to doubt. I don't see is a doubt. Remove the doubt. Again tell me what do you see without the doubt. Don't is doubt. Again tell me. Don't keep doubt. What do you see? I see God. Faith and trust. I feel that I would like to be more receptive to your love and grace, but I lack trust. Can you help me? If you have no trust in me, you can't receive my teaching. You must have one, hundred percent trust in me. Then only will the teaching will find a way into your heart. This lack of trust is a neurosis which you developed because of the fights your parents had with each other while you were still in the womb. You were hit from both sides like a poor little tennis ball. Here though people love you. You are lucky to have come here so just surrender, surrender to the truth. Forget your old habits, your parents and your old relations. Now your relationship is here. Your sisters and brothers have received you so well here. This is your family now. Forget about your parents and even your country. Start from here. You are born from here. Just be quiet and you will receive a precious gift from the light hiding inside you. Don't worry about what has happened before. Always starting from this instant of time is the awakening to your responsibilities. Go now laughing and smiling even if the world goes on crying and convey this truth wordlessly. I have total trust in you. Where has this totality gone? Total trust is total trust, one, hundred percent. I will tell you of trust. I traveled all over India looking for a guru. I was in the army then and so I had a superiority complex. So I would find a teacher and ask them if they could show me God. Then all of the devotees would look at me and show me their long beards which they grew during their fifty years stay with that particular guru. They would say, we have searched unsuccessfully for years. How you expect to come in here with your shoes on and see God in a minute? Then they would push me out. What to do? But if you search for something so intensely that you won't even take food until you find it, then you will get what you want. So this story ends at the feet of Ramana Maharshi. I asked him, can you show me God? He said, no, God cannot be seen. He is not an object of senses which can be seen. I was amazed at this and wondered what he would say next. Then Bhagavan said, Ni non Bhagavan, you I God. You can't see God because you are God. How can you search for that which you are? At that moment, I had full trust that I am God and this trust didn't falter and still it stays. How can you say you have trust? You have mistrust. If you trusted, your eyes would shine and your face would shine and you will smell a fragrance. You have to trust what you are. What is there to mistrust? How can I trust? Find out who spoke these words. Again, I tell you, trust me and trust me totally. If you don't trust what I speak then you are in the wrong place. You've been a donkey for so many lifetimes so you won't understand this very easily. The donkeyness is in your genes and unless you meet a specialist who can change you at the genetic level you will not be free of this donkeyness. Will I ever be a lion? Will I ever have faith? 
No lion will ask another lion if she will ever be a lion. About faith I will tell you a story. One shivratri in Varanasi, I was with seven girls from different countries who had come from Rishikesh to celebrate it. So we went into the golden temple where no foreigners are allowed in. This was written in Hindi and so I didn't tell them, and we just walked in and saw all the gold donated by the king of Punjab. Not only did they see the temple, but the priest helped them to perform puja on the lingam and gave them prasad. As we walked out the people looked at the girls' faces, and when the girls asked me why I told them that the sign said that foreigners are not allowed, then they wanted to know why the priest had helped them so much. I told them that he was blind at that time. When we entered their faith blinded the eyes of everybody in the temple. Faith is very strong it can defeat anything. Good karma and ahimsa. A dharmic life is filled with right actions which bring good karma. This is important in the initial stages so that your mind is not disturbed by the consequences of adverse karma. It is due to karma that mind becomes sattvic and pure and pure mind is not different from freedom. The pure mind is always in meditation, the innocent will get it first. My path to freedom began 20 years ago with non-violence. Can you talk about harmlessness and health? Become the sky and you will not harm anyone. This is Ahimsa. Sky is emptiness. Sky protects everything and is a canopy above everything and even provides water to the earth. The first dharma of everybody who goes toward freedom is ahimsa, I will not harm anyone physically or even by thought. You have to be so clean internally and externally. Outside also you must be so clean. You must bathe, speak the truth, refrain from stealing and harming others. This is the foundation on which to stand if you want freedom. You must be pure in heart and also go through physical purification, and then stay in satsang after purification. You should wake up in the morning wash yourself, do some yoga, and meditate. These are the physical exercises. Internal purity is to not think bad about anyone. And if you think think for the good of everyone. The first sentence on your lips in the morning should be, Let all beings be happy, all beings of the earth all beings of heaven, all the beings of hell. Please, O oh God, give them happiness. This will change your face. I do this exactly, everything that you say. I don't think so, your face doesn't show it. You are like the butcher who loves the sheep, all the while looking at her ribs. He doesn't love the sheep, but is always wondering about how much meat he will get. This mind is like the butcher. Don't fall in love with the mind. When you say I do this, it is the mind which is speaking, touching your ribs and wondering how much meat he will get from you. That butcher is death Yama, who is after everyone and don't think he is compassionate. Sometimes we hurt people that we care about, and the result is a feeling of unworthiness which keeps the mind from freedom. Don't hurt any person by word, by action, and not even by thinking because this will rebound back to you and produce ten times the effect. If someone hurts you, you must forgive them and be compassionate toward them. Then you will get peace. Don't even think of hurting anyone. Not even a tree. You can't understand the language of a tree, but if you abuse if or pluck a leaf or flower, she will not be happy with you and can abuse you. Once I was in Karnataka on a coffee plantation staying high on a hill in a very nice wooden bungalow. In the morning I awoke and the planter said that he would go down the hill and have the cook prepare us breakfast and lunch. So, I went out and saw an orange tree full of oranges and I went to her and said, Good morning mother, you are so lucky, you are having so many children. I was appreciating her load of loose jacket oranges and I had no intention of eating any of them. As I was about to go down the hill, suddenly twelve oranges instantly fell to the ground. I looked around but there was no wind or bird. Then I conversed with the tree, which is possible if you have that much love. She told me that she was giving me this present and that I should take it. I could understand the language of the tree. I hugged and kissed the tree and took her gift of oranges. This is what I advise you to do. Do it and see what happens. 
I have had the experience of the universe being one. Due to your good stars this experience comes to you. It is not on account of your effort, but because God is loving you. Your karma of other lifetimes are bearing fruit. Otherwise it doesn't happen. But now my mind is coming up with the game, I am not good enough. Dirty things are coming into your view now. At least you can see them. The things which are not good for you are found on the surface. This is a good sign that you are knowing your weaknesses. Most people do not know this. They belong to the category of people who do not know that they do not know. You are above that. You know that you do not know, this is the seeker. Third category are those who know they know, this is the teacher who you must follow. What should I do about these doubts? Keep you outer environments clean, I will clean the inner environment. If there is garbage outside of your house, you will have a bad smell on the inside. So remove the outer garbage first and the inside will take care of itself. Outside environment is doubts, restlessness, suffering, brick biting about other people, hating people, not loving people. These are the outside things, the outside impurities. This you must clean yourself, and then you are ready for satsang, and it will be easy. Finish all your doubts once and for all. I have been sweeping all the shoes as you have told me to. Please help me. I surrender to you. Has the sweeping away of your ego worked or not? This is why this service of sweeping was given to you. So that your ego becomes so humble to sweep the floor and clean the shoes. This is a way adopted in India. Even very high people go to the front of the temples and take the dust from under the feet of the devotees and smear it on their forehead. The women don't even use a broom to clean, but use their saras so that they are sanctified by the dust from the devotees' feet. This is what they do in India and so I tried it on one western person, and that was you. Chapter Vichar Self-Inquiry Look within, approach with all devotion, stay as heart. Only adore yourself, worship yourself, and seek yourself, the rest will be taken care of. Avoid useless activities and pleasures. Simply keep quiet, this is Sahajabhav, the natural state. If you want to wake up, don't think and do not make effort. This is the only way. This may appear as wisdom with inquiry or as love by devotion, but both are the same. True, wisdom is the love of self. The supreme self, the dearest love, the source of joy, must be meditated on day and night whatever you are doing, if you want freedom now. Disregard everything else, see only that and all will be added to you. Only contemplate existence. This contemplation is to just be. Go straight to the light. There is no question of having time for this or not because it is that which is through all time. Your true nature is awareness, it cannot be practiced. If you do not know this awareness turns outward toward manifestation, and there is suffering. Turn your face inward toward the source of I. Then the reflection of self falls on the mind turned toward self, dissolving this mind into self. Turn toward the unmanifest, toward self and peace. You have the choice, for just an instant reject everything possible and you will find that in which all is. Then manifestation is the cosmic dance. Inquiry is the diamond, there is no other method. This is the direct assault on the arrogance of the mind. Simply say, I am self, I am not body and find out who has never come or gone, who is moving your thought. This inquiry is not witnessing, it is being. Witnessing creates subjects and objects. Being is the Satguru within, always meditate on that. Always concentrate on the omnipresent reality and be totally aware that you are this existence consciousness bliss. Inquiry is presence itself so question, who am I? This is the only question that doesn't lead to suffering because it is severing the ropes to body-mind arrogance. This is withdrawing the mind from its engagements and planting it in the garden of home. Inquiry is love with the self. This I thought is consciousness aware of consciousness, but what is aware of I? 
ask who am I and find out where is the foundation consciousness. Who is conscious of body consciousness? Your face will definitely someday become the food for worms. Inquire and find who it is who shines through this face. Make the most of now because death comes quickly. Don't move your mind be quiet. Cut the windows to the outside, remove all changes and look within to the changeless. Undress the concept of I, and jump into the ocean of existence consciousness bliss. Activate not even the thought of I. Activate no energy to even not activate, and incessantly spend time in this meditation. Acquire this new habit. Sit down and be quiet, and the revelation will rise from here. First experience that only then understanding will follow. Understanding is like reading a menu, but experience is eating the food. Though the revelation must enter the blissful heart, not the stupid arrogant head. Then identify as this revelation, identify as cosmic consciousness. Identifying with the absolute is meditation. Keep your spirits up and burn all impediments. Identify with the absolute. Truth is very simple, don't complicate it. You must be in the light to know the darkness, just be aware of yourself the light. Jump into the fire of knowledge and don't be concerned what will happen to your clothing of concepts and vasanas. This fire burns all. There is quietness. Quietness is not moving the mind for one second and seeing your face. Quietness is throwing away all becoming, all ideation, all intentions, all notions. Simply be quiet, be still, be still, be still. You are love and beauty itself. Keep quiet and you will know that you are the self in all beings. The Shar is true meditation, concentration on awareness. This awareness will reveal the truth of itself, no object and no subject. The decision only Atman is real is meditation. Do not direct your mind to the past or future, but let it stay here now without wavering and meditate. Meditate only on who is the meditator, only on who is meditated on. This is watching from where all arises from, this is returning home to what you are. Meditation means to make no effort, to not stir a thought. It is not an act of searching because a search only loses it. Meditation is to effortlessly turn the mind toward that energy which energizes mind. This meditation melts into the identification with self being oneness. You are always in this meditation, always in Sahaja. True meditation is freedom and this is staying in the source of the meditator. Anything else is just a form of concentration. True meditation does not begin and does not end. In fact, the true art of meditation is to always meditate. There is no place to arrive, there is nothing to do. Meditation is to simply stay at home as being. Time and meditation do not go together. As meditation destroys time, keeping the concept of time destroys meditation, even the thought, I must meditate disturbs meditation like a stone disturbs a still lake. Vichar is a special sight. You don't see through the eyes, you see through the self. It is the self who sees the self. Even with closed eyes you can see where your eyes are and so, which is this sight that you know by. This you must do. Look to where the eyesight comes from. This reservoir is full of sight. Look behind the eyes. If you look forward you will see objects, if you look behind you will see subject, the seer. It is the source of everything, the source of love and beauty. Vichar should continue every moment of your life naturally like the act of breathing, until your last breath. As my master says, inquire until there is no one left to inquire. The habits of the mind are very hard to break and so it must be continued. You have been ignorant for years, so when you know the truth you must stay as such for some time. What else is important? You have to be very strong. Question the mind unceasingly. Decide to never return to stupidness. Once you are in silence, stay silent to silence. Directed inquiry. Questioner, I don't know where to begin in being silent. Can you give me some advice? 
Answer from Pap IG. The silence that I speak about is neither meditating nor sitting quiet. The silence that I speak about has nothing to do with meditation or talking or not talking because then your mind is still running about here and there and everywhere. What I mean by silence is that there should be no thought rising from your mind. No thought rising from your mind is silence. I can understand that, but I feel that I have to do something. No, you are not to do anything. Simply see that no thought rises from your mind. It is not doing anything, it is just keeping quiet and watching the mind. That you have not done. So just do it now today or tomorrow. Before you leave luck now you must complete this. Look at the thought, try it now. Look at the thought that doesn't belong to the past or future. Which thought is rising? That I am sitting here before you looking at you. This is not the thought, but what your eyes are seeing. Even the thought I am looking at you has arisen from somewhere as a thought. Where is this I rising from which is looking at me? This is what I mean. I don't know. Then try to find out. Ten more time and see where this I arises from. Don't make any effort. You don't need any to locate the I and you don't need any thinking either. Just keep still and find out where the I rises from. I want to sit Bera at your feet and ask you one more small question. What is freedom? How to get it and how to stay free? Freedom is when there is no worry, no doubt, no unhappiness, and no fear. Get it by simply sitting here and not by climbing mountains. Simply sit here and don't think of anything, this is all. Stay here by keeping quiet, doubtless and fearless. I want to merge with the source. A source of light and life is brighter than a million suns. When you want to be it itself, it will burst and instantly end all your desires and suffering. Simply look at it. Don't question but dissolve in the light. They be on thought and mind where the sun, moon and stars do not rise. This is Krishna's abode that he speaks of in the Gita. You need only absolute one, hundred percent total watchfulness. When something is going on you must be totally alert to observe what is in front of you, then it happens at once. The two swords cannot be kept in the same sheath. You can't have all your old habits along with the question of inquiring who you are. The only one at a time. The other one you have been trying for millions of years. It takes millions of incarnations to attain the human birth and you have played very well. Now jump a little higher into your own self and discard everything else. Discarding doesn't mean that you run away from life, but means that you pay attention only to who you are. Then you can live with everything peacefully because everything comes out of that. Then you will know that what you call reality is not reality. But you have to have this experience first. Find out who you are, what is real, and what is not real. Then you will know that everything is that itself. Where else could it come from? Where does the whole of samsara, all animals and planets, all concepts, trees and birds come from? There is only one source, return to it, merge with it. Know what it is and everything is it itself. There is no difference between you and what you call other. Know this and you will speak to all beings every rock, tree and animal at the same time because time does not exist here. Time is a concept, past, present and future is only a concept. So to know reality just spend one instant out of time and find what all this phenomena is. Question to yourself be one, hundred percent watchful and you will know the answer, the source. I try to question and be watchful but my mind is like a roller coaster. Is there anything that I can do with it? There is so much fear and anxiety even at the physical level which is in my body all the time from these thoughts. I have tried for decades to solve this and have read hundreds of spiritual books, but to no avail. Okay, pick up any one of these thoughts out of the cloud of thoughts that are troubling you this very instant and tell me what it is. Mind is thought so in this way we will work on your mind. Aye. Very good. That's enough, we will work on this thought I which is related to the entire manifestation, which is mind only. 
Stay with this eye for a while. Look at this eye and tell me where it rises from. Dive into this eye. Find what is earlier and even more present than this eye. As a wave rises from the ocean and becomes an individual name and form, what ocean does this eye rise from? From nothing. Now you are at the source of I, which is nothing, nothingness. In this there is no more I, and when there is no more I, there is no more mind. Where there is no mind there is no manifestation. In this nothingness what do you see? Don't cling to the past. This nothingness means no limitations, no time, no mind, no state. As nothingness what do you see? What is there? What it is? Know there, know here just what it is. What it is you will not find in any book. Most of these books will just inflate your ego with pride in knowing things that are not even worth knowing. Though throw everything away, all your notions of mind, ego and body. Get rid of any ideation and tell me what is left. Look into it by itself. Don't go with any intention, not even the intention to find an answer. You have fired the bullet so now let it find its target. You are the target and the bullet cannot return to the muzzle. So find this out. What is rising from this nothingness and how does it feel? It feels good, but I feel that there are thoughts waiting on the outside of this nothing wanting to come in and disturb it. Look at them from the inside. These are just dogs on the outside. These dogs are your old friends just wanting to come back and kiss you but a kiss from one of these dogs is a bite. So look at these dogs and you are separate from them. You are not a dog. Look very carefully at the dogs and tell me where they are. I just realized that there is one dog that I always let in. It is the dog I am not supposed to do this. I am not supposed to be without worrying. Find the owner of this dog. The owner is the I. I is also a dog. They eat nothingness as nothingness and tell me what remains now. What remains is the temptation to listen to the dog of fear which wants me to leave this emptiness. Okay. You have to rise from nothingness in order to leave nothingness right? You step up from nothingness and move your foot through nothingness and then plant your foot down. Where is this that your foot has landed as you step out of nothingness? The step out is just thought arising. So these steps are thoughts. What are these steps stepping from, stepping through, and where do these steps land? If you step from nothingness where will you land, where will you put the next step? What is behind you and what is in front of you? What are on the flanks? What is above and below your step? This nothingness is no demarcations, no limitations, no notions, no ideations. It is totally complete and perfect and yet we call it nothing because it is nothing that you can think about. Though try to step out of this nothingness, much less run out of it. Go ahead run out of this nothingness. Tell me how you do this. I grab a thought. Though you are in the ocean of nothingness. Within this ocean if you reach out and grab something what will it be? Will it be the Himalayas? Will it be a stone? No it will just be water. I get nothingness but then it goes away. Maybe I should. There is no should it is only water. What comes stays and goes is only water only nothingness. Any wave that rises from the water is water. Anything that rises from nothingness is nothingness. It was nothingness and it is nothingness and this is what you are. They as such. They as nothingness. Now staying as nothingness, look around, observe and ask something. There is still a feeling left in the body like a residue. There is no body. But there are still sensations. These sensations are I. You call it a sensation, but it is really an I which is just a notion. Even the creation of the notion of a body is a notion, a concept. From the day you manifested, you were told that you were a child, and you believed this notion so much that you identify yourself as this. But you can do away with the notion, I am a child, a human with a body with the notion I am. 
Find out who all this belongs to. Find to whom this body and this mind and all these notions belong to. They belong to I. Yes, the Creator, all the gods, heavens, hells, and planets are all created by I only. Nothing can be created unless Thy is present first. Find where this notion of I is arising from now. Now you are in the waking state and eventually you will decide that you want to go to the sleep state. You will decide to get some peace and rest. So you start to reject everything. First you reject your city and friends and retreat to your house. Then you reject your family and your house and enter your bedroom. Then you reject the bedroom and go into your bed. Then you reject your spouse and enter your body. Next you reject your body and come into only your mind. Finally, you reject even your mind and the dogs and you are asleep in peace. Say that your sleeping time was 11 p.m. What did you do at 10.59.59 in order to go to sleep? What is going to happen in this one second? The dogs around you are the 59 minutes and 59 seconds. What are you going to do with them? Reject them. Right. 59th second is now finished and the dogs are gone. The 60th second is also gone. Now speak of the time after this. After this what is left in your hand? What is left of friends, manifestation, mind and body? It is all gone. Excellent. Everything is gone and who is left to know it? Nobody. You say that nobody is there in your sleep. Who is awake to know that nobody is there? What is this consciousness that is awake while you sleep which knows that nobody was there? Who is this consciousness that enjoys sleep? What is this now? It is just space. Space. Excellent. What is the difference between the space during the sleep state and the space in which the previous waking state and the next waking state are in? What is this space in which the dream states happen? How do all these spaces differ from each other? It seems that the same space is there in all the three states. The space is the same. Yes, the space is the same. Space in this hand is the same as the space in that hand and is the same as the space in everybody's hand. The hand may be different, but the space is the same. You are that space. You are the space in which the waking, sleeping and dream states are rising and falling in. You are that which is fully conscious even in the sleep state. All of these states and everything in them are projections on a clear and immaculate screen. You are this screen. The screen has no objects or subjects. This screen, this space is not the slightest bit concerned about subjectification, much less objectification, it just is. You are the screen, let the dogs bark, you cannot be affected. Let there be projections of storms and fires and romances and mournings and sufferings. The screen is not affected and that screen you are. Lefter, oh my God. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. This is your planet, walk on this planet. Laughter this you do not attain, you don't get this. All that has happened is that the notions have been removed, the dogs have left. Everything is a notion. If you know this you can live so well on this planet because then it is heaven. Everything is so beautiful. Everything is so beautiful and full of love if you understand this. You just have to understand this only. You are not to climb Mount Everest. It is here and it is now. It is here and now. This is meditation. Here starts the meditation which is not disturbed by anything not even by going into it or coming out of it because this meditation always was and always is. He takes a deep breath now your breath is free for the first time because now it is in perfect harmony with the mind. When mind and breath are in harmony there is peace and only with this peace can we enter into freedom. You are not to understand. Understanding is over. You are not to stand anywhere let alone understand. This this has always been so far away from me, but not now. Now it is within you as are all the planets and everything else. This is consciousness and everything is within this consciousness. This consciousness is your own self. 
it is within you as you and never away or out of you. When you say I, this is it. I is not the ego but everything. This will be the difference otherness is ego and trouble. The real I is everything consciousness is your own self. How is my mind so quiet now without effort? Is it only by grace? No mind is given by the grace of the Guru. Practices through the movement of the body and mind, how can you be at peace in all of this mental activity? No mind has no activities, no movements. This is achieved by no effort. Try this right now for one instant. If you have done practice then use this practice to keep quiet. Otherwise, don't activate your mind with practice if you want a quiet mind. Simply sit quiet with no effort. Can you make it very clear how I can attain perfect and uninterrupted peace and happiness? This question can be answered in just two words, keep quiet. This will not interrupt you. Don't disturb the mind. Simply sit quietly there from where you came. It will not interrupt you anymore. But when you are moving on and on endlessly following all of your desires then you cannot have peace in this life. So return from where you came and stay there. Try it and if you are not successful return to me tomorrow. I try to keep quiet. Today I woke up at 3 am and repeated the Gayatri. Then I started Atmavichar as follows. I took a few deep breaths to quiet the mind. Then. Who told you to have a deep breath to quiet the mind? I didn't tell you. When you speak of the mind you cannot quiet it. When you utter the word mind you cannot quiet it. Mind lives in the name itself, otherwise no one has ever seen it. So when you utter the word mind already it is involved, and so how can you quiet it? It is like holding the tail of the monkey so that it will sit quietly. Take hold of the tail of the monkey, and what will be the reaction of this monkey? It will turn and bite your finger. Monkey and mind are the same thing. Then I mentally and silently put forth the question who am I? And reject the body mind is not me. I have 100% conviction of this. When you reject body and mind what is left to speak about anything? If you say, I am not the body mind senses, ego or intellect what is left nothing and in this nothingness do you have to hold your deep breaths no i try to remain silent without effort and observe the observer see the seer when you don't make effort you are silent when you are silent there is no observer and nothing to observe and no observation in the quietness there is no observer or observed what you are talking about is intellectual gymnastics with no real experience. How can you see the seer? If you see the seer, it is an object to be seen. Nobody can see the seer because it is beyond subject and object. You can see only objects. The seer sees only objects and then only becomes the seer, but seer itself cannot be observed or seen. If the seer is seen it is an object. I mean that I try to remain vigilant and when thoughts arise, nip them in the bud. When you are vigilant no thought can arise. Be vigilant and tell me if you see any thought and if you can what is that thought. Just keep vigilant and no thought will come. And if there is no thought, no vigilance is needed because self is always alone. It doesn't need any object to watch. If the thoughts are strong then I am indifferent to them or I try to be. This is a good experience. If the thoughts are there and you are indifferent then it doesn't trouble you. If you stand outside of Satsang Bhavan many cars, people, and animals are crossing in front of you but you are indifferent and so you let them come and pass. Like this you have to be watchful and indifferent. If a thought is nice don't run after it. If it is not nice don't tell them to go away. In most cases people are slaves to their thoughts and run after their thoughts and are carried away, never to return. This is how the life of that stupid person is wasted after a travel of millions of years to get into the form of a human being. This form is not to be wasted in enjoyments of the senses. You have come for something else which is to know who you really are. 
If you do not solve this question you will rotate again and again like a roulette wheel, always in the hell of suffering. This body is a hell, and he who wears it is never happy, not even the kings or prime ministers who are always afraid of being shot. They have become something special and so have fear and thus need protection. We have come for a very different purpose. There are six billion people in the world. Why then are there only a few in satsang? They are unworthy. They have to suffer. Bhutan satsang is not so easy. Why have you been chosen to go to Lucknow? Lucknow was not even on the map until satsang started here and now it is even in the lonely planet. Now even tourists are coming and deciding not to go anywhere else. They have settled down permanently here. Did I wait for the direct experience to occur? No. Waiting means that it is not already here. Waiting for it is putting it to a future date and not having it now. What is not here now will never be your own fundamental nature. I do not tell you to wait for the future. Just tell me who you are right now. If you are not already what you are, you become something else, and if you become something else you will have to be lost. Therefore don't hanker after things which are not already here. So find out who is here now. Not in the past or future. What is present here now? Consciousness nothing. So if it is nothing why do you keep looking for tomorrow? It means your mind is running in the future. Mind means past. When mind works it does not stay in the present, but digs the grave of the past. There's no difference between past mind thought and time. They are all the same. Speaking of time you are speaking of the last minute, not of now. And this now must happen in satsang in the very first second that you sit here. It must happen, and if it does it is the grace of the Atman on you. If it doesn't happen in this second then you are rejected by the Atman. All those who are not happy, those who are not free, those who are not enlightened are rejected by the light itself. Who can save them? You must look to yourself right now. Don't postpone. This world is the result of postponement. Otherwise, where is the universe? You are just playing with things which are not eternal. Am I on the right track to the source? Do you have a doubt? You need a track to move from one place to another just as you needed a track to come from Malaysia to India. But in realizing the self, how many miles do you have to travel? To reach yourself which way will you go? Do you need an airplane or a train or a car? You don't need any vehicle because what you search is right now here. This you must understand now itself. Simply understand it and do not work for it. Understand that the self is eternal and always here. When you move from here to anywhere the self is not moving. Self is always within you when you move about. Self is the end, weller of the heart. It indwells the heart cave. It is not mobile and everything exists in it. This you must get right now, I am not to move, not to make effort, I am not to think about anything. Then it will reveal itself itself. How? By not making any effort. Do you follow what I mean? Don't make any effort. This how means that you want some way to get something else. How will I reach there? You need a map and so you ask how. These hows are used when you move from one place to another. You have been using maps for 35 million years, but now you are in Sat saying you are at the summit of the mountain. Don't wait for the map, you don't need it. What I am telling you, you won't hear in the ashrams because they have all become commercial. When two people meet there is some interest, some business, some commercialization. I have never seen people meeting for satsang, they only meet for commerce, only for money. Even with husbands and wives there is some interest. Where is the person who will speak without interest in the world? In satsang we are one family and have no interest in exploiting each other. We have for each other so much more love than for our countrymen, neighbors and parents and therefore we have settled down here. I want to be free. Will you please give me your advice? Perform surgery on your mind and find out what it contains. If you perform surgery on other objects, you will not be peaceful. 
Open your mind and find out what it contains, and like the surgeon don't think of anything else, concentrate only on that. Find out what the substance of the mind is. Find out what disease and tumor it has. Do it by looking at the mind. Mind is only thought, so look at the thought. Who looks at the thought is the eye thought, so you must perform surgery on the eye. Find out where she comes from. This is the advice that you want. You have to get into it with all your might, all your strength. Then, you will be successful. How can I be quiet to perform the surgery? I can tell from the eyes who can keep quiet. Some people have eyes like a monkey and some have a divine eye. Only the divine eye can keep quiet. This is the clue that I can give to you, stop your activity. This is called love and happiness and nirvana. They like this in satsang and outside also. Thank your stars that your mind even wanted to come to satsang. This is quite enough because mind attached to senses is trouble, but mind detached from senses is freedom. So in satsang watch where this mind runs, keep vigilant. It may take time because for millions of years mind has been controlling you, but now, it is your time. You have simply to be watchful and very vigilant of the activities of the mind. This will result in quietness and freedom. It is not difficult, simply watch, do not make effort and do not think. Keep vigilant and you will see that nothing will arise. This is the trick of how to keep the mind quiet and how to win freedom. This doesn't take time because freedom is always here. You simply have to watch, where does mind arise from? Where does thought come from? What is the source of this thought? Dive together with this mind to its source from where it began. Then you will see that you have always been free and that everything has been a dream. Who has not found themselves as asleep? Who is not attached to the senses is awake. In this awake, waking, sleeping and dreaming do not appear. This is the Atman who is neither born nor dies and is that which cannot be understood. You are that itself. Thinking that you are bound or even bindable is nothing other than entertaining fear. Remove this fear in satsang. Know that you are free from death and birth because you were never born. Suffering is not real because it disappears in the sleep state and reappears in the waking and dream state. There is no suffering in the sleep state because there is no object, no subject and no mind. Where there is relationship there is suffering. Just do not touch the thought that I am the body. Just do not think and you will land in your own ultimate blissful nature. Time and mind are the same thing. Stop mind, and you will fall in love with your own blissful freedom. So keep quiet, do not think, and do not exert. How can I truly let go of the eye which disturbs the quietness? Every day in satsang you are told how to let go of the eye. Every day for the last three years we are only working on this thing, how to let go of the eye. When I rises it must rise from somewhere. From birth you have been using this word I, and surely it meant the body. I go there, I come here, I am suffering, I am dying. This I meant that it was body with name and form. If you let it go you will find the real I, your own consciousness. How to let it go? Find out where it rises from. Doesn't that entertain thy? Doesn't asking who is thy just create an I? No, find out where it rises from. When you find out where it rises from you are quiet and this is letting go of I. Do it. I see from your face that you have not understood yet. Find out where it is rising from. Give me the answer. Is it your glasses or your ear or foot or shirt or pants? Where does it rise from? It must rise from within you. It comes from ego. Ego is only body. Without a body there is no ego. Before birth there is no ego and after sixty years there will be no ego. So the ego has come when you come to know that I am the body. Then things start to belong to you and you belong to other people. This is called ego and this ego will not give you rest, peace or love. One day the ego will finish because when the body disappears the ego will disappear. 
it will be finished with this incarnation, but again it will come back because of all its unfulfilled desires. And so this ego will take an incarnation which will fulfill your desires in a given location and this will continue endlessly, for millions of years. To stop it ask the question, where does I arise from? And be vigilant and watchful. Your face is turned towards somewhere where it didn't turn before. It usually turns to persons, objects and places. But all of this you will lose one day and so find out what is eternal. How to do it? Find the source of I. Otherwise the senses are looking outside, but now look within and I am sure you will not see these three things, no person, no place and no object to which you are attached. This you must do for only one second, and during the second ask the next question. You are not to understand and you are not to lift a mountain or make any effort. You are not even to think. So how do I ask this question and not make any effort? That is the place where I am having trouble. Making effort means carrying two hundred pounds on your head from Indiranagar to Hazrat Ganj. But I do not give you any weight. I say just keep quiet and to keep quiet what effort is needed. To say something you need effort because you must go to the past and pick up something from your memory and so you need effort. To simply stay quiet and not to speak does not take any effort. I understand intellectually and I have been working with it for some time but it seems like even though there are glimpses of stillness and beingness there is no sustaining of this. You said you have been working for some time. I said do not work. Working for quite some time means past. Mind is past. Intellect is past. Everything is past including every word that you speak. Any relation belongs to the past, find out where this I is rising from. It is not that you are going to search somewhere else, simply see that no thought rises from within, because every thought belongs to the past. Can you think of something which is not the past? Can you speak to me something which has no relation with the past? No. Though you are advised for one moment not to think of the past, then you will be placed in some other domain which has not been mentioned. He smiles and sits in silence. This is the moment. I can see that this is the moment that you are missing. You are smiling because you have no connections to the past or the mind or the intellect or to the senses. That makes the difference. This is liberation from the cycle of coming and going for ages. When it is available so cheaply, why not strike a bargain? When you smiled, it is called a no-mind state. When there is no mind, you are happy. Even when you sleep, you do not carry your mind along to sleep with you, but leave the mind outside. Then you go to sleep and take rest. But if you take mind with you, then you cannot sleep. Mind means thinking about things of the past and that state you have already had from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Now you want rest which you do not have when the mind and intellect are working all day and so you go to sleep from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. What effort do you make to enter this place of peace and rest? You do not even utter the statement I want to go to sleep. Then you are in love and peace. This is how everybody can have peace always. Then bring this peace into 5.01 a.m. without making any effort and without holding on to time because when time is there you have mind. Tonight try to find out what happens after 11 p.m. Will you guide me in Atmavichar? The word Atmavichar means thinking entirely about your own Atman all the time and not anything else. So if you do this then what do you feel? Think entirely of the Atman inside who is conducting this Vichar. Don't think of the Vichar, but of the one from where the Vichar rises from. Where does the Vichar rise from and what is there? And who is asking this question? Ego is asking. Yes, this Vichar is from ego only. It is ego only which says that you have to do something or that you have to get something. But where does ego rise from? From the self. Though you are ego or self. Self. So from the self, like the ocean, let the wave rise, travel and fall. They are not other than the self, the ocean. If you are the self, let anything arise from it, and don't be concerned with it. 
I am the self. Am Atman. That's all. Self has no form. It is not the subject or the object. It is beyond everything, and if you become that it is already being, not becoming. You don't need any vikshar, any method, nor any chanting because I am self. This trust that I am self has to be there just as everybody has the trust I am ego. Everybody trusts the ego and not the self. It is so easy to be as you are and not to become something else and just get into trouble. You must have one, hundred percent trust that I am I am. I am self. Even in the Gita, it is said, Aham Atmagorekshar, or I am the Atman Ind, dwelling in the hearts of all beings. It is difficult to trust self. But you easily trust the ego. How long can this trust stay? Ego means I am the body, isn't it? How long can this trust stay? Can it be more than 80 or 90 years? Though you trust for 90 years and half of the time is gone and sleeping, and the rest is spent going to school and having a wife and producing children. This is your trust, and what is the result? When you trust you must trust something useful to you. Self always is, trust that. It is for those who attend satsang to have the complete trust. I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the object, I am not the senses, I am not the ego. Here begins satsang. First of all, you must get rid of things which do not last eternally. And what about restlessness? On the ground of restlessness is the rest which I spoke to you about. When you feel restlessness, there is rest somewhere else which shows up every second, but no one cares for it. In between someone checking out of a hotel and someone checking in, what is this? Empty. This is called rest. In between everything there is rest but no one takes care of it. What is the period between exhalation and inhalation? Rest. Yes, you cannot describe it and nobody knows it. But if you are aware of this it is called Atmavichar, or being the self alone. This doesn't take any effort if you remember that I am in between both thoughts, I am between both breaths in and out. It doesn't cost you anything. Just have the attention, I am that gap between the two. There no death or dissatisfaction can enter. No death or unhappiness can enter. This is simple guidance. Anybody can keep still, keep quiet and it won't make any difference, but it will be difficult to have the real experience of silence. The eye less silence? Why speak about any eyes? It can't be attained by effort. Just be quiet. To see that the mind is not going back to previous attachments takes effort, but what I speak about is to not make any effort, not even for silence. Just don't make any effort whatever it is. Don't make effort and then you will have this experience. I don't call it silence. Krishna told Arjuna how to control the mind and immediately after that Arjuna fought a war. He slaughtered nine divisions of armies within that and his silence was not disturbed. Krishna didn't tell him to keep quiet but told him to kill your own kinsmen which are your concepts. So do not give rise to any thought and do not make effort. Then you have won the war don't make any effort for one second and tell me, are you not still? By making effort you can't be happy so do not make any effort. All the distractions from this come from your old attachments. Once I did feel this peace while in a big ashram in Rishikesh. This you had due to your seriousness and not the ashram, you can have it anywhere. These ashrams where they speak of yoga and other things will only confuse you. I also went to that same ashram in 1942. There they speak about yoga and chanting, but not about Atmavikshar. Though in all the ashrams you just waste your life and waste your time. It is better to attend satsang where these things are clarified without a long period of stay. I don't see any outcome from any ashram. They just meditate and read books, and they do not keep quiet. They are always working day and night, and this work is not going to help you. So keep quiet. How? I will tell you. Do not make any effort. What harm will there be? The result of effort everybody knows. 
Just keep quiet and see the result of this in this instant of time. Then this instant of time will fall in love with you. It is not that you will fall in love with the peace, but peace will fall in love with you. If you don't feel peace, it is because this supreme peace has rejected you and you have no chance. You will have to wait for the next incarnation be a human or donkey. Make the most of this incarnation when it is so easy. I am trying and as long as there is a continual dose of enlightening stimulus like the reading of the Avatuta Gita, there are reactions and responses of quietness and a bam brahmas me, but once the stimulus is removed I fall flat. And brahmas me means I am Brahman, nine and every breath that you breathe is giving you this caution. Am brahmas me is a call which Atman itself is teaching you. Questions arise, where did I? arise from and where will I return to and so Koham arises. Koham, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? From the beginning a man wants to know the fundamental reality of his soul and to answer all the questions like where do I come from? And where do I return to? And what is all that is around me about? This is the sign of a man who is listening, though most people don't listen. So sit quiet and the answer to Kohem arises, you are that tat famacy. You are that. But first you must give rise to this question Kohem. Then the Atman tells you, you are that. Listening to that, holding on to that, then the devotee, the one who needs to be free, accepts that he is Brahman. This is how it will happen. I think it is good luck that you are falling flat as you say. You wanted to climb somewhere by the stairs of others, but you are not to climb anywhere. Remove all concepts that there are ladders and you will stand where you always have been standing, on the surface of the Mother Earth, and that is Ahem Brahmasmi. I don't want to identify with the mind. Can you help me to stop going into all these concepts, and this confusion? If you don't want to identify with the mind then you must know what the mind is. Look at the mind. You establish the identification with the mind. You provide what the mind wants. So first find out what the mind is and then you will see if you can identify with it or disidentify with it. You don't understand mind, but you can understand thought. So find where the thought rises from now itself. Try it now and tell me what happens. The thoughts come from nowhere. If something comes from nowhere how can it be anything? How can it be anything when it doesn't come from anywhere? Anything must come from somewhere. If it doesn't come from somewhere it is nothing at all. Though if thought comes from nowhere it must be nothing at all, because only nothing comes from nowhere. It's easy. He gets it I feel such a deep peace with you now. I don't know what more to ask of you, but I would be happy to hear any advice you have for me or just sit in silence with you. When you are here just sit quiet. You don't have to ask any question. If a question arises find out immediately where this question arises from. Then you will be able to sit quiet, for the source where the question arises from is where there is stillness, quietness and peace. Don't be led away by your questions because they all belong to the past, and they will just cause you to suffer. If you want to stay in peace find out where the question is just now arising. Look to that place which is before the rising question. Putting this into experience just now you will see how to sit in quietness. I love you. Please show me the moon. This is all I want to say. Very good. Which kind of moon do you want to see? The moon in the sky, everybody knows, isn't it? In the daytime you see the sun and in the night you see the moon. Everybody knows this so which kind of moon do you want to see? He looks into the master's eyes and remains silent okay, then I understand. The moon is within you. Freshness, sweetness, giving light even in the darkness. You have to look to this moon by yourself. Don't look outside to any other object. Everything is outside, even your body because whatever you can touch is outside. Reject everything which can be touched or seen or smelled. If you do this instantly you will see the moon. Do what I say, don't look at anything which can be seen, don't touch anything which can be touched, don't smell anything which can be smelled. 
then you will see what the moon is and what you are yourself. I am very happy that you are here at this young age. You must have come for some reason, something must have brought you here. I understand that all I can do is to keep quiet and turn inward, allowing grace to reveal itself. Turn your mind inwards and not outward toward objects. When the mind is turned inside then, there are no objects which it can get attached to. When you are successful at turning the mind inwards then, it will get lost like a wave disappearing into the ocean. At that time you don't think of any object person or idea. If this is done for one instant of time, it will reveal itself to you. During this instant don't make any effort and have no desire and don't be attached to any object. Then just wait for half an instant and you will see the result and your mission will be fulfilled. That's all. You can do it. How can I look inside and go back inside to the source? Is there a technique? The technique to return to your source is very simple. The outside attachments do not allow sitting still and meditating. So avoid, for some time, all outside attachments like you do when you sleep and have a very peaceful night. Practice this in the daytime. The instant in which you forget all your outside attachments will be the taste of tremendous love and happiness. Then slowly you will stop looking outside until the outside and inside are the same causing both to cease to exist. The difference between the outside and the inside of this house is just a two inch door. If there is no door there is no inside and outside. This door is mind. When mind goes to fulfill its desires it goes back to its outside and thus inside is also created. But when mind is quiet you are your own self because there is no mind. Then you will see that this happiness you never had before. Though you will love it, you will not know what has given you this peace of mind and bliss. If you stay in this atmosphere, you will forget the previous atmosphere, and you will merge into bliss and be bliss itself. This is a very easy technique. If I can find the door at is easy. This if is the door. If you don't use if what is going to happen? I will find the door. No. There is no door. There is no inside or outside. It is all this. Yes. It is all this. There are no more doubts and I am seeing the connection between a still mind and the self, but I am having a hard time keeping the mind quiet. When I am quiet though, there seems to be a foreign entity lurking in the background. Is this the self? Or is this a trick of the mind? All that you are saying are the tricks of the mind, because you have not understood what the mind is, and when you don't you are always in trouble by the mind. It will play tricks and appear as anything, and you will see it and think that it is reality. But everything that reflects in front of you as real is not real as Buddha found out in this very month of May. All are tricks of the mind, there is one thing you must do so as not to be tricked by the mind. Simply keep quiet and do not make effort. What you mention is making effort, but you are requested not to make any kind of effort and to keep quiet. If you ask me how to keep quiet, I will ask you not to think. If you ask me how not to think then, I will suggest that you find out where the thought arises from. Turn your face toward that. Do not look at the object of the mind, but to where the mind rises from. There is no difference between mind and thought. Mind is a bundle of thoughts and there is no difference between thought and I. When I rises thought rises, when thought rises senses arise, and when senses rise they produce objects of their respective senses. Eyes to see, nose to smell a flower, ears to hear music, tongue to taste and hands to touch. These are the objects that senses see, but senses and the objects are the same. When senses are there objects are there. Now return back slowly to where the senses arise from. They rise from mind. Objects senses mind. Where does the mind rise from? Ego. There is no difference between mind and ego. Where does the ego arise from? This means where does thy rise from? This you have not stated. Look toward the place where I rises from. Pick this up. 
When you do you will merge into that place where I arises and disappears, and that situation is yet undescribed by anyone, no teacher or preacher or religious book or sutra of the Buddha. You say to find the source of I and mind. How long should inquiry be continued? Inquiry should be continued walking, talking, sleeping, waking and dreaming until it becomes your nature. As you enter the source of this inquiry you are near the ocean. Continue this inquiry, and you will see that it is going on even in your sleep with no effort of yours. Most people think that inquiry should be started when you sit down to meditate and end when you get up. This is not the case. Rather, it has to be continued, as the thought of the one you are totally in love with continues in your mind. Inquiry has to be continued like the pain of a headache or toothache continues throughout the day, no matter what you are doing. This ache is continued without effort at the office or in speaking with people. Like this continue inquiry waking or sleeping or even when you are activating your mind. This inquiry must be continued like the act of breathing so it will be as natural as breath itself. When this happens when I discover it, it will be obvious right? I will mistake it for the mind, is that right? We who are speaking is being spoken from the head. But what I tell you is not to think. Thinking in head, there is no difference. What you describe is very intellectual. Otherwise, you would wear a very different face. Only those who know their real beauty have truly beautiful faces. The face of the beloved is so beautiful that even the senses cannot transcend there to describe the word beauty. The beauty that is usually referred to is only skin deep. The eyes that see the beauty of the beloved are very rare like Kabir and Chaitanya and Mira and after seeing that their eyes saw nothing else in the world. So the one who has seen it has been stolen by that beauty. They are dissolved into the beauty itself. I think that you have been smelt, but when you go to the beloved, he will pick up those who are unsmelt. The unsmelt flower must be offered to the beloved. The honeybee knows. The bee kisses the flower and nobody knows what it has stolen from the roses, and if one tastes it he cannot describe it. Does mine have to be destroyed totally for this to happen? Enlightenment is not possible until the mind is destroyed. Still, the mind by giving up those things which are most dear to you, because it is these things which will cause the disturbance. If your peace is being drained out, there must be something holding your mind. Still, the mind by discerning, whether it is real or unreal, whether it is permanent or transient, whether it is truly worthwhile or not. Even in the case of your beloved partner, the truth is that you love them for the sake of the self only. Still the mind by staying with the teacher and by constant meditation on the self. Joy also will destroy the mind but once you bury it don't dig it up again. You have to be rid of all objective attachments. Stillness of mind comes from giving up all attachments except that attachment to self. The problems come when you are attached to transient objects. So sleep to these transient objects, to the world and be awake to the self. Non-inquiry is samsara, being awake to the objects and asleep to the self. Inquiry is being awake to the self and asleep to the senses. Inquiry is freedom. Thoughts are like temporary clouds in front of the sun, even the I thought is a cloud. Be aware of the cloud that is mind itself. This mind is your desire of this and that. When you see that the thoughts, even the I thought, are just drifting like clouds then you will not be affected by them. When there is stillness of mind then mind is no more, then you are truly aware. In the middle of the night last night for a millisecond there was nothing. Is that it? Is that self? Then the mind came back. How could the mind come back in? Where was the mind in this emptiness? When there's nothing in your pocket, how many dollars can come out of this empty pocket? What can come from emptiness? Once the heart becomes still, once it becomes empty, it cannot come back again. So try again. Enter into emptiness and don't think about coming back. Then everything that you see will be in emptiness. Often I am just too lazy and seek after distractions instead. 
You are not lazy but you should be supremely lazy, which means you are too lazy to even think. If you think you are not lazy but very active, if you don't make use of the mind it will leave you. So either you become very lazy or very active. I just don't believe I can do it. Why not? You have to believe it. No I can do it I have to do it. If you are here the mind is not but if the mind is here then you are not. Now tell me who are you? Who are you? He smiles as she sits quietly and then says, when you asked me who are you? My mind suddenly stopped. There are no thoughts only happiness. I am surprised that it is possible. Yes no doubt it is possible. You should have no other thought but this who am I if you have any thought at all. This thought brings you to where there is no thought or concept, no person or object, to where there is only emptiness. This is your ultimate nature which is lost because you wanted to enjoy objects of the world which you have become attached to. Due to attachments you do not have the time to know your own true loving nature which will give you peace. Find this peace do as Kabir says, stay with this saint for just half a second, just half of the half second, just half of that and you will lose that which binds you. With the grace of the Guru you will know who you are. This grace is a fireball burning all your sins that you have collected. When all the sins are burned you are like a lotus as your heart and mind is opened. This is the time everybody has been waiting millions of years for. Don't waste any more time. Have it now. I want to know myself. Forget everything and you will know yourself. If you remember you will suffer, so forget everything. Dissolve the desire for everything and you will have everything. When a desire or a thought arises I have been asking, to whom does it arise? The answer is Tommy. And the next question is, why do you jump to the next question? Why don't you understand the first question? When you look within what do you see? Empty space. Who is looking at the empty space and what is seen? I don't know. When you look at thought and it disappears. You are that which is seen at the moment the thought disappears. It is like a river which is limited by two banks. Water limited by two banks is a river, but when the water meets the ocean it loses its riverness and becomes ocean. The river is lost and becomes ocean. This is what is meant by this inquiry. Do it once and not as a repetitive process. Ask wait find out and become that itself. Don't inquire about others. Who are you? Or what is that? Who am I? Is the first question to be asked. After this explanation there is nobody left to ask questions. You are consciousness and you can't become unconsciousness. Do not think but act spontaneously without the mind. Stay as you are and don't think about what will happen. Have no fear and no doubts will arise. I want to laugh without understanding the joke. Then know that someone who is laughing within your heart. You only have to hear this laugh and this will be the last experience because you will find who is always in bliss happiness and in love. Someone is hearing and looking at what is going on. Who is laughing in your heart? Who brought you here? What is the purpose of your coming here? I have a question regarding self-defeating reactions to people's actions. Are you saying that instead of investigating a particular unpleasant reaction, I should just accept it as a consequence of ego? It seems to me that by investigating the ego we could make our lives better. Whatever you investigate, it is only through ego that you do so. All investigation comes from ego and not from anywhere else. Therefore, if you ask for my advice, simply keep quiet and do not start any investigation. After all, what can you do to investigate a 12 billion year old world? How can you understand it? You are here for 100 years maximum. What is your contribution to this 12 billion year old world? Simply keep quiet. Let things happen in front of you, and enjoy this universe which is offered to you. Don't make any effort and don't even think, and you will know who you are. Don't think of the past or the future and within this you will find what you never have found before. 
but few people do this and instead waste their lives in practice which only expands their ego as they boast of all the ways that they please the divine. Though simply be quiet, make no effort, and you will know who you are. This is what I have come here for. Find the unknowable before the eye. You have understood the purpose of your coming here. Your purpose is to be at peace, to love all beings, and to know who you are. This is the purpose of life. Slowly you will know this and get through. What is peace? The things with an open heart and you will see what peace, love, and beauty are and at that moment, you will forget everything. Have you heard of Saint Kabir? He says if you keep quiet for an instant, for half an instant, for even half of a half of an instant, then the whole world will run after you. That is the attraction that you will become if you keep quiet. You will be the most beautiful person in the whole universe and the universe will run after you to have peace of mind. You will become that and it is not difficult. Can you show me that? Can you show me that peace the self? Self lives in the heart behind a veil. You will see the self by slowly stepping in and not by knocking at the door. The Messias have told you to knock at the door and it will be open but they have been misunderstood because really there is no door. Proceed quietly and slowly, so quietly that even thinking is making too much noise. So don't think and you will be with the Beloved for the first time because the condition to see the Beloved is to be quiet. Now keep quiet and tell me if you do not see. I don't see. Then he shuts his eyes I said to keep quiet but you don't understand. You create the veil by shutting your eyes. Whose fault is this? Do not shut your eyes, keep them open, and do not take anybody else with you. You must go alone. This is very precious. Fear comes up when you say go alone. Fear comes because you do not want to go near your friend, your beloved. Touching that you will become immortal. Just looking at this nectar will make you immortal. This eye is poison. Don't take I with you go alone. Why take thy? It means fear separation body death. This eye is so troublesome so do not take it with you, go alone with it without you without he and without she. He smiles and stays silent now you understand, I can find out from your face. You have the taste of what I speak of. You have searched the corners of the universe, but the Beloved is always here, so you never knew the way. This is the way. I try to inquire and find who is inquiring, but I can't find him. Exactly. Very good. It is the one that you can't find. You have to find the one you can't find. No one has ever found it so give up the search. If you say that you cannot find it, that is okay, it doesn't matter, don't try to find it. Give up the search for the coat you are wearing. Suppose you have given up the search, what then is the result? You have to be very careful. It is a very good question, and now it is up to you to give me a reply. The one that you cannot find, let him go. Give up even this concept of search. If you have given up this search for one who cannot be found, where do you stand? I don't know. If you do not know, it does not matter, just keep quiet. Just keep quiet and this answer will show itself. You have to keep quiet and let the quietness speak to you. Stay where the river of thought begins and you are where the answer comes from. How can I be quiet? How can I be mindless and turn off this computer that works day and night? It is very simple and you can have it right now. Keep quiet, do not make effort to keep quiet and do not think. Do not let a thought stir in your mind because every thought is the graveyard. Can you think of anything that is not past? Think you must go to the graveyard, dig up a grave and find out what is in it. That means thought. There's no use in going to the graveyard. Just do not think and you are free. Just for one second do not think, and in that moment, that instant, that second, you will kiss freedom. The last breath of the waking state is inquiry then the first breath after sleeping will have the answer. Can I be enlightened now? This question you are asking to now? Ask this question to now and now will tell you how. Ask this question to now, not to the past or future, not even to the present. 
I am not making a joke. I am very serious sometimes. Direct your face to now and wait for the answer. Again, I will give you some tips. Don't make any effort when you ask this question and do not think. The question is gone. But how to make sure of this when I am no longer in front of you? Once you come in front of me, I will stay in front of you. I promise. This is my last satsang. Today I am leaving. If you are in a hurry to leave, it will not work. You have to stay and clarify things. It is like going to the supermarket, but leaving before you buy anything. It is a waste of time. You have to decide that I am going to a place with a definite reason, and you must decide that you are going to fulfill this reason and purpose. Only a few have decided this, and the rest have gone out to the fish market and not to this Eden Garden of Satsang. In this garden, you only have to spend one second or even one half a second. But if you are otherwise occupied, then a quarter second will do. You will get everything in this quarter of a second if you spend it entirely with me, with no ropes attached to the past. Again and again. I remind you, you are here for a definite purpose, and I am going to fulfill it, even if you don't want it. Even if you close your fist, I will, with my entire strength, open it up and place a kohen or diamond in it. Ramana Maharshi spent many years asking, "Who am I?" Before he was enlightened, do I have to do this? Are there levels of enlightenment? It is not correct that Ramana Maharshi asked this question many times. He asked it only once before coming to Tiruvannamalai. He was going to school from his home. On the way, he felt that he was dying, and this question arose: Who is dying? Who am I? And this lad, on his way to school, found the answer. He realized he was not the body, senses, mind, intellect, and even if these things die, that he would not. After that, he went to Arunachala and stayed there until his last breath in silence. That silence, he says, is the nature of everyone, and if they ask this question, they also will be silent. There are not levels of enlightenment, but there are levels in your approach, serious approach, moderate approach, and the third level is doing it in old age. When this boy found it, he went directly to the place of Lord Shiva and not back to his old circumstances. Levels are of decision only. These levels are for the ego, not enlightenment. The light is there, and if you only half open your eyes, you will not see the sun. The sun is always there and does not turn its back to the earth. The earth turns her back to the sun, and the result is night. There is no night or levels in the sun. There are no levels in consciousness. It is like the ego of the king, which kept him away from the purr. But when the ego is gone, he will immediately rush in. Your own light and wisdom waits for you, but you have been postponing it for a million years. Also, you don't need practice. In the ancient times, people would go to the caves and hide themselves like wolves. But you don't need a cave. You are a human being. You are here just for the question. So find the answer. Don't make any effort and do not think. Find the source of thought. So now it is time for you to find how serious you are. Intellectually, I am conscious of the source of thought. Simply sit quiet. Don't go out to the tavern. Don't race. Just sit quiet, and the bliss will come. Keep quiet and do not think, and there will be bliss. Otherwise, you will suffer. There is no other way. What do you lose if you do not think? When you sleep, you do not think, and what do you lose then? I want to lift the veil. I want to be free every moment. I want to dissolve the I into emptiness. I want to witness eternity. There is no witness of eternity. Who is the witness of this affair of eternity? Who is the witness? This concept of witness produces the witness. Though turn your face beyond the witness too. Who is aware that there is any witness? Then the witness will finish. That is called limitlessness and eternity. There is no word for eternity, no one to speak of any experience, and no time to accompany you. That silence cannot be experienced, and so you are not that which I speak about. Simply keep quiet and see that nothing rises from any quarter to disturb your silence. 
This is what I can speak about beyond the witness, silence alone. No waves in that ocean. I'm very grateful for your teaching and to sit in this silence with you, but still I have a question. Does it arise from this silence? It arises from my mind. Whose mind? Where is this mind from where it arises? You know the clothes that you are wearing, right? Now tell me where this mind is that you are wearing. It is just a feeling of my nest that arises there. It is there and so you must be here to know this. Deign this here and tell me where is body, mind, senses and manifestation. They home, not in the supermarket. It feels like it is just nothing. Let this question arise out of this nothingness and tell me what it is about. There is no question. You have found it. They here and there are no questions, no doubts, no sufferings, no troubles at all. Stay at home, this is your nature. Get rid of all notions because these transients are not your nature. You are free of all notions. Stay here as you are and you will not have any suffering. This is eternal love and beauty. But if you entertain notions, if you get attracted to following concepts you will be in trouble. The first notion is I am the body. This creates time, present, past and future and the never-ending cycle of birth and death. To so return home, here and now, you are not to do anything. It does not take time, not more than perhaps a second. In just one second you can find yourself, here and now. Don't postpone it. Look at this very moment, this very moment. This moment is your true face. In this moment there is no past or future. In this moment see what is eternal. In this moment what effort can you possibly make in order to be in this moment? I see that you see it now. Now you can feel it. You are peace and you are very beautiful and certainly you are not in trouble. Instantly you will feel within, without and everywhere. Now ask the question that you had a few minutes ago. I have totally forgotten what it could be and I have no idea of what could even be questioned. This is very good forgetfulness. Very few people forget the concepts that make them separate and bound. But if you forget these even the concept of death will not touch you. This is eternal love. Laughs and laughs come close and let me see the face of forgetfulness. Look within and you will find that there is no bondage because the concept of bondage is gone. Then, you will return to your own natural state whatever it is. Don't give this another name, because then you will just get another concept of liberation and freedom. Just let I am bound vanish and you will return home. There is no question of freedom just find from where the I, that thought that it was bound rises from. I need help with unlearning all my conditioning. You are very lucky because you are so beautifully placed in a human body with the desire for freedom and you are in satsang. When these three things arise something beautiful will happen. These three things this trinity is a sacred confluence. You have done very well. Now just keep quiet and find where your questions are rising from. You will get it because you have a mountain of merits in order to be in this confluence. You have done very well. Now just be quiet and wait for the other side to appear before you. Don't think and don't make any effort and it will appear before you. Just keep quiet and let it appear, whatever it is. It is enlightenment. I want to be enlightened. Where is this enlightenment and where are you? Who is it that wants enlightenment? Who is it that wants to be enlightened? Find this out. Which is this I that wants to be enlightened? Ego. Where is this ego arising from? It must be arising from somewhere, isn't it? We will see what we can do about this ego, but first let us see where it is rising from. Behind this you are not to think, mind you, just to see. It is just conditioning. Yes, it is conditioning. There must be the unconditioned from where the conditioning rises out of. Where does this concept of conditioning rise from? Find out where the notions of you and me and other arise from. You are not to think to find the answer and not to not think. It is here and now. Find out. Don't give rise to the I thought and tell me what is. What is before thy. 
Go to the point before you use I. It is like a huge land, like a vast empty desert. Now don't cling to I and stay as thus, stay as vast space. What do you see in this vast space? Light. Very good. Now reject this light and the space. No boundaries. Very good, no boundaries, no light, no space. All these concepts are over. This is the unconditioned, that without boundaries. It cannot be spoken of, because even words are gross boundaries, thoughts are boundaries, anything you take yourself to be is a boundary. Now speak from here. They hear without boundary notion, concepts or conditionings. Is there any first person? Is there any second person? Is there any third person? Are there any manifestations or gods or heavens? Laughs and cries there is a space and it keeps expanding. Go on expanding, be expansion itself. It just keeps on going. Everybody is touching everybody. All the colors of the rainbow are running together. For millions of years you have searched for this beauty in all directions, but you could not find the right place where you had lost it. Now you are expanding in all directions as it. Beautiful. This is beautiful. This is love and beauty. This is what you are. Always you are that. You can do whatever you want because it is your game, your play, your dance. Dance. Here, there is no death, no suffering, nothing trespasses in this. Words or mind cannot trespass into this. Nothing can touch it, nothing can pollute it. This is your place and this is what you are. There is no process or method needed to arrive here. There is no path or way which will lead you here. It is so vast that all of the universes are just in one small corner of it. Don't underestimate yourself. Give full value to what you are. It is the truth. It is always as you are. If there is peace in your mind, you will find peace with everybody. If your mind is agitated, you will find agitation everywhere. The first find peace within and you will see this inner peace reflected everywhere else. You are this peace. Your happiness find out. Where else will you find peace if not within you? Just keep quiet, do not stir a thought and you are free. Don't entertain any notions. If you do not entertain just one notion in particular, you will be free. This notion is I am the body. This is the notion that really troubles you and you go along and reconfirm it every minute of every day with all your relations with other bodies and objects. When this notion is no longer there you will be free. In this freedom you will see the whole cosmos and all the bodies are you and you are all these bodies. Nothing will change, a mountain will be a mountain and a river will be a river, but your viewpoint will change. So pick up the notion I am free and both notions will leave you. You are neither bound nor free. You just are what you are. Know this and all the notions will leave you. You are not the body or the mind or the intellect or the world. You are something else. Find out. What is this thing? Just keep quiet and see. Then it will unfold itself. It will reveal itself. First keep quiet. Questions about which are answered. There must be a tremendously strong effort and decision to not be washed away by the past and by thought, or the mind will slip back to impurity and mischief. There is nothing without the self-effort. This tremendous effort is easy because it is no effort. When the circumstances of the Vasanas arise, the dormant Vasanas will also arise. Though totally devote yourself to intense self-effort. Divine faith will help you so jump into the ocean and you will get help from within. I is the illusion destroyed by inquiry. Follow the I thought effortlessly always in whatever you do. Always look in the right direction. You only need a half step into that, a full step is an activity with a name. Just as a cloud can hide the sun, so the I thought can hide the self. So inquire and find the source of this thought. During this inquiry do not move any thought, not even the I thought. Give up your preoccupation with other things and you will see it. 
every day vigilantly check upon the trends of mind. What you think you will become, so do without thought, and you will return to the natural state. Then stay as such, unattached to thoughts. Vigilance is keeping aware of what enters the mind house. Do not fight with the arising thoughts, but simply watch them. Do not disturb your mind, and do not divide it. But even this watching is through mind, so then strike at the root of the illusion by inquiring, who is watching the thoughts. Otherwise a doer survives as a watcher and this is mind. In the same way, wanting to kill, the mind just creates a killer which can be only effort and movement, only mind itself. To simply keep quiet, simply keep quiet, simply keep quiet and make no effort. Don't even make the effort to carry the burden of the I thought. Unceasingly keep nothing. There is no better partner than this. Make friends with that which is not involved in activity, aspire for that which does not dwindle, not for transient paltry pleasures. Vigilance and watchfulness must be your habit. The rising thought is samsara, but seeing the thought rise is nirvana. This is a beautiful dance and romance. If it does not reveal itself, it is because you are concealing it with the eye, which you use to love the transient. Remove this ignorance, and the truth will reveal itself. This body and mind do not belong to you. Be wise and keep only what is yours. Don't run away from the beloved one, the unknown. Checking the outgoing tendencies to objects of attachments takes the illusoriness from the illusion. Withdraw these tendencies to deeply rooted objects and return back to the source. Be vigilant to watch all arise out of the silence and make no effort. Thought and other is boundary. Touch no boundary. Likes and dislikes are superimpositions. Look between them. Don't be enslaved to the engaged mind. If you face the past you are lost. If mind is really hungry give it the food of inquiry 24 hours a day and face yourself face love. Inquire who am I? Patiently, wisely, honestly inquire, turning your face awareness within. When you are face to face with self only keep quiet. This quietness is no mentation, not even stirring the I thought. This quietness is the peace of let there be peace. This quietness is the eternal abode. I have several questions which come from the mind again and again and seem to be needed to be asked, even though they come from the mind, and the source of mind is emptiness. You say that the source of mind is emptiness. Do you have this experience? You go from question to question to mind to source of mind. Are you traveling with it? If you have arrived at the destination where the train halts, as some trains from Lucknow go only to Delhi, like the Gumpti or Shat Abdi, do you stay there in the train? If you keep sitting in them, they will not move because they are at the destination. Like this the emptiness is the destination. Tell me what happened there. The train has halted, which means that the thought has halted. So are you sitting in the train or are you pushing the train farther? I think what happened. Angrily interrupting. Understand first. Don't waste time. You say that you have returned to emptiness, what do you see? Is there any search? What is there? Nothing Papa. Don't simply ask questions. Mind hides in questions. You must work with a question and be very serious as to what you want. Simply picking up questions from here and there is a waste of time. When you arrive in emptiness it is the destination and in this emptiness nothing ever existed including this person, then who is there? If you find the source of any question the question will suffocate. So remove but when and if. It is just that these questions come again and again. Emptiness ask me a question. Papaji, you say just keep quiet and if a thought arises watch it and then keep quiet after it goes. Yes, this is what I say, and what do you have to say about it? I understand what you are saying. Understanding is not needed, something more is needed. What will you understand if you are in New York, and I give you a map for you to get on a plane to Delhi, and in Delhi to get on another plane to Lucknow? 
This understanding is not enough. You have to get on board. The plane has to carry you. I have been doing this, Papa. You do not need doing. What will you do on board? Will you push the plane? Simply keep quiet. They even say this on the plane. Sit down and fasten your seat belts. That's all. Will you push the plane? Simply keep quiet, and by itself it will move, and someone will even bring you a tray of food. This is what it means. Don't make any effort. It is for the pilot to take you, and you cannot advise the pilot. You are not even allowed to go into the cockpit. Keeping quiet means to observe where the thoughts are rising from. There is observation, and this observation is translated into English. Who am I? Ask who am I inside the mind. This is also observation. Finding the source of I, or finding where the thought is arising, I don't think there is any difference. Simply observe. Keep vigilant. Don't make any effort. Even when I am quiet, there is still a sense of individual me. When you are quiet, you see that someone is quiet. This I has to be observed. Where does it rise from? Where does this personal individual I rise from? Look and tell me what do you see? This is a very good question, and it needs experience, not understanding. So when you look at the I, find where it rises from, and tell me what do you see? You will not see the observer or the observed. Concentrate on where the individuality of the individual I is rising from. What do you see? Nothing right now, but I do see that things are waiting to jump up. Again, you have to observe what is waiting to jump up. Again, the I again observe that. Do it. Quickly do it. But you say to observe effortlessly. I must use effort to remember to observe. Otherwise, I am lost in my thoughts again. See or knows what effort do you make? When you see something very close, you do not need effort. When you look at something far away, then you need effort. Now the question is: You are going to look for your own self, your own heart, your own beauty. It is just like searching for your own retina. What effort do you need to see your own retina? Impossible. Impossible. Yes, yes. Even the retina is away, and that is before the retina. This is what makes the retina able to see. Therefore, it is impossible to see it. Though I say, keep quiet. Don't look for it with your eyes. You can't see it. But through which your eye sees, and through which your mind understands, what will you do to see that through which you see and through which you think any thought? Just be conscious. What effort is needed? Within the ocean, you have to be a wave. Let the waves arise. They are still a part of the ocean. How far has the wave gone from the ocean when she arises? She is still a part of the ocean. When the ocean is there, there has to be waves. So, what other questions do you have? Because I won't speak earlier than what you ask for. In my Zen practice, I get quiet, but then a painful pressure arises in my head and my heart as I become more aware of all that is going on within and around me. But what about the observer in the Zen practice? I tell you to observe the observer. The observer has to be observed. Now I tell you to observe the observer. And what effort do you need to do this? And if you do it, what is the reward? And what are the consequences? To do this, turn your face within and let the observer become the object, and let the supreme consciousness look at this observer. Even if you try to understand. This understanding will not touch it. You will never understand this. Understanding will be a relationship between subject and object. What can you understand if you erase the object from your mind? What will you do? So, with any method of teaching, you are always dealing with the objects, and this will not give you any fruit. Therefore, I tell you, keep quiet, and it will be taken care of by itself. Only see that the thoughts are passing. And see where they come from and where they go. You remain a witness. Simply witness whatever happens. Be a witness. Any circumstances, good or bad, comes and goes. It does not stay. Just observe. A good circumstance comes, it stays, and then it goes. 
what does not come and does not go is the witness. When you take care of this, then this witness will be coming and going in front of someone else. Let the witness dance in front of something which has no name. This witness come and go as an object. And how to see the position? How to observe the observer? How to witness the witness? Just be consciousness. Yes, that is it. I remember a story of Saint Kabir. Kabir had just come out of his mud house and he saw two men fighting. Policemen came out and arrested them. One man says he has attacked me. And the other says the same thing. So both were sent to court, but the court cannot decide without a witness. Though the policeman said, only Kabir was there to witness this man chopping the hand of the other. Though Kabir was summoned to the court, and when he appeared the magistrate asked him, You were there? Yes, I was there, he said. What did you see? Who attacked who first? Asked the magistrate. He said, The one who has seen cannot speak. The one who speaks cannot see. What does this mean? The magistrate was baffled. What does it mean? The eyes have seen but they cannot speak. The tongue speaks but it cannot see. Though the eyes cannot speak as the witness. While the tongue is speaking, but it has not seen so it cannot be believed. Though the magistrate was very baffled and set free both of the people. Though you need a witness and you can't speak. Laughing I can't think either. Yes when you see, you become the witness. It is really a joke I tell you. I want no barriers I want to surrender to the self. I am not humble enough because of the ego. I ask you to light this candle from your source of light. You speak of ego and you have started to dissolve it even though everybody likes it. You have worked hard but this is massaging the ego. Everything that one does just massages the ego, inflates the ego. But this is not the way to be happy. To be happy is to do away with anything that endangers your peace. So, I tell everybody every day simply find out where the thought arises from. I will be happy if I will get this object or this person, so this is deception of the ego. Nobody is going to give you happiness in the world. Nobody will give you happiness. To be happy is to keep quiet. No relationship will give you happiness. No dear ones will give you happiness. They all suck your blood and when there is no blood they will not look at you. This is the way of the world. But if you are conscious in this life you have a chance to win freedom, for this purpose you came here. Finally you have come here as an intelligent human being with the good luck to come to satsang. You have all the good points, but what you have to do is clearly understand that when the ego raises its head you have to strike at its root and keep quiet. You are after it now, you are going to do it. Don't be disheartened. Simply watch what is happening and discriminate who is the one who will stand at your side eternally and not run away. Everybody will run away. Papaji, I had such an experience. It was so timeless there was cool silent bliss. Since I saw a glimpse of myself I have been in so much mental pain, so much I thought, so much unworthiness. You have to know that this mental chatter is not going to help you. Know that this unworthiness will not help you. Know that any thought that arises will not help you. Just go on doing this. And why do you use was timeless? Was is in time? Was means past? This is a good experience, why have you thrown it away? Why have you put it in the past? Why did you throw it into the river? You had a diamond in your hand, so why did you throw it in the river? Now you can't find it because it washed away. There is one river in India in Bihar the Padma River where people go to find rupees. They pay royalties to the government to have a 10 by 10 foot plot where they can dig. Maybe they find rupees at 10 feet or at 50 feet or further down, but they do it. One man paid the royalty and went to the river bed, and on his way he stubbed his toe on a rock. He looked at this rock and threw it into the river. A little further on he saw a man dancing I am rich, I am rich. I will have a wife in a palace, I have found a ruby. Upon seeing this man's ruby he realized that he had thrown a ruby into the river, 
but now it was hopelessly lost. Though having this beautiful experience how can you afford to lose it? You have gone for this purpose. You have paid royalty which means this life you have decided to find your own shanty, your own peace, your own love. If you don't use the word was what will you lose? Then it is presence. So how can you lose presence? Mine will always try to cheat you, but if you say this body mind is not mine, then you cheat the mind. But the mind was successful. Mind means thought, thought means I, isn't it? If you simply look at the eye, then it can't touch you. Do you follow or no? Simply look at the eye wherever and whenever it is. If you do not look at it, then it will attack you. My mind was absent. This is bad grammar, I tell you. Why use the word was? Mind means was, so why do you use a double was? When you say mind, it means past. One second is enough. The second has nothing to do with time, it is not one of sixty seconds. This second is an instant out of time. Don't look at the time. Don't use was and don't even use is, not even is. Do you understand? Not even is. If you don't use is, then you will find out who is who. While staying in Rishikesh, I heard about you from many people, and so I decided to come to luck now. When I first came to your satsang, I was surprised to hear how people write to you about their personal experiences because I thought that self-inquiry led you to the cessation of identification with thought and emotions. Yes, everyday people are writing about their experiences, this is no surprise. There must be an experience when you are seeing something new and fresh for the first time. Isn't there an experience the night after the wedding? But your eyes, your face, and your talk show that you have had no experience so far. You can find out from the face. Even your voice and body will show the state of experience because experience will change the whole being of a person, inside and out. Anyway, you are here now. Don't be surprised about what people are writing. Someday you too will have that taste. When your work is finished and the questions have vanished, this is the experience. It seems that you have not even inquired. Though you speak about inquiry you did not inquire. Otherwise, you would not have asked these questions. Can you tell me how to stop identifying with thought and emotions? Again by inquiry everything stops. If you make the inquiry who am I? Everything will stop. Just keep quiet stop your meditations and find the meditator. When you say keep quiet instantly my mind asks how. Here you are to do nothing. Simply keep quiet and if there is any problem just ask me. Don't do anything, don't think anything. For one instant don't do anything. All that one thinks must belong to the past and one does not benefit themselves by thinking of what is dead and in the graveyard. It is of no use therefore, do not let your mind go to the past. Mind means past. If something will happen it will happen just in this instant, not the past. Don't let your mind drift to the past thought, and then you will see that you are quiet. Everyone is always thinking of the past, and therefore, they are in trouble. So I advise you not to do it. My mind is like a stubborn goat which keeps butting its head against the wall, but between the thoughts there is peace. This space between two thoughts is another way to have freedom at once. The same is for between two breaths. In between the breath outside and the breath inside there is no time, and this happens sixteen times per minute. Every thought must come from this empty space. Where does your inhalation rise from? Nober. Yes, and it is the same for thought. This thought must come from emptiness. For thinking, you are not thinking and so if you go to that point from where all thoughts arise, that is how inquiry meets the same thing, but it is not explained. It has to be explained. Where does this inquiry come from? Emptiness. For thought before inquiry before breath. The I thought must disappear if I tell you it comes from nowhere, and you are that nowhere, and not the thought. This is what I tell you again and again. You have to honor this. You have to honor your origin from where you came. 
then you will find that you have never disappeared, you have been always here and all belongs to you. All you yourself is. You have just to understand this, not to practice. I do not believe in any practices. You have to feel I am that and this will not come by any practice. You do not have to practice to become yourself because you are already that. Though like this, this that has no limitations, no frontiers. This that is ever present, everlasting, so you have to be that, not become that. I have tried for years to be that by finding the meditator, but I can't find it. And don't find it then give up your search. If you are tired then give up your search and ask, what is there that I have been searching and could not find? Now don't look for anyone. Give up everything, meditations and searching and then tell me what is left. Papaji, I don't quite get it, I am not fully drenched yet, but I feel it is impending grace. Why do you put it to future? It means you are not quiet. Keeping quiet is the final experience and you don't need anything more. If there is something that you will do in the future, it means that you are not quiet. Quiet means inside quiet. Your mind has to be quiet, not your lips. So try always to keep quiet internally. If any thought arises then you are not quiet, so let no thought arise. No effort is needed to keep quiet. Don't make effort and don't allow any thought to be stirred from anywhere. This is called quietness. If you are successful you are finished, you have nothing more to do. He gives Papaji a drawing of a man hitting a cricket ball with his bat very hard. I have been playing cricket since my childhood and very much like this game. Even now I miss satsang sometimes to watch cricket. What is the significance? Always I keep a bat in my hands and if any ball, any ego comes I hit it. If I miss it I must go to the pavilion because the stumps were drawn and thrown away. But if I hit hard then the ego goes to the border of the field and I score a sixer. I have always scored sixers. Keep your bat ready and when any ball comes you hit it hard. This is a very good way to keep quiet. When any thought comes hit it hard and send it back to the pavilion. I always took the game this way. Always keep a bat in hand dreaming with the bat in hand, sleeping with the bat in hand, and awake with bat in hand. Therefore you can see me playing cricket. Is it possible to describe the process when the mind turns toward itself? Turn your mind and I will see what happens. Wherever it is now grooved or posted turn it from there, turn it from the object to where there is no object. Mind cannot be a mind unless there is an object. There is no meaning to bat if there is no ball. Turn your mind so that it does not touch any object, then what will happen? After turning your mind away from its objects, describe what is the situation of the mind. I can't turn it for you, you have to turn it yourself. You turn your mind every night when you sleep. When you turn your mind inward, how do you feel? Your mind is turned when you sleep. How do you explain this? You would show a different face if you would turn your mind. If you can describe something, your mind is still functioning, and it is not turned. When you turn your mind, there is no mind, no describer, no description, nothing to be described. This is after you turn your mind inward. Do it. Don't just speak about doing it. Inquiry is so simple. You can do it anywhere you like. You can do it in the home or office or in the market. Simply carry this thought always, try to understand. What is all this? Where does this world arise? Who is suffering? How to get rid of suffering? Inquire who am I? It doesn't take much effort to keep this on wherever you go. One day you will be advised to attend satsang and your inquiry will be over. Everyday people come here for a few hours, get benefited and go back to their countries. My energy has been rising for two nights now. Your allergy is rising now? Did you say energy or allergy? If you are happy with this energy, let it play, keep it up. If she is troublesome, then take care. I will explain to you how to make good use of this energy. I advise you to dam it and channel it. During the rainy season, the rivers can cause floods, so it is better to dam and channel it. 
These channels will be useful for everybody and for you. The channel is find out who am I do not let it freely flow. Then it is up to you to channel it. It will be under your control because you have damned it and it will go wherever you like. If you bring it to this piece you can channel it toward the heart and ask what is this channel good for. You only keep quiet. This is also energy. The best use of energy is this, keep quiet. It will take tremendous energy to keep quiet. When I ask this question who am I, I can't keep quiet. Doubts come up but I want peace. You are not quiet, and therefore, you have not asked this question. You have to ask this question to the mind itself. Ask this question to the source of this thought. First understand the question who am I, where does it come from? From the walls? From the books? Where does this who come from? Ask this question to this who. When you speak of not being quiet this itself is bringing you out of silence. Inquiry should bring you home. It should not bring you outward. Now ask the question, where does the who come from? Turn your face backward. Everyone's mind is working forward and therefore they are in trouble, but you have to work in the reverse. Go back in the reverse and find out where who rises from. I can't find the source. What is there before the who? There is nothing to do, just simply find out where this cup is rising from as this cup, he points to his water glass, rises from the table. So I say, where does this question arise from? I can't find it. Which is this I which cannot find it? My mind. Mind and I are the same thing. What is there before the mind? When L arises, it arises from somewhere. Where does it arise from? Where does the source of the ocean arise from? Like this, look below and find where the I rises from. I can't see. A seer is needed when you look out to an object, but I don't want you to touch the objects, I want you to turn back. Simply see the source of the eye, where does she arise from? You are in the habit of seeing objects, but this one that we speak about cannot be objectified because it is not an object. Reverse your mind to that which is not an object. Objects disappear and appear. Your body is an object that is not. I can't perceive it. It is before the eye, so of course I cannot perceive it. So don't touch this eye. I is mine thought. Don't touch it. Answer me but don't touch the eye. I can't. I said don't touch the eye. Keep this self-inquiry maintained constantly. You need not do it constantly. Only once you need to do it. It needs no repetition. Only find out who am I and you will get the answer now. Ask who am I and listen, don't think about it. Simply ask once and don't think about it and don't make any effort to find the answer. Do you follow what I say? Do not keep any thought in your mind even of this inquiry, which also is a thought, and don't make any effort. Wanting to keep up this inquiry's arrogance. Only ask once and the answer will reveal itself. You can't command or demand. Allow time for it to reveal itself to itself. It is not an object, nor is it the subject, so don't keep any object in your mind. Why do you force this happening, this revelation, this reality? Let it take care of you. You just surrender to this reality and keep quiet. Keep quiet and allow it to reveal itself. When you are not quiet, it will not reveal its revelation. It reveals, it does not show up. It is like being. Whatever it is. Being is revelation. You can't compel this being to do anything. When you are quiet, this being reveals itself. Its name is being, not had been, not would be, but being. I know that you say that no effort is needed, but I am so lazy I need effort just to start. It is always here, there is no starting. Even while sleeping you can do it. You are not to begin it, you are to be it 24 hours a day. It seems that I need effort to do what you have been talking about. What effort do you need to drop something? Any object which comes on your head simply shake off. When men had a one, hundred key of rock on his head in the hot summer heat. He went to a man and asked for help and the man said, 
Here you take ten ke of iron. Iron is better than rock. Though now it is one, hundred ten kaiji. Another man gave brass, it being better than iron, but now he has one, hundred twenty kaiji on his head. Though it is. Wherever you go they will load some weight on your head, on your mind. Who is the teacher who does not load any weight on your head? They all say, read this book and do this practice, and therefore, they just add to the burden of your mind. Don't accept a teacher who gives you any weight, any thought, any practice, and vipassana or upasana. Don't take him as a teacher. A teacher doesn't add any weight. Only preachers add weight. You must have been with a preacher before. To simply keep quiet. Before your birth you were quiet. After your death, you will be quiet so why don't you be quiet right now? True relaxation is keeping quiet. When you think there is suffering and you can't relax. When you are happy and relaxed you are not thinking. Your happiness does not come from the objects of your desires once you attain them. Happiness comes from the cessation of the desire for the object. When there is no more desire, there is no thought, and there is happiness. Most people don't even notice their thoughts and are washed away in the current of the river. Be vigilant. Whenever the thought comes watch it then there will be no thought. Only when you go through the routine of life without thinking will you really enjoy it. Whatever comes let come. Whatever goes let go. You simply keep watching. Meditation is when the mind is free and not holding thoughts. Let the thoughts come and go, but do not run after them. If you turn your head and watch someone walk down the street you are lost. Better to just let it go. This is the happy way of life. Let trains on the platform come and go and get into the one which is going your way. Don't make friends in the transit lounge, for they are not going where you are going and you will only be distracted. This world is a transit lounge of people and your mind is the transit lounge of thought, it is not your permanent home. So don't make friendships with these people who will disappear. Make friends with one who is traveling with you on the same flight. Make a friendship with that. I want to be happy and remain dancing, but I can't keep my mind and heart from fighting together. This fight is not possible because you can only fight with the mind, not with the heart. When heart is there there is no fight because there is no mind. You will only fight when you do not have any relation with your own self. And only the mind is the commander in chief of your armies of thought. To so look at the heart and try again. I try to look at heart, but I so easily get attacked and trapped by the functioning of the senses. I cannot stop the functioning of the mind enough to see just heart. The functioning of the senses is the observation of objects through one of the five senses. When the objects are seen by the senses who is aware of the senses? As you should have done. Who is aware of the senses? You can call it intellect. Intelligence or booty knows the function of the senses. Who is aware of the intellect? The mind is aware of the intellect that decides. Then come the senses and then the objects. Who is aware of the mind? Call it I. I is aware of the intellect. Intellect is aware of the mind. Mind is aware of the senses and senses are aware of the objects. Who is aware of thy? Now you are going back to no thoughtness, to silence, to peace, to the source. This is how to stop the functions of all things. Find where the energy is coming from. Find what is always at peace. Find what is never disturbed. How do you know that you are aware? How do you know thy is aware? You have to go even deeper than the I thought. What could be earlier than the I? Who decides that you are I? You are five steps behind the senses, and there nobody can go in a time. This is the source of peace your home, and this is also called freedom or consciousness. We can take another step back, even before consciousness. This is how to stop thought, go toward your own source and find out where you are going, where is your place. This will keep you quiet. Find who is beyond the senses, mind, intellect and I. Beyond I is consciousness. Always I ask myself, 
who am I to go beyond the mind and to find this consciousness, the heart? What do you mean by always? It is not like eating food every day. You have to ask only once and then find the answer. What does it mean if you are always asking the question but never getting the answer? If a student goes to the examination hall and writes the questions over and over for three hours, what marks will he get? You have to give the answer. Once only read the question and then spend the remaining time with the answer. This will give him success, whereas filling the whole page with questions will not. The、so、once this question is in your mind, find the answer. Only once you have to inquire who is inquiring. I always get the same answer. Laughing, that is because you are asking the same question. When you get the real answer, you will be in peace, and there will be nothing more needed. But Nisargadatta's guru told him to constantly attend to the sense of I am and to give attention to nothing else. I did this and got relief for a few moments. In his case, it wasn't for a few moments, but it was for his total life, his total being. Pay total attention to I am and nothing else. Leave everything behind and go with great love. Your attention was mixed with fears, and so your relief was only for a few moments. His attention was fixed by faith in his guru, and so his relief is permanent. There is a practice where you sit opposite of someone and keep asking each other, "Who are you? What do you think of it? You have to depend on nothing and nobody. This is the real experience. You don't need any aid." Everybody is spending their time with partners. Even animals do this. Though everybody does this for peace of mind, I have never seen anyone in peace as a result of it. Not even the kings. It is better to find out who you are when you sleep, and that changeless person will arise the next morning. Practice bringing this sleep state into the waking state. When others are awake, you sleep, and when others are sleeping, you stay awake. Others sleep with their desires of other bodies, but you sleep to that and decide to stay with yourself. Their sleep is your wakefulness, and their wakefulness is your sleep. That is the meaning. In the day from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., inquire who is happy to sleep. This inquiry will end at 10 p.m. Always continuously keep this inquiry while walking, talking, and working in the office or in the home. This inside inquiry must stay as such. Like you have a toothache, you should inquire. When you have a toothache, you always have a toothache, whether you are in the office, home, or speaking to people. You don't forget that you have a toothache. Like that, make this inquiry. I will do it. Very good. You must have heard of this practice from some ashram, and you believe them. Only when you don't believe what everybody else says can you question, "Who am I?" Only if you don't believe and don't trust what others say, will you go and find out for yourself. Don't believe me. Believe only yourself. Then what will happen? I don't know. Ah, yes, you do not know because this cannot be known. You see the joke now? It can't be known. You feel I am right. Will you help me get the joke right now? To test your rightness, I will ask you a question. Can you keep quiet for one second? This is my test for ripeness. Just for one second, do not think and do not make effort. If you can do this, you are perfectly ripe and deserve freedom just now. If you can't do this, then wait for the next cycle of transmigration. This you must tell me that you can spend one second with me, not thinking and not making any effort. If you can, I promise you peace. At Baiji, I think I need your Zen stick. I have a Zen stick. And I use it sometimes, like a saint once upon a time in China did. The king of China had heard that there was a master who gave instant enlightenment, and so he went to see him. This saint always lived in a boat, and so the king went there on his elephant, and had one leg planted on the bank of the river, and the other one about to be planted on the boat. At that moment, this Zen monk thrust an oar into the chest of the king, who then fell into the water. Of course, the king wanted some teaching, but when he was thrown into the water, his mind was blank, and he was very happy. And that was the teaching. Sometimes I use this teaching with the Zen stick, but usually I love people, though it takes more time. Therefore, if you don't understand in three days, I will use my Zen stick, which is hiding here. 
You have to decide and later on you will be called for a song. Who am I with all of these sensations and experiences? Who am I if this name and form is taken away? Identifications with the particulars have estranged me from the self. When I inquire who am I, I find prejudice, hopes and memories of associations. This is not right understanding. You have not understood the correct meaning of who am I, if you find memories when you practice who am I. Then you don't understand the practice, let alone the three words. What memory appears when you utter the word who? At this moment nothing. How about at the later moment? This is the next moment already. Again find out what is who. Now there is no time before was just an intellectual inquiry. Why speak of that moment when you are here? When born why speak of being a fetus? It is all gone all experiences are over, there is only space. The one word is over, and it brought you to all gone. Now utter the word am and what do you feel, what do you hold? Just presence. Though who was space, and am is presence. Now I is left. Simply speak I, only I, not I am so and so. What is the object or subject when you utter the word I? What do you feel? What do you touch? What do you see? He translated in Sanskrit is aham so if I, is confusing then use the word aham. In Sanskrit who am I, is koham. The answer to this is aham brahmasmi, I am that. So where are the memories in this? It is the Vedavakya and you can't dispute it. It is the experience of the Rishis 25,000 years ago. They came to this sentence. Inquiry started thousands of years ago. Though first understand the meaning, just the meaning, no practice is needed. This is what we speak about here, inquire into your own self. If you do not understand this I can repeat it again and again, simply speak, who am I, and then find the source of I. This is the meaning of inquiry. Kabir says, just throw away all thoughts of imaginary things and stand firm in that which you are. Friend, hope for the guest while you are still alive. Jump into the experience while you are still alive. Think and think while you are alive. What you call salvation belongs to the time after death. If you do not break your ropes while you are still alive, do you think that ghosts will do it after? The idea that the soul will join with the ecstatic just because the body is rotting is a fantasy. What is found now is found then. If you find nothing now you will simply end up with an apartment in the city of death. If you make love with the divine now, in the next life you will wear the face of satisfied desire. Though plunge into the truth find out who the teacher is. Believe in that great sound. When I am in your presence I do feel a certain peace. What do you mean by a certain peace? My mind becomes quiet and I am here, nowhere else. Then something else happens? Yes my mind takes over. Mine must have something to disturb it. Where is this disturbance? I know that I should be more vigilant of these disturbances, but isn't this vigilance a trick of the mind? This vigilance which you must have is not a trick of the mind. The trick of the mind is when you are not vigilant. Then the mind will play tricks. If you are really vigilant then, there is no mind to play tricks. I will tell you how to be vigilant. Now you are in sitting front of me. Now be vigilant of what is instantly in front of you in this present moment. Don't look to the past. Be vigilant of the present circumstances. This is quite enough to give you happiness. Be vigilant only of this moment. When this happening goes, don't cling to it. Clinging to past circumstances is the trouble with everybody. This is the cause of suffering and misery. What has happened cannot be brought back, so it is reasonable to not cling to it. Simply do not cling to past circumstances. Don't cling to the past. If you are wise you will see that there is no use in clinging to the past things which are over now. You have to understand this somehow. This is enough to lead a peaceful and beautiful life while you enjoy the circumstances offered to you by nature. 
All these disturbances and thoughts are like rats in the home of peace, so you have to be like a cat. The rats come because you forget that you are a cat. Be watchful of your thoughts like a cat is watchful of rats. Be vigilant of the thought and see where it rises from. Be watchful, watch where the thoughts are rising from. Now tell me what the current thought is. He laughs a very knowing laugh. This is the smile of the cat after it has eaten the rat. When there is no thought everything disappears and then you can laugh. This is now, this is not then. Do your job, be vigilant and watchful and tell me if a disturbing thought or any thought can arise. Like this be watchful and pounce on the rats that arise before you. Simply be watchful and don't do anything. I feel that I am proceeding step by step toward the experience of the self. Can you guide me more? Experience is not bound by any step or by no step, by any state or by no state. The mind must be still without carrying any person or object. Be careful. Don't let the mind run to concepts which will trick and disturb you, so be very careful. Look to where the mind runs. Do this without taking any steps. Just watch the mind's activity, where it goes, what it wants. Be careful day and night whether you are meditating or in the marketplace. That is the guidance that I have for you. Follow it and you will be peaceful and happy. I always ask who am I, but then I only face a blank wall and no answer comes. No answer will come. Who are you asking this question to? From whom do you expect an answer and what kind of a reply should you get? Are you expecting a fax? This is a question that you ask of your own self and you won't get a reply because you do not need one. It is not a question to be answered, it is being. Who am I, is answered in being. It am I self. That's all. You have made a decision to solve this question. You will be successful if you don't give up this decision wherever you go. It won't take long. I asked who am I. In the am I became I am. But who is stubborn? Where is the who in the am? Who is only in the question, not in the answer and so is finished in that I am. All worry and suffering is also finished. Simply be and that is all. Have faith in this I am which doesn't refer to any person. All beings are this, I am which is seated in the cavity of your heart. Will you give me the name of this I am? This I am has no name or form. It can't be touched or tasted, but to it you must give your heart and mind in devotion. Though I will give you the name Shyam, the blue-hued person. This blue is the blue of depth, like the ocean or the blue sky. The sky is not blue but due to its depth it appears so. The sky and ocean are formless and nameless and so Shyam, the color of depth, is your name from now on. Chayam is also attraction, the attraction of the divine, so don't be surprised if you start attracting this divine. You say enlightenment can occur in the snap of a finger. I am here only briefly so how can this happen? It will happen in no time, but you speak of briefly, which is in time. You are counting in time, so it will not work in a million years of snapping. There is no time in a finger snap and this is what is meant. Your mind is full of time. I have experienced peace and happiness through inquiry, but then the fear of the unknown comes and I experience doubt. How long does this peace last? Just minutes and then thought comes. Why do you give up this happiness, and what do you give it up for? Your decision to leave happiness is not a good one. Abide in peace. You have been disturbed for millions of years, why go back to this disturbance once you have found peace? Understand this. Discriminate between what gives you peace and what disturbs you. Whatever is better follow that. I can't find the seer which will give me peace, I can't. If you cannot find the seer, it is a good experience. You see through the glasses, but the glasses cannot see. See what is behind the glasses, what is behind the eyes. Who is enabling the seer to see? A dead man's eyes cannot see because the one who sees is no longer there. Again, try to see the seer. If I ask who is thinking, 
I experience more thoughts and sensations. How can I still the chattering distractions? How can I dissolve? Small breaks from the thoughts don't release me from my passions. It is not true. The break will release you. When do you say that it will not release you? During the break, during the space between the thoughts or after the space? After. And when it is after you always think of the future. Between the thoughts do you see the past or the future or the passions? Nothing. This is what we speak of. How can I make this space larger? You can make this space infinitely large because all of space comes from this space. You can make it larger by asking this question, how can I make it larger? While still in the space. During the space between thoughts if you ask this question, I will give you the right answer. Ask now. The man is absorbed by silence he is enjoying now. He is sucking the sweetness. He is very close to his beloved. He is one inch from the lips of his beloved. He is a young man so I must use metaphors like this because the classic metaphors from the Upanishads won't work on such a young man. Though jump and merge with the oneness and even this will finish. I am still enjoying this same sweetness. His throat chokes with love so much has come here. It is as easy as that but nobody watches it. Just watch this thing, go close. Go close and there is no past or future, no desire, no existence, no non-existence, no creation, and that is the end. Very nice, I am very happy with the young boys who get it. How can I switch off the watcher? I see so much darkness and often lose all clarity. When you see the darkness, you must be in the light in order to see the darkness. You can't see the darkness while in darkness. You are the seer of the darkness and the darkness is the object, so you must be the light. When you face away from the light, you see only your shadow, the darkness. Turn toward the light and you will see only light, not your shadow. Turn your back on the shadow and face the light. This is up to you now. If you see the illusion you are enlightened, but if you think that you are enlightened, you are in the illusion. So find out who sees the darkness. Who sees the darkness? To whom is darkness an object of sight? Find out now who sees the darkness. You must stay quiet to find this and do not make any effort. Keep still. Then there will be no darkness. Don't even stir a thought of the darkness in your mind. When I do inquiry I get such bad headaches. Can you give me some advice? If you feel a headache it must be that you are fighting with this inquiry, fighting to know who you are. Then only there is stress. Your headache is a result of effort. The right way to inquire is to simply ask who am I and where does this inquiry come from? Take this very lightly and not like you are about to cross over a mountain. Here you are not to go anywhere or to make any effort. Simply relax and look at what happens, and then discriminate where the I is living. First clarify your mind and find out where the I is. Once this is ascertained follow the path to where it is. Find out what vehicle you need to use to go there a car. A plane? You will find that you do not need to go anywhere to get to the I. Instead all that you have to do is stop all the movement of the mind and you are here. As you don't need a rickshaw in your house you don't need to go anywhere to find the eye. Inquiry removes tension, it doesn't give you tension. One part of my attention seems to watch stillness while another part struggles with thoughts causing the tension. This is a good practice, keep attention on your diamond and keep the thieves away from it, keep still and be aware of thought. If you keep aware you will not have any thought because no thought comes when you watch. When you do this you are naturally in awareness itself. I see that I have an intention to look inward to stillness, but you teach that there should be no intention. No tension, no intention, simply attention. No struggle between the in and the out, just stay relaxed and at ease. This I learned in the army, standing at attention and then at ease. Also pranayama helps, because you have to hold your breath when you aim and fire your rifle in order to be 10 for 10 on the range like I was. Speaking of the army, 
Tomorrow there will be tanks, modern weapons, and schoolgirls marching on Hazrat Ganj for Republic Day. Would you advise me to go to Ramanashram and inquire there? The grace is there as it is here so it doesn't matter. What matters is that you make the best of whatever circumstance that you are in. Your time must be utilized in a perfect way. Don't lag behind but have a strong decision that you will do it. As I love the caves of Arunachala, I want to enter the cave of the heart and stay there. This here and now is the cave of the heart. In the books they talk about the cave of the heart, and so you must have your ideas about it from there. Your desire to find this cave takes you out of it, out of the here and now. Then you lose the experience of the cave and search for this cave which never existed. Don't try to live in a cave because this cave is just a concept. You can only live in now. When you live in this, you will not have any desires for anything else. Likewise, you will only be in this when you give up all desires, even the desire to be in it. Give up all desires to stay here or there or anywhere and give up the desire for this and for that. Give up all desire. How can I give up all desires? By keeping quiet. It seems to me that if there is still an inner dialogue going on, then mind has only been suppressed and enlightenment cannot happen. The objects of the inner dialogues are only from the past, and so this chatter must be stopped, it must be controlled. This dialogue is only memory and it has to be controlled. I thought that self-realization had nothing to do with self-control. This self-control is with small s and refers to controlling the mind, the thoughts of the mind. Self-control is when your mind is not leaking anything perishable, when your mind touches nothing that fades. No clinging to the past, no thoughts, no expectations for any future. Keeping mind between past and future is mind control and this is your face. This is not so easy. People have been trying to do this for so long. Five thousand years ago Arjuna asked Krishna how to control the mind which is as difficult to grasp as air. Krishna said, by abhyasa, practice and varajya, non-attachment you will control the mind. Varajya is being non-attached to objects. Vyasa is bringing the mind back from its objects and establishing it in me. So sit quiet and watch the mind. You will want to go and enjoy the past experiences and enjoyments. Bring it back. If you are aware of the thief he will not steal from you, but if you are not aware then the thief will not let you be happy. It will loot the property of peace. This happens every day and we enjoy it. We actually make friends with the snake. Keep after this inner dialogue, and it will stop, if you have strong determination. All these objects of the mind, are only projections. Only when you stop the projecting will you be happy. When the projection is finished then only the screen is left. This screen is the same before, during, and after the projections. When mind stops there is no projection, this is the blissful state. What about all the spiritual practices that people use to reduce their uneasiness and increase their peace? Will this stop the projections? Various teachers and traditions speak of different things which may temporarily control the mind, but again it rises when you are out of this practice. These practices will not remove the uneasiness so quickly. But if you follow Krishna's advice, it will completely eradicate the uneasiness. Actually I don't give any exercise or practice because all practice is in time and is in mind. What I recommend is to simply stay quiet, don't make any effort. Stay quiet, don't make effort, don't think. This is all you have to do now. Do this now. I try to stay quiet but I don't feel relaxed. Give up the desire for relaxation and tell me what is left. I still slightly feel that I am bound. If you know you are bound you are no longer bound because by knowing the bondage you separate yourself from it, you objectify it. With this release the I that was bound pours into consciousness like a river pours into the ocean. He starts smiling and is unable to speak. Tell me what is left, your thirty-two teeth are telling me, why don't you? Your whole face and eyes are different. What is it? 
Is it energy? There is no difference between energy and intellect. Intellect is energy, so are the thoughts it controls. I want you to find out where this energy comes from to discriminate, then to think with the mind and then to act with the senses. Even the objects of the senses are energy only. Where does this fountain of energy come from? This comes from Atman's self. This is what is seen in the quietness. You are this self itself. This self is the unknown, the emptiness. All waves rise from this emptiness and are thus formulated and become intellect, mind, senses and objects. The only reason why people are not happy and peaceful is that they do not realize that they are Atman. Once you know this you can enjoy this samsara as an ocean enjoys its waves. I feel that I have experienced this but it is transient. The stillness comes and goes. This is not stillness. It is a concept of stillness that you provide to the mind. Like you provide attention to something beautiful, so you are providing this concept to your mind to enjoy. You see a flower and you call it beautiful. A goat will call the same flower food and eat it before your eyes. What is provided to the mind differs from person to person, and what includes differences is not it. A diamond is precious to a jeweler, but is concentrated carbon to a chemist. Though you choose what is given, and whenever there is a choice it cannot give you eternal rest. Eternal rest and peace is characterless. It can't be chosen because it is already always there. You can't find true peace so don't try to search for it. What is left when you give up searching? This seems so easy. It is easy. You complicate it. It is simple. Don't make any effort, stay quiet and the noisy surface dialogues will cease. Then the substratum will rise up to the top. It is simple. Follow this. Do you see it? I don't see anything. Yes. You are that anything. You are that seer which is consciousness, not the object to be seen. You are the witness who sees the activity. I try to find the source of thought, but I get so much resistance from my mind, even though I try very hard. You are not to try, and there is no difference between thought and mind. There is no thought without mind and no mind without thought. All this is the mind trying to survive. When a fish is dying, it is more active and so mind becomes very active in the last few minutes like a fish flopping out of the water. This fish has troubled you for so long so now feast on it. All you can do is not think and not try. Thinking brings you to the past which doesn't exist. Though not thinking is the only way to stay here in peace. In the night when you are in the sleep state, you are happy and at peace. But in the waking state you are thinking and so you end up suffering because mind is there. In deep sleep you are happy and you don't even know what this happiness is, you are simply happy without any reason. You know that you have been happy because when you awake your friends ask you how you slept, and you reply, I slept very well, I had no dreams. So you are happy, but you don't know where this happiness comes from. The happiness which is when there is no thought, the happiness you experience in the deep sleep state, the happiness which has no known source, is your own true nature. But if you think you will suffer, to sleep in the day and keep quiet in the night, this means simply, don't think. It means that most people are asleep to their true nature and awake to the world in order to carry out the actions which will fulfill their desires. Very few keep awake to themselves and asleep to the world. Let people execute their desire-based activities but you sleep. I am that is the waking to which most people sleep. It is so easy you see. I don't think I am the mind, I think I am that. I told you not to think. What is your experience then? Just for half of a second do not think. Do it now. Go no way and you will be in peace. You are not to make any attempt. This attempting is just the mind disturbing the mind. Don't make any attempt because peace is already there. Any attempt to find peace is throwing a stone into a calm lake. Peace is already here. You just disturb it by running outside. 
Don't make any effort for peace and what will you feel? When you don't make any attempt there is no mind, but when you try to make any attempt there rises the mind which is going to disturb you. Don't make any attempt. As I move toward no effort. What do you mean by moving toward no effort? What is this movement? Don't move. Is there a process to become silent? There is no process. To disturb your mind you need process, but to stay silent there is no process. Stay in satsang, stay quiet, always have love with your own self. You are not to win it by any attempt or effort. Simply stay quiet. If any thought rises, simply find out where it came from. Now I only think of not thinking. This of course, is also thinking. Find out where the thought of not thinking arises from. Stay in satsang and don't miss the golden opportunity which is looking into your eyes. Merge with that so that it becomes complete identification. What is the difference of being the oneness by doing self-inquiry or by spontaneous grace? Inquiry is mind and is effort. Spontaneous divine grace is no effort and no mind. Inquiry is conducted by mind and is in time. There is no limitation by mind or time in grace. Nothing needs to be done with or without effort. It happens by itself. Grace is such a strong and indescribable thing. It is always there, but you do not accept it. Grace is what you call the effort to come to satsang. You say you've come here by plane, train or road, but I tell you that you've come here only by grace. This is the difference. Except by grace, nobody comes to satsang. I am sorry to waste your time, but I want to be crystal clear on the method of Atmavichar. You have just been repeating what I say to you and not doing it. If I tell you to go to a restaurant and have lunch, and you say go to a restaurant and have lunch, what will the use be? This is what you have done. I didn't say to revise what I tell you. I told you to keep quiet and yet you speak and write so much. You are carrying around the concept of Atma Vichar like a boulder on your head. But nothing bad's been happening. How can anything happen when you are only repeating? I told you to keep quiet, and instead of keeping quiet you only keep saying that I told you to keep quiet. If you want to say anything you should say the results of keeping quiet. You didn't leave the mind, ego and the body you only talk about it. I told you that if thoughts arise to be indifferent to them. Keep quiet and make no effort, and there will only be awareness of awareness. Don't repeat the things that I speak of, but have an experience. So this is the approach I should, have? There is no approach at all. Just keep quiet. Stay wherever you are, just keep quiet. Where do you have to approach for quietness? Just keep quiet. In Bhagavan Sama, Eru he doesn't give details on Bo to keep quiet. Just keep quiet. What details do you need? Is keeping quiet like Japa, Tapas and meditation? No, don't repeat any Japa, or do any meditation. Just stay quiet for one second, this is what is needed. I had a strong experience in 1978. You are still repeating 1978 and now it is 1995. Don't even repeat 1995 much less 1978. 78 is dead. Don't keep it in your mind. You have to love the self, if you don't you are rejected by the self. Self stands with extended arms waiting for you, but you look somewhere else. Oh my child, it is enough. Now come to me, and I will give you rest. But you don't listen, you just look to something else. Whose fault is this? The beloved is waiting for you, but you are looking toward the red lights. I can't press you so you do as you like. This is what Bhagavan told to Arjuna fight these enemies, kill them, for they are already dead. Get up and fight. And he did. Bhagavan told him to do it and he did it, he didn't ask any further questions nor did he repeat the instructions. He stood up, bow and arrow in hand and finished them. God was there as his charioteer. God, is your charioteer. Do as he bids you to do and don't simply repeat it. If you don't do it then you think that you are rejected by him. 
Is it important to bring who am I into the context of my psychological therapy? I feel there is a seed in me which will grow into the bringing of the message to the people. The tiller has tilled the land, and the seed has been sown. Fertilizer has been used, but the sprout will not come until there is rain. This is your case exactly. But if it doesn't rain the chemicals of the fertilizer will destroy the seed. Now you have come to the place where all the twelve months have rain and now you are sprouted out. Without rain nothing will happen, but in the rainy season you don't even need fertilizer. Just throw the seed anywhere and it will sprout. I hope you understand this. In the same way you must plant the seeds into the minds of your clients so that they do not spiritually starve. You must be the rain. I don't know how to be the rain. To be rain you have to remember where the rain and the clouds come from. They must have come from the ocean where they rise, then they come and strike the mountains and rain. So now look at your own mother, the ocean, where one day you were when you evaporated and became clouds. Looking at the ocean means to look at the source of rain, and you will be taken over by the sun. Now you have clouds and so you move toward the north and strike the Himalayas and become rain. It is so easy, it is not difficult. Is it possible to go in and be on mind any time that one chooses? There is no going in and no going out and no choice. You are not to make the choice to go in or out. If you are choiceless, then I am finished. Yes. There is no choice, not even I want to be free because all choice is from the mind, I choose this and I reject that. Is it always a gift then? This is quite true. It is always a gift. But gifts imply a giver and a receiver. Is it not the same person? Though if there is no giver and no receiver then what gift is there? Yet it is a gift. This means that it is that which cannot be gifted because it is always there. How can you give the necklace on your neck to your own self? It is like a woman looking for a child which she is carrying unconsciously on her hip. Finally she says that she has found the child, but what can this find be when the child was already there? Though there is appearance of finding yourself. You need a reliable person with authority to tell you where to look for what you are searching for. Then the search will be over. In this way you will know that it is already there and this knowing is awareness aware of itself. Your questions are very good because it is absolutely necessary to dissolve all your doubts. It is a good work that you are doing and you will be successful, but first all your doubts must be removed. These doubts are where to search for it. And how far must I go? Actually, you are not to go anywhere and you are not to understand anything. So this search will be over when you see a teacher who shows you it is here. Where does consciousness come from? Trying to understand or describe the consciousness which is aware of the consciousness which asks the question, where does consciousness come from? Is a joke. You can't understand it. Can you pull me from understanding into consciousness? Can it be done? No it should not be done. It is undone. When you don't do it then it happens. When you do something then confusion will happen. Therefore don't do anything. Then you will arrive in consciousness. Don't give rise to anything that you can do or to anything that you have done. Now sit free of these doings and not doings. Then you will see what consciousness is. How can I fully abide in the self? The self is the abode of everything and you are already abiding in self. You are always in self and yet you forget and think that you have to do some practice. But you don't need any practice. That self which you attain by practice is not the real self. Self is present everywhere always and is unattainable. How can you separate from it? Where are you that you could possibly be out of self? These kind of doubts appear only to those who have not yet had experience. You will know that you have been the self itself all the time. Now you don't see this because you have been busy elsewhere, seeking elsewhere some object, so you could not have the experience. Don't look for any practice to take you to the self because the self is always here and now. Where can you go and leave the self? Find out who you are. Every day we deal with this question here in Satsang. 
You must find out for yourself who you are. Solve this question for yourself, or it is all just intellectual understanding. You don't need intellect or mind to understand this. Simply keep quiet for one moment. Then you will know who you are. I feel near to something but I don't get it. What do you want to get? The things that are happening here all the time. You can never get it, it is not an object to get. You cannot objectify it, it is the subject. Subject cannot be seen or attained or achieved with any kind of effort, subject is the subject. You are that subject, what do you lack? What do you miss? You are the seer, not the seen, nor the sight, the seer, the indweller of the house, the indweller of existence, the hub, the center of existence. That is the ultimate truth. You have not to proceed anywhere or to arrive anywhere. If you get rid of all this proceeding and arriving, all of these notions and intentions, then what do you see? Who are you? How do you feel? Even the intention, I have to stay in silence, takes you out of silence. Give up all notions of staying anywhere. What are you thinking right now? That sometimes I do not understand it. What sometimes? There are two sometimes which should we think about. The sometimes here or the sometimes there. When I am here. So let us speak of the sometimes which is here and now. But when it is here and now it is no time, and there is no question of some time. In this very moment there is no time. Can you call it past? Can you call it future? Can you even call it present? If the future and past is not there present is meaningless and vanishes also, you see? Though some time belongs to notions you got from somewhere. It is not your experience. Dive into this moment and get experience. When I use the word moment, it is not the moment that belongs to past, present, and future. I don't know what other word to use, but I believe you understand. This moment is a finger pointing to something which does not even belong to presence. If you get it, you got it and if you don't you miss it. That is all that I could speak of this moment. Now here, look unto yourself. Dive unto this peace, and then speak from within this peace itself, within this lake, which has no ripples. Ripples are thought, ripples are just mind, and the lake without a ripple is your own self-nature. Dive into this self-nature and tell me how you feel, tell me what you feel. Where is time? Where are concepts? Where are precepts? There are no concepts. Here is the place, no sometime, sometime that you spoke of. There is no time at all. Day is such and this is your abode, where you are always abiding. This is consciousness itself, wisdom itself. Where all these planets and manifestations are hanging, it is a capacity of consciousness. Whenever a thought arises it manifests. Though many of these thoughts are hanging in this emptiness, let them. You have no limitations, so just let there be millions of planets. They are just a corner of this universe. You are the creator of the creations. You are all, you are whole, you are happy. Stay here as you are now. Can you describe this in words? My body feels like it is energy itself and my view is very different. You changes from diversity to unity, from partiality to totality. This is what you are. You are total and whole and beautiful and compassionate. Here sometimes disappears and all your notions of who you think you are vanish. After they all vanish what is left is eternal love and peace and no creation can trespass into this. I close my eyes and I feel such great pleasure and sweetness. Am I getting attached to something I shouldn't be? Did I go deeper? When you close the eyes and you cut off the senses contact with their objects, you throw away a lot of things that steal your peace. This is what happens when you sleep and you feel so peaceful. It is the cessation of the projecting of and clinging to external objects that gives you some peace. The world of external objects, the waking state, is really the sleep state because you are unaware of true peace. You are only aware of objects. So close your eyes and decide that you want peace. 
then this peace will transcend you and transport you to another state which does not belong to time at all. This state will give you a lot of pleasure. This is Turiya, the fourth state of consciousness. It is transcendent of the waking, dream and sleep states. From here you get pleasure. It is of great pleasure to reject all the states filled with notions and concepts and intentions and clinging. The state is always here and does not depend on whether your eyes are open or closed. Another eye will open, the inner eye. Then you will see the inner world, the inner being. Closing your eyes helps to open this inner eye, and in the beginning both will not function simultaneously. So wake up to your own self and you will have pleasure. If you make effort to arrive there you can't stay, but will come back to where the effort started. Just sit quiet and relaxed, just see that you don't give rise to any thought and you will see that your nature is the pleasure that you speak about. The mind is always clinging to objects of satisfaction and is never satisfied by these, so don't take your mind. I see that you are in it now. As I have been speaking, you have been dropping. You got it now, now you have this now. Now neither close the eyes, nor open them and just see. I have been meditating a long time. Guru is many but the Sat Guru is one and dwells in your heart. Only those who the Divine loves will be chosen to know this, to know who they are. If you are interested only in freedom and are dissatisfied by the unreal world, only then will the Divine come and kiss you. The real seems so far beyond my grasp. You cannot grasp the real, it is all that is. This desire for liberation will merge into liberation itself. When satisfied, you will not be there to see if you are satisfied or not, and you will not be able to meditate because everything will be meditation. Then, it is only love for your own self. You must have the trust that you are that that is before this desire, before even your birth. Being with you my heart is becoming more warm and loving and compassionate, but also sometimes, without consciousness, I get romantic, sentimental, and emotional. I have heard so much about meditation on the heart. This must be what you mean. The heart that you speak about is the organ in the body, the blood propelling organ, but this is not the heart that we speak of. The heart that we speak of has no location, but we call it heart because there is no other word. This heart is neither inside or outside the body. It is only present, eternal, without frontiers. You must concentrate on this heart, but within this heart who is there other than that who will meditate? It has no limitation, and is subtler than thought and mind. This heart cannot be conceived, though it is present everywhere as presence. Who will meditate on that omnipresence? It is unconditioned and limitless. Meditation is limitation itself. You become a meditator, and then you want to meditate upon an object. It is all conditioning then. The subject is conditioned, the object is conditioned. Sanskrit word for meditation is Diana. When it went to China, it became Chan, and in Japan it became Zen. Dana means that place where there is no object and subject relationship. This is meditation. True meditation has no object of meditation and no meditator. Though give up meditation, the object to be meditated upon, and the notion of the meditator and then, perhaps meditation may take place. You are actually always in this meditation. This is not the mediation where your knees get stiff and you have to come out of it every few hours. This meditation which starts and stops and has ropes tied all over it like I have to go to the office in one hour, or I think I will meditate now for fifteen minutes. Just for one second do not have any notion about the meditator, or about meditation, or about anything else. Then something will rise, something will reveal itself, and you will merge into that. This is true meditation. This is my understanding of meditation on the heart. Am um, shanti shanti shanti. Finally, I have returned to your feet for your advice. Every day we start satsang this way as you have just done. Om um, shanti shanti shanti. What better advice can I give you? Doubts about the truth removed. 
Doubt about enlightenment is clinging to suffering and bondage. Though suffering will not leave you until doubt does. Doubts and negativity poison everything, mind, food and world. A serpent can kill once, but a doubt can kill you millions of times. Doubt is I am bound and I am suffering. Your doubts are like clouds, how long can they stay in front of the sun? But freedom is not shy of doubt, so when doubts come, let them come, and when they go, let them go. To any doubt that arises just say I know who I am yen. You say a part of you has doubts, there can be no part of you which has doubts because you are that whole which has no parts. When you do not inquire you are in parts and become that which can be destroyed. When knowing drops away have no doubt in what remains. He do not know is the knowledge. Who is the I which does not know? It is very important to remember, dormant tendencies rise as manifest thoughts. Even gods will tempt you and only Buddha survives. To reject pleasures of heaven and earth, what is not here will never be freedom. Give up all doubts. When I inquire I fall into a deep silence, total peace. Then the question arises, is this it? I feel that it must not be because, I would not ask this question. Papaji, what am I missing? The fact that this question arises means you have doubt. You have doubt that what has come to you unasked for and effortlessly may not be real. You have a diamond in your hand, but you doubt that it may be a piece of shell, and then you throw it into the ocean. It is just like that. This is a diamond. Don't doubt it. If you doubt then you will repent later on, but you will have lost the fortune. The mind will play many deceptive roles to you, but don't care about these. You have to stand like a rock. Then only you have done it well. Let the waves come, let the wind come, let the rain fall. How is the rock affected by these? It is not affected. So this is it that I am the rock. I am not the wind or the rain. The rain will fall for some time and again stop. Even a cyclone will come, stay and go. So whatever comes, let it come and whatever goes, let it go. No, I am the rock, and when the storm disappears, you will still be there. No, I am as it is. This is what I am just as a rock sinks into the ocean, yet remains a rock. If I am here it is because I want to be free. But if I still have fears and doubts is it because I don't want freedom badly enough? If it is so simple, how can it be so difficult? Any simple thing is difficult. Difficult things are not difficult. If I tell you to do something hard like a headstand, then you could do it. But what is the difficulty in keeping quiet? To keep quiet means just not thinking, and you have seen the results of thinking. Confusion trouble, suffering, doubt, and death. It is only difficult because you have not heard it before. Your parents never told you this, nor have your neighbors or your country. It is only here that you hear that keeping quiet is easy because it is your fundamental nature. You were quiet before you appeared and will be after you disappear. You were quiet before you spoke and what you spoke ended in quietness. Everything comes from quietness and ends in quietness, and so it must stay in quietness. While speaking you can keep quiet also. If you can't learn you will have to wait, though many have done it and many who are here will do it, because there is no doing. This strange language you will understand slowly. I feel disconnected from quietness and swallowed up by thoughts. These demons are taking ownership of my life. There's no difference between the mind and your demons. They are the same. Even after realization the demons will attack, and you will have doubt and think your freedom is fake. Don't be afraid of it. How can a doubtful person be convinced permanently? Can you guide me? You will see that everybody has doubt and therefore they come to satsang. You have no doubt, why should you come to the guru? You need to go to the satguru to remove your doubts. Other people need not go to the Satguru because they have no doubts. If you want to seek the truth, and you know that you want to seek the truth then you should go to the Satguru and seek guidance. But someone who knows that he is the truth itself need not go. 
In the third category are those who don't know what they have to know and don't know that they don't know, they also do not need any help. But you say you are doubtful and so you can go to the teacher to remove your doubts. When you see that the mind is doubtful then look at the doubt of the mind and then tell me. Don't just listen to me, do it. Tell me what is the doubt. Look at the doubt. Are you understanding? When I look at the doubt, I don't find it. Ah uh, yes, when you look at the doubt there is no doubt, but when you don't look there are doubts. So the Sadhguru tells you look at the doubt and you can't see the doubt. It is so simple. You are not to do any sadhana or practice or go to the Himalayas. Doubts have to come and each doubt will give you the next incarnation. Each doubt will carry you to a new birth. Therefore solve your doubts here now. It is so simple. Look at the doubts and no doubt will come. Keep awake. If you are awake the robber will not enter your house to steal from you. But if you are sleeping then your things will be missing because you didn't look at the robber. For many years you have lost everything, but now keep awake and watch this robber. This robber is mind, and where there is mind there is doubt. So always keep awake which means always look at the doubts. It is so simple. It doesn't matter if you are going to America or you are staying here for a long time, this is a simple teaching. I know myself but still there is a doubt. This is a contradictory statement. When you know yourself there can be no doubt. When you don't know yourself there can be doubt and fears. Though correct it, I know myself. That's all finished. If you have doubt then you can't do it. Where there is flame there is light. Where there is doubtlessness there is grace. Don't forget about it. I don't know you, I can't even perceive you. You don't need to know me. Know yourself, this is most important. Instead of knowing others, know thyself. First know yourself and all else will be revealed to you. You need not perceive. Give up all perceptions and it will reveal itself to you. How can I remove doubt? When you have the desire to know thyself all doubts will fly away. Keep quiet. Simply keep still. Don't give any thought to your mind for one second. Don't stir any thought and don't make effort for just one second. If you understand what I speak about tell me what will happen when you don't stir a single thought from the mind and you don't make any effort. Just these two things, no effort and not giving any thought to the mind. Just for one instant. What will happen? The only thing that can happen I assume existence. Still you have doubt. If only existence is there what is the doubt? When everything is existence where is the doubt and about whom is it? Who doubts and who is doubted? Unreality. Existence and non-existence. It will all be clear to you if you make no effort. I don't feel doubt. If you don't feel the doubt where do you even get this word doubt? If you don't have a thousand dollars in your pocket, you won't say, I don't have a thousand dollars in my pocket. If you don't have a doubt you need not speak that I don't have a doubt. For just one second don't have any doubt. Why am I here? To listen to this command, don't doubt. You are being told to remove all the doubts that you brought here. Here the doubt is being cleared by just keeping quiet and by making no effort. You came here to remove doubts. Then there is no here and no there. For one instant forget your friends, relationships, country. Forget all of this and who do you see? No one. It is like enjoying the emptiness of the sleep state. The whole reason why you sleep is because in the sleep state there is something which you cannot find in the waking state. Now do nothing and everything will be fulfilled. Then you will dive into a pool of love. I have such a strong doubt that I fear I will never be free. I attempt not to let thought arise. This must be a very strong attempt. How can a thought arise if you have made a very strong attempt not to allow it? Will you open your apartment door to a stranger that you don't know? But everybody has opened the door in fact there is no door. Everybody lets everybody walk in and out as they like. So you are not safe. Let no stranger into your mind. But you know them and so you let them in. Be careful that which troubles you may be a robber and enter your apartment and steal your things. 
first see who it is, and if it is a friendly thought like peace, love and beauty, then you can open the door. But if you open the door to everybody, you will be in trouble. So be careful. First watch out and then act. Doubts come up as to whether this is what I am looking for. When you are in peace and happiness how can doubts come up? If you have doubt you can't be in peace. If you are in peace doubts cannot come near you, try as they may, because you are beyond doubts. Doubts are like rats eating away your life. Therefore keep quiet. Don't try because this trying is also doubt. Rest and let no one disturb you. Let the doubts dance around you. Look at the doubts and they cannot come near you. Look to where the doubts arise from. Look into this nothingness. Give this trouble to the doubts. Don't let them give you trouble. They just keep coming. Let them come and go and they won't trouble you. People in cars going down the road do not trouble you. Cars, tractors, trucks, buffaloes and bicycles pass in front of you, but you are not concerned when they pass by. If you get concerned then you are in trouble. You stay quiet and let everything happen in front of you and do not absorb what is happening into Nishada self lequin your mind. I always feel so depressed. I feel trapped and full of doubt and despair. I understand intellectually what you say, but I don't really get it. I have no desire to continue living in this illusion. Will you please help me? This question must arise to someone who will have wisdom and light. Has arisen to you and now you are here. Only those who know that it is of no use living the illusion will come. First, you must find out who has brought you here. There is a push within from the compassion of that which will help you. You are here to be happy. Don't have an insecurity complex, you have great merits behind you. You need merit to come to satsang. You need a strong rock-like decision. I am going to win it this life, this year, today. This you have to decide. Do it now. Whenever you are going to do it, it will be now. So why postpone this now to next year? Now we'll help you. To be happy you need not go anywhere. It is here. If you look within you are happy, but if you look outside, then you are in trouble. That you must decide. Look within and be happy. If your mind goes anywhere bring it back. This practice you can do for some days, watch and stay quiet. The mind is never quiet it has to run out. So wherever it goes bring it back. This process should continue wherever you are, walking talking, inside the house or outside. From inside your mind always see what your mind is doing. Bring your mind back. For ages you have let the mind do as it likes, so now is the time for you to control your mind. But nobody can control it unless they have a very strong decision. Only then you will be able to control the monkey. Can women be enlightened? This doubt is a trap given to you by the male-dominated culture. But the truth is that women are as strong as men. As women like Queen Lakshmi have shown in Jansi. There have been many enlightened women like Maitri. They have every right to be free. Have you heard of St. Teresa of Avila and St. Clair in Assisi? Then the church wasn't very accepting of their experiences because the church wants to hear about the Bible and the church, not about the direct experience of Christ that these saints have. There is no difference between a man or a woman and each has equal right to be free. Everybody has a right. A few years ago, I had an experience of truth consciousness, bliss which profoundly changed my life. I now know my being, but I get caught up in thoughts and doubts. How much time do you give to truth and how much to these doubts? Does the time that you give to doubts cancel out your experience of truth? When thoughts come wipe them out by looking at them and slowly they will not attack you. When doubt rises simply see where it rises from. Doubt only troubles you when you don't look at it. Look also at the bliss. Ask where it comes from and to whom it comes. Find the center where all these waves rise from and return to. The question who am I brings peace, but again doubt arises. Whenever your mind is disturbed bring it back into your heart. If it goes again then again bring it back. 
but be lost in objects as is the habit of mind. Bring it back from these objects, and when it goes, again bring it back. You will see that you are successful when you control the mind in this way. Everybody else is controlled by the mind. Bringing your mind into your heart is the only way prescribed in the Upanishads and also in the Gita. When Arjuna asks the same question to Krishna, Krishna replies, "Wherever the mind goes, bring it back and keep it in my heart." I have not felt the bliss for months. Is it possible to always be in the bliss? Is there anything beyond this? Where does the doubt come from that the bliss comes and goes? In the egotistical consciousness, open eyes see and closed eyes do not see. But you are the consciousness and the bliss itself, not the experiencer of the bliss. You are that bliss itself, not the one who sees it. Know that I am that bliss. Then it will not open and close; it will not come and go. The sun shines twenty-four hours. There is no night known to the sun, but if the earth turns her back to the sun, there is night. Is the fault of the earth, not the sun, which shines eternally? You must see that you are the sun, and only you have understood this teaching. Discriminate what is darkness and what is light, what is real and what is not real. What appears and disappears is not real. Don't touch this happiness which comes and goes. Rather, go to the source, the reservoir of consciousness. Lam fed up with doubts and desires in this machine called mind. Perhaps I must wait for grace. Is there anything I can do? Without grace, nothing will work. You need grace. How can you say that you have no grace in your life? How do you think you made it to luck now? There must be grace which called you here. Otherwise, you would not have come, as in the case of your friends in your country. It is mind which says you have no grace because it wants to believe that everything comes from its own effort. But it has been making effort for thousands of years, and now your time has come to be free of it by the grace of self. This grace will guide your activities, telling you where to go and where to stay. If you accept that you are here due to a command from within, this is surrender to this grace. Once you surrender, the way will be very smooth. Simply don't do anything. Don't even think. Just allow the grace to rise. I feel so overwhelmed by your grace. My heart is at your feet, and all of my fears have vanished. How can I express my gratitude, and how can I totally remove the last of my doubts? What doubts do you still have? If you are in love with me, what doubts do you still have left? Doubts arise when you are in love with a stupid person. Then you have doubt and fears. With me, you must trust that and have no doubts because I love you. In other cases, you may love someone, but the other doesn't love you. This may have been your experience in the world. The person to whom you give your mind to is attached to someone else. I remember one story. One man appeared at the gate of the king and was allowed into the court. This man said to the king, "I am a yogi from the Himalayas, and because of my tapas, penance, and trusted divine fruit which grows only in the heavens, was given to me by the angels. I am three hundred fifty years old, and so I don't need this fruit which keeps one young." I've eaten one long before, and as you see, I appear to be only twenty-five years old. I've heard that you are a very good and generous king, and so I want you to have this fruit so that you can help the public for a long time. Now the king took the fruit, but decided that he wanted his junior queen to have it so that she always stayed twenty-five. This way, he could enjoy her more. She took it, but since she didn't have full satisfaction with this old king, she had taken on a young lover from the horse stable, and she gave it to him so that she may always enjoy his youth. Now the fruit was in the hands of this palace servant. However, this boy was always afraid of being caught with the queen, an offense for which he could be hanged, and so he had started a love affair with this simple prostitute. With her, there were no doubts or fears, and so he passed the fruit on to her, to that she may always be young and enjoyable. Now the prostitute thought that if she stayed young, she would remain in trouble, and if she grew older, her life would be better. Though 
she decided to give the fruit to someone who would really benefit everybody by staying young, the king. The king saw that it was the same fruit that the yogi had, but that even prostitutes had this fruit. Though he wondered what could be the use of this fruit and called the yogi to find out an answer. Is this the same fruit that you gave to me? The king asked. Yes, definitely it is the same, the yogi replied. But even the prostitutes have this fruit. No, I don't believe it. Are you sure? Have you eaten the fruit that I gave to you? No, I passed it on to my queen. Call your queen and ask her if she has eaten the fruit, commanded the yogi. The king asked her if she had eaten the fruit, but she was honest and told the king that just as he had desired for her to stay young, she had desired for her lover, the stable boy, to stay young because she enjoyed him more than she enjoyed the old king. This servant was called and admitted his fear of being the queen's lover and that he had passed on the fruit to a prostitute who he loved and enjoyed. The prostitute was called and she told her whole story. See how many hands this fruit has traveled through, but nobody had the merit eat it, stated the yogi. Now I will take it back because none of you had any use for it. With that the yogi walked out of the palace. Now the king got a lesson and learned that he could trust no one. Though he divided the diamonds, ministers, elephants and country between the two queens and left the palace to search for peace in the forest. This story is the story of the world, this is the story of the universe. Some will understand this earlier and some later on. So whatever you have to do, do it today. Fear of the truth removed. The fear of vanishing which may arise with inquiry is the old sensation, I am the body. This is not a fear of the new, but of leaving the old. Have no fear and plunge into your own being. When you disappear all fear will also. Stay quiet be still here you are. They is the presence in your heart. Do not fear meeting the self, it is what you have always been. Nothing can be lost, have no fear. There can also be fear of losing it. Only when you possess something does the fear of losing arise. Only self cannot be held, so only self cannot be lost. The only way to avoid fear is to return to the inner beauty, the self, the heart on the right. You may also fear, you will be crazy without a mind, but where there is mind there is duality and where there is duality there is desire, anger, hate, fear, in short, craziness. So don't be afraid of losing your mind because no mind is acute sanity. This is no doership, no judgments, no anger, this is supreme wisdom and peace. All fear is baseless as all fear is based on non-existent other. Fear lives only in the duality of the waking and dream states. Where there is fear there is falsehood, to overcome it meditate every day. Fear is ignoring the target so keep a strong relationship with freedom, be it hate or love. The fear in inquiry is the dormant intention to be with this and that after the inquiry. It is suppressed and then you have peace. Though it is suppressed into the subconscious mind it will wake up again. Do not suppress them, just understand that they do not exist. You can still have this and that but just know that they do not exist. It is like children in their sand castles at the beach. They play all day, but at the end of the day, they do not try to keep the sand in their pockets. They rejoice to kick it into the ocean, or they just watch the high tide take it away. Though sand is sand, nothing belongs to you. It is all like the breeze. Leave your mind as free as the breeze by not clinging to anything. This is the secret to happiness. Enjoy the garden, but do not cling to anything. It takes a fearless, sadvic intellect to know the truth. Burdened with vasanas, confusion, and fears you cannot inquire. Though the mind must be free of vasanas and fear, and this depends on how much longing you have. Ignore the egotistical I. I often get a fear of death as my meditation deepens. The fear is in the breaking up of name, form, notions and identity, of the river entering the ocean and losing its river ness. That breaking up is a sudden jump. At that point the fear will be converted into fearlessness. 
The fear is a product of barriers of banks of the river of limitations. These limitations are mind. The fear is just in losing all past notions and identities. Upon meeting the ocean, the fear is there and disappears as you become ocean. The fear is only thinking that you are separate from the ocean, and so the fear is a form of arrogance, of separation, of ego. Give up these notions and be free. Everybody must die, and so everybody has this fear. The fear is only that you will lose something when you are not here. Remove this fear by seeing and practicing. I am not the one who will die. It is the body which will die. Death is for the body only and not for you. When the body dies, you do not. That inside the body will not die. Slowly practice this and remove the fear of death. Just know I am not the body. It may take time, but again and again say in your mind, I am not the body, not the senses, not the activity with the sense objects. Keep on speaking this, and like a mantra, it will work. Separate yourself from these. Start at your foot and realize that you are not a foot, and work your way up from there. After you realize all of this is not me, then ask the question, Who am I? Slowly, you will be picked up by the truth and lose all your fear. My experience with you has involved so much peace that it sometimes frightens me. What has frightened you? The intensity of experience. But I am not frightened now. You are frightened because, for the first time, you have peace of mind. Nobody ever has peace, but when you have it continually, it can frighten you if it is an experience. You need not be frightened. It is only because none of your friends or family ever had this experience. Nobody has experienced the unique sweetness. Enjoy your life without ego. Otherwise, the ego will always bite you like a scorpion. This you always experience. The kiss of the ego is like a sting of a scorpion. I've had an experience where only awareness was, but due to fear, I dropped back into this plane of existence. This experience is quite enough, but you thought, and this thought brought you to the past because it is the past. You started to think what had happened and what it was that you got. Nobody had told you about it, and so you could not value it. Though it is there everywhere with everyone, only a rare one will find it. You have to see it as a diamond in your pocket, and not a shell from the beach. No, it is a diamond and not a shell. No, it is a diamond, and you don't have to think, and you will be the richest person in the universe. There was a man who brought bricks to construction sites on the back of his donkey. Still, they do this in India, especially in the villages. He would work all day for only twenty-five paisa, a few cents. One day, while he was digging some sand needed for a house, he found a shining thing, which he then tied to his donkey's neck. He didn't know what it was. A few days later, a diamond merchant was passing by, and he asked the brick hauler how much he wanted for it, as he pointed to the donkey's neck. The poor man said one dollar. A dollar in those days was twenty rupees, and since he could buy a new donkey for only five rupees, he thought he was making a good deal. But the diamond merchant took only the shiny thing from the donkey's neck and left the donkey behind. The poor man thought he was mad and asked, "Sir, what about the donkey?" I'm not a stupid person. I am a diamond merchant. I am not paying for the donkey, but for this diamond. You didn't know it, but you had enough money here so that you would never have to work the rest of your life. Even your family would not have to work for three generations. But here I will pay you five thousand rupees just for your stupidness. He then sold it to some local dealers for one hundred thousand dollars. They sold it on the Calcutta market for ten times that, and then it was brought to the Gulf Sheikhs, where it sold for ten times that. And all the while, this poor man became poorer and poorer, and repented more and more for his stupidness. So when the diamond comes to you, test it yourself. Take it yourself to several places, and then get the best price for it. You have not appreciated this diamond because you are not a diamond merchant, and you don't know diamonds. Show it to a diamond merchant. Bring it here, and I will test it. Then I will tell you how many carats it is, and I will pay you the exact price which nobody can pay. So don't make a mistake. 
When you find something that shines, bring it to luck now. Here there is a diamond merchant who is not dishonest. He will pay you the exact price. The exact price is not in money, or stones, or in dollars, but in peace, which nobody can offer you. You may sell it for ten times more, but you won't find this piece anywhere else. This is why you all are here, for this peace of mind. I tried to let go, but I became fearful. To let go is difficult because everybody wants things to happen according to their own choice. But is there anything in the world more valuable than this diamond? What is there in the world which will last and which you won't leave someday? Even this body you will leave. To let go. What is not stable and permanent let go. There is only one thing left. Worlds and gods will disappear but this will not. When you are reminded of this keep your eye on it, not with the intention of having it, but just to be it. All the things you want are in the let go category, house, wife, body, parents, gods, let go. What is left? What cannot go? That you are. You cannot go because you have never come and anything that comes must go. Find out what it is. Let go of your ego, not your wife and family. Fear and ego are mother and son. Ego is the mother of fear and fear is the son of ego. This family you should let go, not your wife and your children. Let go of the old family of ego mind, persons, relationships. If you want to be happy absolutely divorce them. But tell your family about satsang and teach them to live a very healthy life. Sometimes silence appears before me by itself but disappears as I try to hold it. Are you afraid or disturbed by this silence? No. Then why do you opt for disturbance instead of peace? You say that you prefer peace, yet you allow yourself to be bound to a place which disturbs your mind. For instance, luck now gets very hot in the summertime with temperatures sometimes reaching 48 degrees Celsius. If you can't stay well here why don't you go? With just an overnight journey you can be in Almora or Mussoorie or Nanital. The next morning you will be shivering. It is up to you to utilize the situation and circumstances. You are not bound to stay here. You can go to wherever you feel good. This is in regards to the climate and the same holds true for the mind. Why should you disturb your mind with some affair if you don't like the disturbance? Shift your mind to something which is beautiful, in this case to a beautiful thought. I am not the body which is always in trouble, I am Atman, I am soul, I am God myself. What problem is there with this? When you have to think you can think something good, and not something that will disturb you. If you must utilize the mind utilize it in this way. Make a strong decision that I must be peaceful before I die, and you will be successful. Sometimes my heart dances with good thoughts or no thought at all and sometimes I am in fear. Why must I respect these childhood ghosts when I can laugh with you and be here? This ghost is just old habits and they are similar with everybody. But the new habit of keeping still and not thinking of the ghost is rare because everybody thinks of their ghost and ends up living a miserable life. And they actually prefer this. You have to do otherwise. I want to laugh and be happy and be free of ghosts. Ghosts are just concepts of the mind. Actually there are no ghosts. From the beginning you are divine and you are not born to suffer. Since I was a child fear is a problem which takes over regularly even though it is clear that the fear is a thought only. Is it possible that one thought can be stronger than another? You are right. Some thoughts are weaker and some are stronger. If you say I want this or that, it is a weaker thought. If you say I don't want anything, it is a strong thought. Then you analyze which is a stronger thought. If you think that you want to be with a person, realize that person will leave tomorrow and you will then be in trouble. So weak thoughts like this will give you trouble and actually any association will give you trouble. This is the experience of everybody in the world. Wherever there is any association, there is suffering. When you are all alone and sleep you are happy, but the next morning, you are in trouble because you want to be with people. So you must choose between a stronger thought and a weaker thought.
How is it that though I love you so much and you love me, I have so much fear of being naked without protection in front of you? When you have bliss within yourself, you love yourself and everybody else. This is at Mananda. If you have fear, it means that you are not turning your mind inward to this. Fear only comes when the mind is turned outside on some object of the past. Your fear is simply fear of the past. You can find this out for yourself by noticing that when you have fear that there is some involvement with a past affair or circumstance. If you do not look into the past, you are here and now. Then you will dive into the bliss of the self. When the mind goes to the past, check it. If you are not successful again, check it. Bring the mind back and just watch how it drifts to the past. Mind means past itself. Mind is thought and thought belongs to the past. But in the presence there is no thought, only happiness. Just look at the mind and do not let it go back to the past. In the beginning it may trouble you, but later it won't. Mind is like a bull which goes and grazes in the field of other farms. There it gets a beating until it returns to its own fields. It doesn't understand the beatings and continues to go to the other fields and so it continues to get beaten. After receiving many complaints the farmer finally ties the bull up in the barn and feeds the bull in there. But when he places a bushel of feed in front of the bull the bull will not eat it because there is no one to beat him. Like this our mind will not listen but will go time and time again to be beaten. So this bull doesn't eat for a day, for two days, for three days. After the third day he is very weak and hungry and starts to eat without being beaten. Eventually, he feels very good and the farmer no longer has to keep him in the barn. Though the bull is no longer bound it no longer strays around. The bull knows that it is very well fed at home and doesn't go out to be beaten anymore. Though if the bull is controlled let him go wherever he likes, but actually he won't go anywhere. Pass the mind of thought with the strong decision, I will not go back to the past, and bring it back to the present. This is an affair of three days. For a few months while sitting in Ramana's room I was given the grace to know that I am that I. An outgoing mind took over again. I am that I is a good experience, but how long did you keep it? Why did you reject it? Was it not good? The experience was perfect. Is this not enough? Is it not good enough for you? Sitting in the room of Ramana Maharshi. It is the highest truth, the highest experience. Then why did you leave it? Why did you reject this moment? Because I am scared to totally disappear. This fear comes after this moment, after you have rejected the moment. It doesn't come during the experience, during the moment. Why did you reject this moment if it was so good? If you find a diamond will you take it and throw it into the river? A diamond is a diamond in this moment. In the next moment it is also a diamond, but you won't find it again if it is in the river. I rejected that moment because I chose something else and I wrote this letter to you to ask for your help. I want to stop choosing other things. Do you reject the diamond for something better? It is not better. If the distraction was not better then why did you throw the diamond away? I cannot throw that experience away because it is who I am. I want to offer who I am to you right now. If you know what you are why do you care about what you are not? Never before did you know what you are until grace took you to a place where you can find what you are. The matter should end here. Suppose you are in the honeymoon chamber with your bride, do you think of some other girl then? What will be the result of this? No marriage. In this way you will spend your whole life searching for your bride, but you won't find her. This is what happens with everyone because every day this experience comes to them, but everybody rejects it. Reject your doubts and the experiences will come to you. Then it is better for you to hold on to it. When you have no doubts you are in peace and in love and you are that. I found myself in such despair because my ego had won. The ego is always winning and you lost the chance to defeat it. Can't you just take your sword and cut it to pieces? I only have a week left in my stay in luck now and I don't know that I will ever be able to return. Please destroy me Papaiji. 
I know there is nothing real which can be lost. You have a good desire to destroy your ego, but in the same breath, you threaten to leave here next week and not return. You know what your plans are. Do you know what your planning is? It is the ego waiting outside the door, allowing you to come and meditate, only to take you again the moment you step out. This will not do. Have you heard the story of the king who went to see the saint? It is exactly like you. I told it recently so you must have heard it. The king with his royal ego goes to see this saint, but is kept waiting until the ego is destroyed. He could have gone in immediately to see the saint, but his king ego stopped him. The saint knows no difference between the king and the farmer. So if you want to see the truth within, you must instantly rush inside. Don't wait, don't even meditate. Rush inside now. Don't even close your eyes for meditation. Simply rush in and find where the ego rises from. Beyond this there is someone seated who is waiting for you. When the time comes don't miss it, it may not come again. This one second is enough. Though your hitchhiking from place to place is not needed. Stay wherever you are, it takes no time because it is not available in time. If you speak of time you don't get it. No time is available to you with every breath. You can find yourself at that time after inhaling and before exhaling. How much time is there before exhaling and after inhaling? What could you possibly want in this moment, and what meditation could you do? This instant is the time of peace, and here you can find yourself. Sometimes I feel this fear keeps me imprisoned. Whenever you keep quiet there is no mind, but the mind continues to call you to go off with it because many times you have befriended him, but now you have to decide not to listen. But this mind is in love with you and encircles you, and you are in love with him. If you don't break the relationship, you will always suffer. So be brave and decide that this time you will have no relationship with the dead persons. This is the decision this life I have to be free. This is your first satsang. You have done very well. At least you have a strong desire. I understand what you say in theory, but in my life there are still the same old patterns and habits coming to the surface. It is almost like I fear love inside. Can you help me? If you try to understand it will not work. You have to have experience and don't just listen to the words. Don't just hear the words or understand what is spoken, you must have experience. You have to have a deep experience. If I say go dive into the ocean, in theory you understand this, but you have to understand this. You have to have an experience of quietness, so that no other thought is arising in your mind. Look at the thought that is arising, go to the depth of it, and the thought will vanish, theory will vanish, and you will have experience. I have had experiences, but when I go back to Denmark, this experience can go back to Denmark, it has to stay with you. The experience is that you are free. You have to stay with it. How can it go anywhere? Though you have not to experience it, it is only theory. I am free will remain always with you when you have an experience of freedom. The cessation of objectification. Why objectify God? Objectify that. Go straight to the light, immediately jump into it, and don't write an article about it on the way. Keep quiet, entertain no doubt, raise no desire. Remove all objects and remain as that. All pain belongs to objectification. Do not let ego own freedom, so do not objectify the truth. Do not call it a gain or an acquisition, simply identify with it as you do when you see your face in a mirror. Forget this visitor called mine and just identify as that. You can only experience what you are not. Only transience can be experienced because the experiencer itself is transient. They'll give up the notions of experience, name and form. Don't touch name and form, just watch. Utter, I and all objects are there. Look at the eye and everything dissolves. That I look at the eye. Inquiry is to first objectify the eye, the experiencer, and then to look at the subject who has objectified even the eye. 
inquire who is the subject which objectifies the subject. This subject is the seer. My master Ramana Maharshi said to me God is not an object to be seen, he is the subject. He cannot be seen, he is the seer, find the seer. My heart was opened. Find the seer. This is the teaching. Self is before even subject, so who will concentrate on what? The seer must be seen, do not accept the dream as real. Wake up by not stirring a single thought for one moment. Even a thought will taint it because it is so immaculate and pure. Mind is the habit of objectifying, of projecting duality. Master the mind with vikshar. Know I am here and let this go anywhere. This will stop the mind. If the mind troubles you ask, if it doesn't just stay quiet. When mind is quiet all is self. When mind moves the world arises, so be still, throw away everything and be free. Then when mind is pure, you will see self in all beings. Give up seeing with the outer eye, and the divine eye will open. Still the mind question the source of I, look into what does not come or go, and be that. The mind moves only because it is attached to something, so do away with what is dear to the mind. Withdraw from attachments and decide to return to awareness being bliss by keeping quiet. When mind touches being it becomes being. Concept of freedom removes the concept of bondage. Then use all your strength not to be called back by the concepts of old habits and dissolve into freedom itself. Stop thinking for this is world process. Now is the gap in this and this is freedom. Not thinking is to not activate the mind. Do not activate the mind for only one moment. Do not think. Freedom from thought is freedom. Thoughts come, let them come. Thoughts go, let them go. No notion of freedom is freedom, no intention of freedom is freedom. True inquiry is not thinking or activating your mind. You must think then only think of self. This is the nearest practice. This is staying in the ocean and letting the waves rise. The last and first thought of the waking state must be inquiry. To stay quiet and see what happens. This seeing is being. When mind has to work it will go to sleep. Don't do this sleep is a trap. Keep effortless attention on the pearl that you are diving for the permanent answer, silence. The answer is at the end of the breath. Understanding is objectification. Uncover yourself by throwing away understanding. By trying or by understanding you will not find the source because all questions and answers rise from the ego. Find where the ego rises from and it will disappear. Ego must be destroyed, thinking must stop. Do it now, aspire for the unexplainable, that beyond understanding sight and touch by casting off the concept, I am not I am. Remove even the concept of concept. Vedanta, the end of knowledge, is to forget all including words. Carrying around books is like a donkey carrying sutras, so many saints are illiterate. As the fire in a painting will not cook your tea so intellectual understanding is not enough. Intellectual understanding is like reading a menu, true experience is like eating the food. All understanding is dried out boredom compared to the taste of that. Existence consciousness bliss, only the ego mind intellect hears these words. Do not let them interfere, do not analyze what you have heard. When you think of emptiness you are out of it. Speaking of freedom is only for the prisoner. One who is always free does not say it. This spoken freedom needs bondage to be free from. Inquire into yourself yourself and be free. This freedom you can't describe in words. The best description is in the eyes and walk of one drunk on the bliss of self. I want to be close to God. You speak about God like a schoolgirl reads something in a book. You are making God an interesting object and setting yourself up as the subject. God cannot be objectified, God is the subject itself. When you say simply I am the meaning of this is I am God. If you know this your personal identification is finished. 
In Sanskrit, this is Aham Brahmasmi which means I am God Brahman Atman myself. If you want to be close to God stop objectifying God for this is separation. Have the strength to know that I am God. So God is the seer of this illusion. Again you have created a relationship between seer and seeing. It seems like there is a big difference between self and ego, between reality and illusion. It is a creation of mind to say that this is reality and that is illusion, this is ego and that is the self. This is creation of the mind. I had the experience that nothing exists, suddenly I found myself in a big black hole. What did you do with this experience? How long did it stay? Now if you get this experience again you will compare it with the previous one and also you will lose it. If you have this experience, why do you want to analyze it? The mind comes up to understand and you lose it. I tried to keep it. How can you keep the emptiness? How can you keep anything that never existed? How can you keep it? There is something wrong somewhere, you see. Mind and this experience do not go together. You have to give up the friendship of one. Choose what you want, God or mind. This you must decide before you sit in satsang. You must see that nothing ever existed is the only experience. You were not here 40 years ago, nor will you be 50 years from now. What is before and after must also be now to be real. Be careful next time. Don't be washed away by the mind. There should be no difference in your mind and understanding between I am the illusion and I am Atman. Why do you want to understand? If there is nothing, how can you understand? If there is something you can understand. You are working, I am very happy. It evaporates when I try to describe it. It is indescribable and when you try to describe it you forget what you have to describe. Do you have any other guidance for me? I will give you some homework. The question is, what is this all about? This you must give me a reply to. Do you understand the question? This I don't know, but that is the question. I will be happy if you answer this. You are clever, but I will see how much your cleverness will help in answering this question. Could you please make me believe in God? I don't understand God. I want to have faith in something. God can be understood by a person? Who will understand God? Who told you that you can understand God? You don't understand who you are, let alone who God is. First understand yourself. Don't have faith in anything. You must trust what is already there. Faith is a word coined by the founders of religions. If you have faith you will go to heaven and if you don't you will go to hell. Faith is not correct, rather you should find out how things are in reality. I ask you to find out who you are, and for this you don't need faith. Start from your dress from your dupatha. I am not the dupatha. Then comes your suit, your watch, your ring. You are not these things. These belong to you, but you are not them. Know this. I am not the hair, I am not the glasses, I am not the nose. The nose belongs to me, but I am not the nose. This is reasonable understanding. You do not say, I am the nose. The skin belongs to me. If it is injured it can be replaced by plastic surgery. I am not the blood, I am not the bones, I am not the marrow, I am not the liquids in the body. These I am not. What belongs to me I am not. This house is mine, I am not the house. The what is left now. The owner of the house. What is left that is not a belonging but the owner. I am giving you the answer to your question. The what is left. I am not the mind, I am not the body, I am not the senses. What is left. My soul, ah, that is good, but even at that you have counted your soul as a belonging, my house, my car, my soul. No difference. Who are you to whom the soul belongs? It is not reasonable at all to say that the soul belongs to the body, the blood. What is a reasonable reply? You want to believe in God. I tell you, first of all, believe in yourself, that T am God. Then you will never fail. Believing in God is being God. 
Knowing God is being God. Understanding God is being God. Who can understand God except God Himself? If you understand God, it becomes your object, and who is the subject? God is the subject itself. God is not an object to be objectified. God is subject itself. Though it is better that you become the object of God, even then it will do. What problem is there if you say I am God? This is the best trust and the best faith. Instead of having faith anywhere else, have faith in yourself that you are God. This is the biggest faith. Then you are normal. Otherwise, you are abnormal or subnormal. I feel so badly because everybody is getting it, but not me. Separation is suffering. You are feeling separate from other, and so you suffer. This is all. You are hiding. You are not accepting what you are. You are total oneness with everything. You are everything itself. Give up your concept. I am something else, and others are something else. They say that the self is centered in the navel. There can only be a center where there is a circumference, isn't it? What is the circumference if the center is at the navel? The body, self is not conditioned. To say that is it centered in the navel is conditioning that which cannot be conditioned. There is no center, but if you are going to carry the concept that you are a body, then you can carry the concept that you are centered in the navel. The whole concept of centers in the body is to be used for objects of concentration, but I have not seen any results out of these centers. If you give up the notion that there is a center and sir, conference, then perhaps it will work. What is the center when there is no circumference, nothing to be concentrated upon, and no concentrator? Don't fix centers. This is just a trick of the mind. The center cannot be anything other than the mind cheating you out of freedom. Do not allow a thought to land anywhere, and you will see this. Don't let any thought abide anywhere. Then where will it go? Don't give time to these centers. I have seen so many people who have given forty or fifty years to these centers, and the only result is tighter bondage. Since I was very small, I have had a strong desire to know God, and this desire has given me countless experiences of oneness with truth. There are not countless experiences of truth. For truth, there is only one experience, and God cannot give you that experience. If you have an intense longing for God. This God will send you to church because God is only found in church. In truth, there is no God. Truth is truth, and God is your own creation. This is controversial, but God only lives in the church. Recently, I bad the experience of no mind, but I know mind is tricky. When mind is not there, who is there to call it an experience? Knowing that mind is tricky is itself a trick of the mind. Wake up. My mind is so strong and clever. Will you help me? Why have you accepted your defeat? That the mind is so strong. Why? It has to be your slave, not your master. As a slave, he is very obedient, but as your master or as your teacher, he is a butcher. Don't feel defeated by this man because you have not even seen him. How can you say he is so strong? You have never seen him. Nobody has seen the mind. Therefore, this is only a ghost. You are haunted by a ghost. Those who say I have a strong mind or I am troubled by my mind, they are haunted by a ghost. There is one psychotherapist here in Satsang who will help you with your ghosts, and he will charge you dollar one hundred per hour. Though to be haunted by ghosts is very costly. If you are conscious of the rising of the thought, it will not arise. Do you follow this? I will speak again and again. It is very important. When the thought is arising, look at it. Do this and tell me if you understand. All your life, the thoughts are arising, so look at them and tell me what happens. Be vigilant. Invite the thoughts to come. They oh thought, I like you, I love you, and see what thought will come. No thought comes. Though you know the secret of how no thought will come to you. I am very happy that you have come to luck now at such a young age. There must be a strong urge in you that made you come to Satsang instead of the fish market. I will tell you a story. 
There was one fisherwoman who would fish in the river and then take the fish to the market to sell. The one evening, there was a very bad storm, a cyclone, and so she could not even walk with the basket of fish that was on her head. But there was one florist who was on the way and so she said, My dear sister, you can stay here, and when the storm stops you can go. You can't walk now because the wind is at one hundred miles per hour. So the fisherwoman came in. All around were flowers like rose and jasmine. When the night came she could not sleep. She said to the florist, I can't sleep because there is the bad smell of flowers all over your house. All these roses and jasmine are making my head ache. Though my dear sister, if you allow, I will bring my basket of fish here and use it as a pillow. Though she did, and she instantly started snoring. Though those who have lived with the garbage of their thoughts cannot sleep without thought. Every thought is a fish which is enough to spoil the whole pond. Keeping one thought in your mind you cannot be at peace. Therefore do not allow any thought to stay in your mind. Then you will see the difference. Try it for only one second in your life. Not months or years, just one second. Do not allow any thought in your mind. Papaji starts coughing and with a hoarse voice says, Every word has power, you see. When I say I love you, it has power. When you abuse a man, it has power. A bad word hurts, and a good word like I love you changes a person. Words have tremendous power. I have been using the word fish and starts to cough more. This is the power of the word. I want to realize my God self, but I think there is a veil between me and that. The veil is this, you have some desire in your mind. You have a desire to arrive at a greater consciousness and this is the veil between you and that. You have to be absolutely without desire and without thought. Desire is a thought. When you have a desire you have mind and an object of desire. But God is not the object. He is the subject. He is not the seen arrived to or reached. He is the seer. Don't try to see anything because God is not an object. All objects have beginnings and ends, but the greater consciousness does not. Just simply do not have any desire for anything for one second, and tell me where the greater consciousness is and where the lesser consciousness is. Now where is the veil? We create the veil by wanting this and that, but where there is no desire God will come himself and sit in your heart. But if the chair in your heart is full of the garbage of desires where will he sit? God needs an absolutely pure seat. Only then will he come uninvited and take possession of it forever. Then whatever you do, it is God who is doing it. You don't need anything then. You must remove all name and form and there will be no veil. When the veil is lifted the only thing remaining is the compassion to lift the veils of others. This work is so allotted to one who has removed his veil, but one who has ego, how can he remove the ego of others? Do it now, you are in a human form and you have a desire. Those humans who do not aspire for liberation are just animals who have removed the tail. The true human is one who has removed the veil in this human life. Do not doubt it, you have done it. I feel there's a wall that keeps me from understanding the truth. I think that this veil is a wall made out of all the stuff I learned all my life. This wall is a notion and if you demolish it there will be no inside or outside. You are not to think because by thought you will not remove this notion. This notion is imagination only and it does not exist. The snake never existed, it was always a rope. It is only due to your faulty vision that you call it a snake. This makes you responsible for your own creation. The rope did not create a snake, you created it. Find out what this notion is that has given you so much trouble. Just keep quiet and look at it, and it will no longer be there. Look at the notion that makes you unhappy, just look at it. No effort is needed, just look at the rise of the notion that gives you trouble. You have created this notion and like the snake which never existed, this notion has never really existed. You are always well placed in peace, love, happiness and bliss. This is your inherent nature. 
All the rest are notions that do not exist. So get rid of all these notions and intentions and ideations which have been dumped on you by your parents, priests and society. So much garbage has been put on your head and on your heart and you have been lost in all of it. Now repeat the same question. I can't, I don't know any question anymore. Excellent. I can see from your face that everything has changed now. Excellent. This is your nature. Day. Losing the revelation by attaining it. Only when you possess or attain something does the concept and fear of losing arise. Only self cannot be lost. If you have attained peace mind will come back. Just let it come just watch from where it arises. Allow the mind to run but by directing it to now do not let it land in the graveyard of the past. Clinging to the past is keeping evil association. When you meditate all these past patterns will leave you. The trick is to keep full attention on who wants to meditate because when the house is full the thieves will not enter. Don't expect and do not search and you will find it. But if you again find what appears you will have found the wrong thing and you will definitely lose it because what appears appears only to disappear. Don't try to suppress the thoughts and experiences which appear just keep alert and let them come. Inquiry stirs the serpents to arise. Keep alert keep alert. The desire for the permanency of clarity is a trick of the mind because permanency is in time and only postpones what is here and now. Find the source of this desire. If again is for a gain it is useless. This losing starts from the ego wanting to be the doer and wanting to proudly own freedom. If you say from the ego point of view I am doing there must be some interest and you already want some reward for it. You decide that something is beautiful and so you go near that object which is attracting you and then you want to possess it, you want to own it. As soon as you possess it, you have fear of losing it because where there are two there is always fear. This is because in duality there is always a fear of separation. When fear arises, anger arises. With anger there is confusion, lack of understanding and lack of discrimination. When you cannot decide things properly it is total destruction. Everyone is beautiful, but when you grip a begging bowl in your hand you lose it. Don't try to possess blissful states, so get rid of your pocket. Original nature is emptiness and this is peace. Let things come and enjoy them, but do not try to own them. Don't worry love cannot be lost. How do people lose it? By getting it. Anything that you get is not yourself and so if you lose something it means that it was not your true self and is better off being lost. Self cannot be lost because it is what you are. There are not two, one of which can be lost and the other one being that which has lost it. The truth is what you are. All that can be lost is that which obscures it, perishable things like doubts and thoughts and objects. When people say we got it a misunderstanding is all that they have gotten. Then soon of course they will say that they have lost it. People who think that they may lose it have only understood it and any understanding is a misunderstanding. Nature cannot be lost, yourself cannot be lost. It simply is and is not what can come or go. It is not achieving or attaining anything. It is knowing yourself as you are. Before you did not know who you are and you wanted to abide in things which are not permanent and which will not stay. The notion of losing it comes from the mind. Therefore when you try to get something you are liable to lose it. So do not achieve anything, just get rid of all the notions that have been dumped on you for lifetimes. When you get rid of this notion, even for a second, you will know because then you reveal yourself to the truth and the truth will reveal itself to you. This is just being, just presence. When I come back to the connection with the self, it is the most beautiful space. So why is it that I choose to come out of this and create a new theater with a new film playing? When you decide to stay alone in beauty, when the ocean has no waves, you are enjoying your waveless fullness. And when this ocean decides to play this notion of play arises in the form of waves. 
This film that you speak of are these waves. The ocean knows that it is ocean, and that these are its waves dancing on it. He is not at all disturbed by these waves; rather, it enjoys the waves very much. Your question then is, what is the difference between a waveless ocean and an ocean with waves? This question is a wave, a notion, not an ocean. It is a notion from the wave side. This question of separation belongs only to a wave. The ocean could never ask this. This notion is just like the notion of the wave that it is separate from the ocean, that you, as a being, are separate from being. As a wave, we think that we have a height, length, breadth, and movement, but these are all notions. Separation is only a notion. The wave who wants to end this separation starts to look for the ocean. Waves look for the ocean, but how can the ocean decide to become a wave? It is fullness. The ocean is fullness. When it decides to play, this decision is waves. This is consciousness. This is consciousness. Whatever it thinks, it is still consciousness. It can never be other than consciousness. The game of differences and separation is the same as if there was no game. It is not changed. Ocean is ocean with or without waves. Consciousness is consciousness and is empty with or without manifestation. There is no change at all from the viewpoint of emptiness or consciousness from the viewpoint of awakening. When you know you are that, you have no differences. You are not separate from what is going on. This cannot be lost. All of manifestation, from the beginning to the middle to the end, are the waves within you, within your own self, and are not apart from yourself. Reject the disturbance, which is only the notion of separation. Be totality, not this and not that. When you decide to do this, it will happen immediately. Even if you do not decide this, everything still is you only. Your question amounts to: If I am all this, then why all that? Laughing, just do not touch this. If I get rid of this and that, then I am in the space of nothingness. Who can disturb this nothingness? What will become of that which enters this nothingness? How to stay in the ocean? Don't use the concept how. How is only a wave. Without how, there is only staying in ocean. It is the how that troubles people, and whatever you think the answer to be, you become instantly. It is better to just remove the question because whatever you think you become, if you think you are free, you are, and if you think you are suffering, you are suffering. This is the beauty of consciousness. Think and it becomes whatever you think will arise as you think it, and it is still consciousness. Because it is consciousness, it doesn't need to take any material from the outside. It is consciousness, and all within it is consciousness. Consciousness is so full; anything it desires instantly comes into being as being. So, if you want to be free, you can instantly be free. This thought of freedom, this notion, is just to remove the notion of bondage. To be free, just entertain the notion of freedom. Then both notions will be finished. Neither notion exists. You are as you are and have never changed. With freedom, get rid of the notion that you are this body and mind. Everything will dance. This is called freedom. That one who has tasted freedom dances. I lost it and I did not reattain it for six months, and I do not know how to get it back. But why again? If you get it again, you are after something temporary, and you will lose it again. It is not like eating food where you need more after just a little while. But if you have just one drop of nectar, you will not need any more food for the rest of your life. This is at glance. A millionth part of a second is enough. But if you want to retain it, do not desire to hold it, for it cannot be held. Don't desire to keep it, and don't desire to have it come back again. Simply be with it. Don't think that it will run away because it cannot run away. It will not disappear. It is you who will disappear when you allow an open heart to it and let it stay with you. You disappear. What happens to the moth when it goes to the flame? It is gone. Though touch this flame in your heart, why is it that so many seekers come and experience this state in Lucknow and then it drops away when they return to the West? 
He never happen. He never happen. How can one who has realized himself forget it? It is not possible. It is not true. As a river which discharges into the ocean cannot return as a river in name and form. It is finished. But when you discharge your mind into its source, mind no longer is a mind. It is that itself. It cannot become a mind. It is now called no mind. Be clear with this. Many people say that when they return to the West, that they lose it. I don't believe this. They did not get it, and only then can they lose it. But if your hand is empty, there is no gain or loss. If you have not gained anything, you cannot lose anything. Though you have to empty your mind of all desires, once emptied, it cannot be refilled. They think that they got something new in luck now that they did not have before. Therefore, they are bound to lose it. I tell them that they are not to gain or to lose anything, but to understand that you are already free and enlightened. If you are already enlightened, you are already enlightened in Moscow, Washington, or Lucknow. How can you lose anything anywhere? This I speak about. Don't try to gain anything, but rather lose all the gains you have so far made. Leave behind all that you have read and heard about. What is left will reveal that it is your own self, and when you know this, you cannot lose it. Though any gain will be lost, and what you have not gained, you will not lose. If your pocket is empty in luck now, it will also be empty in New York. Though always keep your pockets empty. With empty hands, everything will come. If you are always holding something, you have no capacity to hold any more. So empty your hands, and again all will be replaced. Though it is the empty mind who is the emperor of the universe. Empty mind and hand mean having no thought, and a man with no thought is the king of the kingdom. You can try. Empty your mind of everything and feel who you are. This is called peace, also enlightenment, also freedom. But don't keep anything in your mind. I had a vision a few days ago of Romana climbing the ladder and then smiling at me compassionately, as if saying, "Come up with me." Is this a diamond that I have treated as a pebble? Yes, it is a diamond, and you have thrown it away. But it doesn't matter because you have seen what it looks like, and next time you will keep it in your bosom. It is rare to get a diamond, and to throw it away is bad luck. But it is always available, and so you must use the same practice by which you attain this diamond, not thinking anything about this diamond, not wanting this diamond. Then the teacher will call you and say, "Here is the diamond." That is the grace of the teacher. My mind feels unworthy, mainly because it feels that it has not taken care of the revelation which has unfolded. Is this unworthiness, or is it just the way things unfold? It is unworthiness. If someone comes to stay as a guest in your house, but you push them out, what is it? If a married woman goes and sleeps with other men, what do you call this? She is not a worthy woman, but a prostitute. Though if you do not take care of yourself, you are a prostitute to something else. You are not a yogi; you are a bogi. May I leave this unworthiness with you? You can do whatever you want. In this place, I advise the yogi, not the bogi. There are six billion bogis in the world today, but very few yogis. I want to be a yogi, and I experience silence. But then I returns. Let Dai come. She has to live with you. She is a good woman. But how do I find permanent self-awareness? I don't want the I. Find the questioner of this question, and you will find the answer to this. And to all questions, find where the question arises from, and you will find the answer. They hear and know who you are. This silence will be your reply. You will find there is no questioner. You will find questions, but you will not find a questioner. Only happiness. I feel I have found this, but I am so forgetful. I like the way of forgetfulness. Whatever comes, forget it. Don't listen to anyone. Forget all the world, including your mind, body, and relations and world. Hebir also says this: Don't care about what you can remember and what can be forgotten. These things have nothing to do with who you are. 
I saw an oceanic vision when I was last with you, but then I lost it. Only one person can sit in a chair. Something settled in your heart, but now you miss it. It is because something else is occupying the same place and two things cannot be in the same place at the same time. Either you have peace or you have disturbance. But I did try to lead the thoughts back to their source. This is quite good. This will take you to a place which has no depth and no shallowness. This is your own ultimate home which you must return to in order to be peaceful and eterna. Bliss itself. After I left you last I slowly lost contact with self while in Germany. If you lose what you have gained you are being pulled to something else. Otherwise you would stay in happiness. You are more attracted to something else and not your own self. The mind goes to where it is happy and in your case it is going to temporary happiness and pleasures. It can only be permanently happy by staying in the self. If your mind is going out to a place which is causing you to suffer, incessantly tell it not to, and she will understand someday. Don't get lost and don't be worried about it. Just make the decision that you will be free in this lifetime. It is quite enough. I experienced such a blessed blissful state but fear of losing it crept in. The beloved will not leave you, even if you see this beauty for only a second. It is the mind which carries this fear and tension, but it is not true. Don't worry it will have a permanent hold on you. You think that you have lost it, but it is not lost. If you have this glimpse for only one moment, it is finished. But if you put your attachments over it then you can't see it even though it is still there. Self is always present, bliss is always present. You are not to work at attaining it, just remove the obstacles by which you can't see it. The hindrance is only one, attachment to the past. If you do not attach yourself to any thought of the past, it is already there and this is called experience, you see. Experience of that is when there are no obstacles, no hindrances, no attachments. Though try again. I did but again it disappeared. Let it disappear. You had a glimpse and you remembered it. This will still work. Always remember this glance which disappeared. If you know this consciousness disappeared, what is this disappearance? Is it not appearance in your mind of something that has disappeared? Though, this one glimpse cannot disappear and is quite enough. When you go to the pleasure garden and you see a girl and then she disappears, you carry this disappearance in your mind, even when you sleep. You carry this girl in your mind and so she is with you. In the same way it does not make any difference. Here is of losing what you get and wanting to keep it with you. Suppose you had five thousand dollars in your pocket and you are walking in the forest, there is fear. But if your pockets are empty you are not afraid because you have nothing to be taken. It is best not to desire anything which can be lost because having it will cause fear in your mind. Stop chasing after what appears and disappears and you will find that which will give you permanent satisfaction and joy. What neither appears or disappears is eternal and this is available here and now without any trial. How will the silent mind come? It will come if you don't allow the mind to hold anything which appears and disappears. Find out where mind goes and guide it to its source. This source is the source of happiness and here it will not get a constant beating. But even when the mind is battled you feel you are battled it is not so. Don't allow the mind to go out and don't allow even the desire to go out. Do this by knowing that the source within is a priceless diamond. Very few people know the value of this diamond that they are. Honoring the revelation by being that. The cosmic heart is the minutest particle. You cannot go there with your body or your mind because it is the purest of the pure and even a thought will contaminate it. A true glimpse of this cosmic heart is like pouring your cup of water into a river, you will never see your water again. Don't touch I and you will have this glimpse. Glimpses are not as important as the one who is having the glimpse who is it. What stays after the glimpse is most important. Awareness cannot go and cannot be destroyed. You do not have to depend on anything to be free and it is not a glimpse. 
Freedom is always permanently residing in your heart, I have so get rid of all these aids which give a glimpse of bliss. Don't depend on anything and simply keep quiet. Let your mind not cling to anything of the past and check its futurizing tendencies. Do not allow any clinging to any physical form, not even your own self or your kuru. Then you are left alone with freedom and this will not be a glimpse, it will be a permanent abiding in your own self. Tatsang and the inquiry into what you are will stir up the sanus to be washed away. Your mind will then rest in its source. Constantly uplift your mind to self. Find out what is eternal in this moment. Two cannot walk the razor's edge so you must remain one-pointed, you must believe in the unbelievable, and you must face the unknown. Do not turn back to the known. Stop complicating yourself, be quiet. When all associations are abandoned you must reject even rejection or you are just keeping the wastebasket on your head. Then go into that which even thought will taint. This infinite inquiry is infinite reward. Finite inquiry gives finite rewards. To get lost in inquiry until it gets you. Then when inquiry brings no name and no form, it is finished because there is no inquiry in freedom. After the four walls are torn down, the four walls of intellect mind body senses, there is still the old gate remaining, the old habit of I, in the form I am free. This gate is not needed, and will leave at the time of death if not before. Whether the same reached a point in the inquiry from where I can't move beyond. Where you can't go beyond is where you have to stay. It is only mind which says that you have something more to do. Stop this mind. Once a team of climbers were ascending a mountain when they found that their map ended before they reached the summit. So they sent a runner down to the base camp to get the final map. While they were waiting there, a second team descending from the summit came into their camp and asked what they were waiting for. We don't have the final map to the summit and so we sent a runner to get it, they replied. Damn it, said the leader of the victorious team, you don't need a map, this is the summit. This is the end of all the maps. This is the case with you. You have sent the mind as a runner to get a map so that you can go further, but you do not need to go anywhere because you are at the summit, you are the summit. Now just honor and love this summit. Only mine needs a map, not you. I have read a lot of what Ramana Maher, she says, and so I feel that I have a good intellectual grasp of what you say. An intellectual understanding is a must, but it is not all that you need. You need to do it, you need to be it, an intellectual map is not enough. But I am often quiet. Why go to and fro and in and out of quietness? Soon you will stop making all these trips and your mind will stay in quietness. Why move here and there? Don't go anywhere to try and find peace. Peace is within you. You are that peace. When you go to any object it will never give you peace. I know the place where I watch thought objects rise and pass away. You are the one who watches. You are the witness of thought as it rises and passes away and stops. The one who watches is everlasting. The mind is the habit to be involved in its objects. You can't both silently watch and be involved. Because of this habit you forget that what you are involved in is just a projection on the screen. Due to this forgetfulness identification goes from being the silent witness to becoming the projection itself. You forget that you are the screen on which these projections are rising and passing. You are the screen which doesn't change. Oceans of water cannot make you wet, fires will not burn you and movies of romance will not affect you. So allow the projections of the mind which is everything you see within and without. Like this you must remain that which is untouched, that which is before identifications and intellectual grasps. This is eternal being. When thought takes you to an object you tend to go along with the thought. This is everyone's habit, following the mind. Avoid the thoughts which come and go, and avoid the one who follows the thought. Don't just look at the thought, but look at the one who is following the thought from the inner consciousness to the outer object. The one who follows the thought, is also a thought. 
The one who follows the thought is in thought. When you know that both are thoughts, you are home. Then allow thoughts to arise and allow them to be followed. You remain as that unmoved and unconcerned being. This the highest understanding. It is difficult to understand this. You must only do it. Let the thoughts rise and let them subside like waves moving along the surface of the ocean. The ocean is not concerned with the rising or the playing or the falling of the waves. It knows that the waves cannot leave because the waves are ocean. This is called vast understanding. This is where the matter ends. Samsara is there, so let it be there. Manifestation is the nature of self. Self itself doesn't keep quiet, but manifests as everything. As a wave is the ocean, so all manifestation is that. Therefore, do not accept anything and don't reject anything. Allow the quietness and allow the mind to go and enjoy itself. The difference is that you are not the enjoyer. I think I had a glimpse of this where there is a momentary gap in I. Glimpses mean that you have seen something. This means that there is an object to be seen and a subject which sees. This duality of an object and a subject is only the play of mind. This gap that you speak of is not momentary; it is the only thing that is permanent. The gap between breaths or thoughts, or between any other two movements, is always there, and it has nothing to do with the movement itself. This gap is what the movement occurs in. You are the gap. Knowing this will make the difference. Stillness in which thoughts rise and fall is permanent. You are this stillness. Sometimes, while in this gap or stillness, I start to laugh, and it seems to bring me out of the stillness. Can't bring you out of the stillness because this stillness is pure happiness. This laughing rises out of it, and is it? The waves of laughter rise out of the ocean of joy. All of this is in the tiniest fraction of a second, and so it is a secret. Only those who understand, who see it, who know that they are it, will be happy. All others will continue to suffer. They will cry at their death and at their next birth. You are beyond happiness itself. You are that place where the waves of happiness arise from. Find that place. Don't understand it. You have to simply see that you are that itself. Will you help me go deeper into this? Remove your concept of depth. I hope this is clear. Thank you. The question "Who am I?" leaves me in a bottomless well of silence that tastes profound. Why is there a sense of a missing link? When you jump into a bottomless well, to whom are you saying "Why is there a sense of a missing link?" Where does this "Why" come from? You must be a good swimmer, swimming at the top, asking people to pull you out. They send you a rope, and again you will go back there. But if this well is bottomless, just jump. That is all. How? How? A man leaves his house to go jump into a bottomless well. The decision has been made. To whom will he ask how? How to jump? There is no well. I know there is no well. No well is also no well. Leave knowing behind. He giggles and shows her a picture of Krishna dancing on the serpent's head while in the Yamuna River. He knew the trick of how to jump and dance on the head of the cobra. So this decision has to be there. Nobody was swimming there because there was a thousand-hooded snake. This snake is the world. This cobra is the fear of death. Enjoy where this serpent is who bites everyone. Rise on its hood and dance and play the flute. This trick you must know. Fearlessness. Then there is music and dancing on the hood of the snake. This is a very simple trick. Fearlessness, and that is all. Nobody could jump into this part of the river where only this young boy did, for the peace of the rest of the villagers who were afraid to go there. One night, mind stopped dead in its tracks, revealing effortless awareness. The search is over. When I try to practice sadhana, it is like dropping a stone into a still pool or scratching lines in vast space. I have come here to thank you. The silence is still here to thank you, but there is also a subtle want for something more. 
maybe for the experience of the intensity of the realization of that silence. Can you advise me? After having this experience I don't think that it is wise to play with the snake. It may not be a dead snake, it may be lying, and if you try to massage its hood, you will be in trouble. It is better after having this experience that you keep quiet. Don't play with the mind, it is not dead. It is still alive living in the name of itself. So you have to watch up to the last breath of your life because it can revive, it can again smite you. So it is better to keep quiet. Don't even utter the name. Because it lives in the name. When you utter its name it is alive. There is nothing more that you need. There is no intensity. I advise you that you only keep silent. Keep silent and watch save it and honor it you see. I look at the thought and it disappears like a sugar cube in the ocean. If you put sugar in a glass of water it will dissolve but when you heat this water and it all evaporates what is left on the bottom? Sugar. Laugh so the sugar you have not taken care of. The water will be evaporated. Anything that can disappear is not worth relying upon. The sugar will remain sugar so you must deal with this sugar. This concept of sugar must go now. Don't speak of a lump of sugar because it remains a lump of sugar once the water evaporates. You must find out what remains as a residue and look after that which leaves no residue. Camphor. Burn camphor and what is the residue? Nothing. Feel like a camphor you must burn. All these words which you say, everybody knows. Whether they have experience or not they know it because it is written in the books and spoken by the saints and sages. It is loving, it is silence, it is bliss, it is joy, it is expanding. All these words are there, yet they are only words. Now you have to remove the word. Go deeper to where there is no word. Even silence is not there. Silence is a word. We may speak the word sugar, but our tongue is not tasting sweetness. Like this we may speak of stillness, bliss, happiness, but they are all words. We have to do away with the words. Don't talk about any word. What will you do? What is that transcendental state where word has no meaning? That is it you see. And that you can't describe. That eternity cannot be described. For the best is what I speak every day, keep quiet. And when the thought comes, I am blissful, I am limitless, you must find the source of this thought. Where does the thought of bliss come from? Then you will see that there is no thought, not even thought of happiness, peace and blissfulness. When you dig at the root, you will not be able to speak because any word is outside of you. Next time speak to me without using any words. Thank you. Good luck. Beautiful things are happening here in luck now, but still a notion of witness persists. Beautiful things are happening and you are the witness of these things. What is the problem? To stay is the witness. I cannot say that it is oneness. I cannot say that it is home. See that you are the witness, what problem is there? Turn your face and look. Just be a witness. If someone laughs, be a witness. If someone cries, be a witness. You don't understand the meaning of witness. Witness means you are not involved in anything. This is witness. Whatever is happening just simply see. When the same witness is what is witnessed, then you must behave like it. What you witness is the same as what is witnessed, then there is no problem. Witness and the witnessed are the same. In a dream you see an elephant, a mountain and a tree. How can this tree not be you? The dreamer and the tree is the same thing. The dreamer and the mountain is the same thing. You have become the tree and the mountain. Is it not? Who has made the mountain? You dreamed that there was a mountain and a mountain was there. There is no difference between you and the mountain. Both are dreams. Though now you must witness this witness. That I am the mountain, and I am dreaming the mountain is so subtle to understand. Can I come to you for further guidance? This is the guidance. Now my bead is no longer in the fish basket. 
Do you remember the story I told about the fish basket? Most of the people keep their heads in the fish basket because they like the smell. These fish are arrogance and ego. Who is it that does not have their head in the fish basket? The one who is out of ego and arrogance, but all humans, animals, and birds have ego. These fish do not bother me if I follow them back home. Yes, when they appear, follow it. This means that if a thought appears, you should follow it, and she will take you to a place where she really belongs to. Follow any thought from where it comes. You will reach a place, and that has been your pious. But if you follow a thought out to its object, you will be finished. I have been feeling such a vast space, but it bass edges around it. This ocean has no shoreline, and who will see the shoreline? The wave. The wave feels that it is no more ocean because it thinks its name is wave, and she does not know that she is still ocean. It is only this name that has separated her. Then she has length, width, height, and movement. She moves on the chest of the eternal Father and thinks that she is wave and searches for the Father. So she goes to the edge of the shore and is finished. The wave searches the ocean for the ocean, and nobody can tell her that she is the ocean. And it is only because a name is there that she does not realize it. But the content is the same. So you must see that you are the content inside, not the name or form. All names come from formlessness. So follow this thought back to the depth of the ocean, and then ask, "Who am I? I is a thought. I is still a fish. Where does this fish come from?" Follow it. Follow to where the I comes from, and you will find the place from where you have never left. It is only name and form that hide this. Name and form do not even exist in the ocean. Ocean has no name. Even the word ocean is a name which the ocean does not know. You give it the name ocean, but ocean does not have a name. Even so, self has no name. It is only when you think I want to do this or I want that, then it becomes the I thought. Then the desire arises for this and that, and you become lost in this and that. I find it hard to find the self because self is always here. When I drop thought. Peace and love pervade. Then you have done the job. Self is always here, so what more do you need? What is the difficulty? Thought comes back. Where can it come back to? Only one person can sit in the chair at a time. I am sitting in this chair, but if I ask you to sit here also, I will be sandwiched. I will slowly get up and make room for you. Only one person can stay in the chair at one time. Either the self or the mind. Mind is past. Self is present. Mind belongs to the past. Mind is disturbing you and taking you to the graveyard, and you agree to it. Refuse the mind, refuse the thought, and you are sitting comfortably on the chair of presence. It will be vacant, empty. There is no one there. But when you walk with so many things, it does not work. You must walk on the sword. Very carefully stepping, because if you look here and there, you will be cut into two pieces and never return to this path again. Therefore, shun the company of the mind for one second. Deal just one second from this life span of eighty or ninety years. Can you steal one second for your own happiness, or do you belong to others? This is the mission of life. At least spend one second and see the result. Spend one second without thought. And see the difference. I have dropped into the space you mention many times. However, I always hang on by a small rope. Now I long to let go of the rope forever, but I cannot. I am deeply afraid. Can you please cut this rope? I can't wait any longer. You have to cut this rope, or it won't pay you anything. If you want to go and meet your beloved. Rope means attachment to the past, and so you are not diving deep into the well. As you draw water out of the well with a bucket which has a rope attached to it, you keep the rope in your hand so the bucket can be pulled back. Your intention is to take this bucket full of water home, but here you must be told to keep the bucket in hand and throw it into the well without tying the rope to it. Then what will happen? It will sink. It won't come up. Like this, you throw this mind into the well of freedom and don't keep any rope. Like 
I will use this mind for such and such purpose. This can be done all at once. Don't keep other interests in your mind to keep any relationships with the world. This you must think before you leap. If you want to be free, forget everything. When only freedom. All things in the world should be free of your desires. How long can you have these transactions? No one will come near you when you are leaving to go back home. They'll find out who is your intimate friend who will be with you now and then. Then you proceed in the love of your beloved. It is a narrow lane too, cannot tread abreast. You must walk alone on the edge of the sword. This is the lane of love. Though my dear boy, you have to decide. I love peace and I have a sense of stillness. I want to come home here forever. I know what will fill me up is not outside of myself. I also experience the paradox of being totally alone and never alone. Often I cannot tolerate this feeling. I feel afraid. You are afraid because this is the first time that you have had this experience. Therefore, you are worried, and you don't like it because you were never told about it by your parents and friends. This is a very new experience that your parents never told you about, nor the neighbors, nor the teachers. Though everyone surely must be afraid. This I accept. But to be afraid of things is belonging to the past, because all fears belong to the past. Now you must see that this fear has nothing to do with your present experience, and you must merge into this present experience. Now I advise you that you don't try to understand or consider this an experience. There is no experiencer. If you try to be experiencer and try to know the experience, then trouble will arise. So you don't try to identify with an experiencer who has an experience. Always, when there is an experiencer, there is some trouble or fear. Let the experiencer disappear from your mind. Often I experience a blue flame in my meditation. This experience of blue flame is a result of deep concentration. When there is no thought left, this blue flame is seen in the heart. Any question you have will be answered by the blue flame. This experience is not the end of everything. It also must be rejected because it is a lamp post on the road. You should not hold it because your destination is somewhere else, not the flames and the lights and not any thought. You must find the seer of this flame. This is Mahayoga. If you ever have this experience, you must speak to your teacher so that you are not stuck at this point. I have been experiencing myself as a very peaceful being. It makes me nervous, though, when sometimes there just isn't anything there. When you are peaceful, what do you expect? When you say there is nothing there, what do you expect should be there? A pig. There has to be nothing there. After removing your concepts, there will be total emptiness. This is what we need to understand. There should be no expectation of anything. If you expect, you cannot have experience because only expectation will be there in front of you. Expectations are only some persons, some ideas, some concepts. That's all. They will be there, but if you sit quiet and don't have any expectations, then it will reveal to you. More and more, I am seeing the grace in my life, and I see an opening in the heart. Often, I experience where there was nothing but emptiness, although when I was still there, I want to go all the way. You had this experience, but you did not know what happened to this I, because for millions of years this I only meant body. I will go there. T will do that. I am suffering. Though this I that you have been using up to the time of experience is only body, senses, ego. If you continue this experience with a teacher, this I will face the real I, which is consciousness. Then this I will dissolve into I, and the I will function in place of the previous I, the egotistical I, and there will be I alone. Nobody knows what this I is. This I will not give you suffering. It will not touch the body. It will not touch time. This I is beyond limitations. You must be very acquainted with this I, but still you speak of the previous I. This must be dismissed entirely. This I is everything. Why this new habit, and all will be clear. When you speak of I, don't touch the ego. I means I beyond all limitations.
then you can use this I in all circumstances. You can say I am eating or I am suffering. You can do it, but unless you have this experience you will not be happy. What am I to do? This question is from the little I. I that I spoke about has nothing to do. That I is very different. If you use the I which is consciousness itself, then when you use the words I am eating, all the beings are eating. When I breathe, all the beings of the universe breathe. Use that I. Give up all attachments to the previous I. How is the experience of fullness related to the emptiness? They have no relation. They are the same thing. What is full is emptiness, and what is empty is fullness. It is hard to understand, but it is a fact. In the beginning there was emptiness. In the end, there is emptiness. In the middle, there has to be emptiness. This is how I can explain. In the beginning there is total emptiness, and from here arose so many things, staying for millions of years, but in the end they will all dissolve from where they came and remain empty. If you want to understand this, you can't. Emptiness is always here, just as in a room which is full of furniture, this furniture is an emptiness. Emptiness is the background. Emptiness is never affected by what is in it, by what comes into it or what leaves it. You can't understand this because you are emptiness yourself. This is truth. Again, when this emptiness is full of mountains, birds and trees, it is not affected. Whether things are in it or not, emptiness is not concerned. You can't understand this, you have to be it. Only then can you enjoy the fullness also. How can I always have the beautiful experiences? What effort did you make to have the blissful experience? What practice did you do? What thinking, what gymnastics, what hardship? It is enough if you have a glimpse of emptiness once. Once is quite enough. Why do you want it again and again? Always return to the same glimpse. Always think of emptiness while walking and talking. Don't forget that you are empty. This will work. All the time, in the day and in the night. Don't let it go and that is enough. Once is enough. Why should you call for a second time? It is not a habit like Coca-Cola. Once you have the nectar one drop is enough. If you taste the nectar, you must stay with it. Don't allow your mind to create any doubt. Why come out of this happiness? Don't be afraid of losing it, for even if you forget it, it will not forget you. Have trust in it. The grace and the fruits of your past lives is what gives you this happiness. I am just afraid that I will forget this taste of freedom. The taste of wine will last for four hours, but this taste will never leave you. You don't need to repeat it, it will ever be there after death. Only remove the doubt from your mind. Once you taste it do not allow your mind to interfere with your communion. Think quietly and don't let the mind look toward you, and you do not look toward the mind. This guideline I give you or you will return back to the graveyard again. Stay quiet. It is enough. Enjoy your new taste and make this habit a permanent habit. Beloved Papaji, when I ask who am I, it brings silence and peace, but I am still not satisfied. This is quite okay. You should stop here at peace. Don't say more unless you are a journalist who wants to write lots of pages without understanding anything. This is what journalists do because their mind is not at peace. If you were satisfied, you would not have to come to luck now. All the people who are here have some dissatisfaction. Where does the thought of dissatisfaction arise from? How can there be dissatisfaction in peace? I accept what you say, but only at the intellectual level. You have no experience. When you wed with a woman, is it intellectual understanding or your own experience of marriage? You can't only have an intellectual understanding of marriage and be satisfied. Though it is with most people, they do not experience the source of where all thought rises, but just develop some kind of intellectual understanding of it. Though it is easy to understand intellectually, you must do it practically and then it will take just one moment to see that you have always been in peace and have never been disturbed. 
If you would have had this experience, your face would be very different. Your eyes would be very different as the eyes of a drunkard tell what he has been doing. If you would have tasted this source, it would show in all the activities of your life. My dear friend, you are far from the source, but in one finger snap you can be in this peace. Just keep quiet, don't think, and don't make effort and tell me where you stand. Can you devote just one instant to yourself? Can you? Now do it. Don't just hear it. Don't think because all thought belongs to the past. Don't make effort and do not think. Who are you? There is no answer and no question and no effort. Now you are speaking from where all questions dissolve, and so you have spoken for the first time. Your eyes and face show it. Why do you smile now? When you made effort, you did not smile, but now you are in a zone of not thinking, and so you will always smile. Okay. Thank you. Sometimes I feel that I take two steps forward and one step back. Don't take two steps. Bird leaves no footprints in flight and always flies forward. Don't allow a track before or behind you. Those who will be free have no tracks. Tracks are only for sheep and shepherds. Lions don't have tracks. Sheep stay in the world, but the lions come for satsang for freedom. They will roar and the sheep will flee. The sheep are fears and doubts, and the roar of freedom makes them vanish. I can see that you are carrying so much grief and sadness in your heart. I have had profound glimpses of peace during my two last visits to Lucknow, but now I am experiencing so much grief and sorrow. Is there a relationship between grief and awakening? I thank you for your grace. You must be somewhere else with someone else, and this causes you grief. This is only from the past and has nothing to do with satsang. Even when you think of grief, it takes you to somewhere where this grief has happened. You get slapped in Manhattan, and then you go to your house in New Jersey where you get kissed. If you think of the past, you will be in grief, and you will go back to Manhattan where this will slap you again. This is the habit of most people who do not learn this lesson, and this is their behavior. If you would not have gone to Manhattan, you would not have been slapped. Don't go to places where you get insulted. Stay at home and you will be happy. Stay at home means staying within your own self. If you stay there, it means no one will harm you and everybody will love you. You told me to ask who am I. The result was me in space. Now subtract the me and what is there. Nothing but will it remain? If it is an experience and not something just written on paper. There once was a class of twenty students, and the first lesson was speak the truth. The next day, the teacher asked if everybody has learned the first lesson. Nineteen out of twenty boys said yes, but one boy said that he had not learned it. He was punished and told to stay with this lesson while all his classmates went to the second lesson. The next day, he was asked again if he learned the first lesson, speak the truth, and again he said no. He was punished again and accused of dull-headedness. The third day was the same. The fourth day he was asked if he had done it, and he said, "Yes, sir. Speak the truth. I have it." The teacher asked him, "Why did you take four days to do this?" "Sir, it was very difficult for me to decide, and now I have decided to speak the truth for the rest of my life." He proved it up to the end, even though it went against him in the battle of the Mahabharata. This is what I mean. Don't just speak the words, but enter into them and find out what they mean. Do not let this me appear at all. I found myself steeped in a thought-free state of mind much of the time, and yet, a thought-free state is the only state that will take you to truth. Being thought-free is truth itself. You can stay with a teacher in whose presence you are thought-free. Stay where your mind is quiet and not thinking this and that. I just want to be finally established in it. There is no finality in it, and no concept of finality. It is just thoughtlessness. The longing for God that you had, and the longing which brought you to satsang, are different, and will give you different results. Merge like a river merges with the ocean, and don't use the word "I." How to stop the thinking? By being. When you think you are an object. A person, a body, or some other idea, but by being there is nothing. 
just being. And this being is already there. You are always being. To become something you must meditate and perform some mantra, ritual or practice. Just to be is simple. Without being you can't do any practice. So don't think of anything else. Just be. It is so easy to be. But when I try to just be so much thinking happens. I am sure everyone has this problem. Thinking happens when you want to become something. Then you must think. But to not become something what is there to do? Stay as you are. Be as you are in whatever circumstances, just always be. It doesn't need any practice. Whatever you get by practice, you will lose, but being will never be lost because you will not get it by any experience or practice. It simply is. Simply be. Don't stir your mind in being, don't think, and don't make any effort. I will tell you how to be the being itself, no effort, no thinking. Avoid thinking and avoid not thinking. What is between these two? I have experienced such emptiness. Did I do more? Did I just stay empty? Is there more? Some people say I should explore it. To stay empty is better than to try to feel something. Staying empty is the easiest of all. Don't make any effort for it and ignore everything else. More and more I am able to abide as the pure individual I thought. Ironically, it seems like I am just an awareness without a sense of I, though the world is experienced from or by an I. All that you see is from that I which is not individual. It is from just being. From beingness all functions happen. True being is called I, not individualized I. Why can't I merge this individual I into self and stop the deception? You are not ready or willing to merge because you are trying to do it yourself. This reinforces the individuality and doesn't let you melt into that. If you know you have been deceiving yourself you are a wise man. See what the deceiver is and you will not be deceiving yourself. I have a strong desire to be free, but I guess it's not the foremost desire. First fulfill the desire to be free and then you will have no other desire. In freedom the things you desired will come to you to have their desires fulfilled. This is difficult to understand, but I hope you do. Because you are desireless you will fulfill the desires which come to you. The difference is that you will not be attached to the desire. Like in a dream, the desires which come to a free man will be fulfilled. This dream is neither real nor unreal. Out of the stillness the mind rises again like a mythical dragon. This is the experience of everyone who gets it. They get the experience of love and silence, and then mind rises again. How to slay the dragon? Until you are confident that the mind will no longer deceive you, you will ask this question. You have to check the mind when it runs out and not just follow it. You have tasted silence and love and now you find your mind is running out. It will run because running out is a million year old habit for it. Be very watchful of the mind and let it go, even into the fish market, and you will not be disturbed. I had a beautiful vision while meditating on a ham brahma's meat which faded away. Will you show me how to die totally to this ego structure? You have meditated on a ham brahma's meat, you have not become it. You are a ham brahma's me, not a ham ego as me. When you say a ham brahma's me, how can the ego arise? So whatever is there is there because you think it is there. Otherwise it will not arise. Therefore, you must be repeating Aham Ego as me. Then the ego is in front of you. Though so speak Aham Brahm as me and there is no ego. When you say I am man as me, you are a man and you will not say I am donkey as me. Laugh so does the whole Leela drop? Let it drop or not drop, that is not your concern. You remain as Brahman. Don't worry about if the Leela is real or not. You cannot disbelieve that you are a man. You won't believe someone who says you are a donkey because you are very sure that you are a man. Like this, you must be very certain that I am Brahman. Be very certain that I am not the body, mind, ego. You shouldn't even think of it then you will have no problem. You start with Koham, or who am I, then the answer is, 
You are that, you are Brahman Tat Vamasi. There is no question of becoming anything else. If there is anything else it is a thing and it is not you. Let the things be there but you are apart from the things. This practice must be as real as you speak so that it cannot even be practiced, just as you are not to practice to become a man. You don't need practice to become a man because you are a man and like this your trust must be as great as that. You asked me if I saw a world and I couldn't reply. I couldn't say anything. Since then I saw a world but then I couldn't see anything. You didn't see anything but mine came back again. In sleep you don't see anything. So like this, sleep in the waking state. The difference between this sleep and night sleep is that you will know everything. People come here to see themselves in the crystal pure mirror of their own self. Here you are reminded that you are a lion and have never been a donkey. Don't have any doubt about this. I believe that I am God but it is just a belief. Keep up this belief. It will not trouble you. Believe that I am God, I am the creator of all creation. God must speak like God. Like a king he doesn't say I will buy this or that. This desire doesn't come because everything belongs to him. Anybody who has a desire is not a king, is not God, but a subject of the king. You must behave according to your position and status. Keep quiet, don't make effort. This will remind you that you are not a beggar. This will wake you up from this dream. I know it is a great opportunity to be here in Satsang and I want to fully honor this gift. Papaji, is there more? Am I settling for too little? I still experience an eye. Please help me. I have no other desire but to be free. I am eternally thankful for the magic of your grace. If you still experience the presence of an eye, it is not the same eye which you had before you came here. This eye is quite harmless, and you can keep it with you. You must speak to people and without an eye, you can't do it. But inside, don't forget that this is not the old eye which troubled you. When I was here before my mind was not quiet enough to receive the gift of your presence. My mind is now much more silent, and it grows and deepens. Is there anything else required? When the mind is quiet what should you do? Suppose you want to marry and you get a beautiful wife and the love is growing and deepening. At that time what do you say? Just continue to love and live. I would simply say, thank my stars. For millions of years my mind was busy like a monkey, but now she is quiet. Now the beauty of the whole universe is in front of you when you are quiet. At that time bend your head, and be very grateful for the satisfaction of the mind which you could not get before. That is all I suggest. Every moment say, I am thankful to you, O my Lord, O my God. I am very grateful. I am wondering why this apparent realness when you are from the viewpoint of there. Everything seems unreal and when you come back to the body everything seems real again. Yes, this is a very great experience you see. In the beginning you said, this is my body, these are my worries, body is mine and all other bodies are related to me. So, this was suffering. This was a mental concept only. The body is a mental concept. So, you know this, it has come to you, you have conquered that. You are here for months, so satsang is the only place where you can remove this concept that body is real. So, all that appears is not real because reality must be here all the time. In the waking state this reality is not the reality that you see in dream state. Both these realities disappear in sleep state. So, you have awakened to it, and you kept quiet, your mind was quiet. This is not real, so you entered somewhere unknown to you, and to everybody else so far. When this concept that all this appearance is real disappeared, then you arrived somewhere else indescribable, and you found rest there. Within that rest a wave arises, but comes not as mind as was the case before. That previous wave was a notion of the mind, this is real, my body is real, all this is real. So that disappeared when you went to the source of this appearance, everything disappeared. That was a place of rest, consciousness. 
Now from consciousness, consciousness reflecting into consciousness shines only consciousness. As a reflection of that consciousness, the wave rises as existence. Whatever rises from consciousness manifests there and then. From within the consciousness the wave arises, and facing the consciousness it shines. That shine is wisdom. In that wisdom nothing can ever be unreal. Consciousness is consciousness everywhere, all over the cosmos, the world, maybe hundreds of thousands of universes are hanging in that consciousness. If you see from that viewpoint, not from the mind, not from the ego, but from the consciousness itself, emptiness itself, all is empty. You look from there. Go to the source then, and let it rise. That experience is a genuine experience. Wherever you go you will be happy. You will be free. Everything will be real. What is not real in consciousness? Where is death? Where is the body? You have looked and seen. Before you said, I am the body ego, I am born ego, I am dying ego. That gave you trouble and it will go on endlessly. Therefore, everybody will be in trouble and the next beginning the trouble will begin again. Endless cycles. You can come out of this cycle of miserable birth and death. Your experience is genuine. I am very happy there will be no trouble for you. Everything is real, where is the question of unreality and emptiness? Emptiness is emptiness. That look you will have not with these eyes. Hearing will be different. There will be no possibility of finding anything real unreal. This will go there will be no discrimination of this or that. Neither in between. So, this is freedom. Everyone can have this. Have you any questions now from there? When I first come back wanting to deny being back in the body, that notion of being back is like being confined again. But you answered me, I must accept that everything is real. Anything that comes you have to accept it as real. I have a very big longing to be there and nowhere else. Just floating in that, never back in the body. When I come back it's always, oh no I'm back. This notion also has to be abandoned from where have you come back. There's no coming back or going away. All these are notions. You are never gone anywhere, where will you go and where will you come back to? You are where you are, you are where you are. You are what you have always been. Don't aspire for things which are not here now. Don't try to attain anything at a later date. Everything is here and that has to be true. Not what you will borrow from someone else in a time in the future. That you will lose also. What is here is real. What is here is free. You don't need anything else. Find out what is here in front of you this very moment. What is here at this moment find out. Don't have any intentions of gaining anything or rejecting anything find out. In between this here and now, this very moment, this very instant, this very second. That is going to be always real, always here. Recently, I had an experience of no mind and... When mind is dead why put it on your plate like a dead rat? Who would do this? Are you bluffing yourself or is your dead mind speaking about all this? After the ego is crushed you must still watch out because even though the serpent is silent it can still strike. The dead body is there but until total cremation takes place there is still danger. The feeling of death of the mind even comes from the mind. To hold on to emptiness is still indirect and is still the mind. Be strong until the ego is totally burned. About five years ago all the signs of enlightenment spontaneously manifested in me. I had no idea what was happening and so I was very relieved to read your account. It took the terror out of the experiences. Do you have more insights into this? If you would have been with a teacher you would not have been terrified. Whenever you have an experience you must run to the teacher to find out what happened. His explanation will help you so immediately go to him. This happened in the late 40 in Lucknow. So many people started running to me and articles and newspapers were published. 
When the number of people reached 40 or 50 I had no choice but to run away to the south where I had lived before. Even though I say you should go to the teacher to confirm your experience, actually the real experience will leave no room for doubt, you will know it yourself that you are happy. Peace of mind is a sentinel of freedom. Contentment is another. Wait with these sentinels. The door will open by itself and you will be called in. I left, what shall I do now? Stay in now, stay in now, that is now. What you have seen that is now. No word, no name, no thought. Now has no name and no thought. And you have to identify with that which you have seen. Hence get into that. Get resolved into that. I is no more there. Thank you. Yes, just merge. Something will rise from this body. You don't interfere, you don't interfere. Stay quiet. Let it merge. Stay quiet, let it dissolve. There is no mind there, you see. Mind and ego are lost. From there the consciousness will arise. From there consciousness will rise. That consciousness will be its own object, it will function. There may be manifestations and dissolution. There is no question of that. That is eternal. That will be eternal peace and silence. I want to thank you for the gift of self you have given me. Now is the time to dance. This dance will never end, for your partner is always shining and beautiful, and will never get old. Enjoy this relation for which you came to luck now after two billion years. This life must be spent dancing and laughing. When you have this experience of being home, throw everything away and serve your teacher. I am being pulled more and more into the silence. Will you share any insight you have with me? Allow this pull to continue, but don't make it an experience. Simply allow yourself to be pulled into the silence, but don't make any comments about it. Devote yourself to yourself. Surrender your arrogance, your separation, your ego to this love that you are. How can I maintain the oneness without being dominated by emotions and feelings? Only by love, only by loving can you maintain the sense of love and peace. And emotions and fear will not dominate you because you are in love. When in love, only love sits in your heart and so fear has no place. How can I invite peace to come to my house and stay longer? Peace is your house. Keep this house empty and let someone who comes share this love. How can I rejoice this being nobody? Rejoice with someone who has no form anymore. That is the only one in the three universes who can give you perfect eternal love. Eternal love is that with no form. Wait for the one with no form to call you, and while waiting be in the same character as this love so that it is attracted to you. Though first abandon your name and form. Then you will see that this lover will fall in love with you. There is no love between form and form, only in love is there love. Don't move, don't move, don't move your mind. That is all. Keeping quiet is the highest tapas, the greatest yoga, and the most beautiful devotion. This is being.